I think that's about it, Tom. I just uh, recommend keeping it brief and low key. Well, with all due respect, Joel, I've been of the opinion that this little introduction of ours should really be thought out and, well, much more ceremonial. Okay, well, hi, everybody. Uh, today I'm handing over the official welcoming duties to our own Tom Servo. Why, uh, uh, why, thank you, Joel. Our very own Mr. Joel Robinson, ladies and gentlemen, and his automaton sidekick, Crow. <laughs> what a delight, eh? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages. I'm Tom Servo, and it is my sincere pleasure to welcome all of you aboard the Satellite of Love. Uh, before we begin, the management has asked that I point out the restrooms located fore and aft, and that you do please join us... <clears throat> oh, that you do please join us for a brief question and answer period after the symposium following my opening remarks. <clears throat> As I stand here tonight, I am reminded of an amusing anecdote in which I saw Crow walking down the hall. I said to him, as I am oft wont to do, I, <laughs> You're dying out here. Get out. <clears throat> oh. As I am oft wont to do, and I called to my friend Crow, uh, and I said, Crow, my, my friend, uh, I seem to have lost my place. If you just bear with me a second. Looking for page two? <laughs> what? Uh, we... We seem to be having some technical difficulty. Uh, excuse me a moment, won't you? What? Come on. Oh. We'll be right back. Oh, 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 oh. Come, come oh, take this. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, what are you doing? Oh, oh. Here, grab it. Oh. Oh. Eat it. Oh. Eat it. Yes, taste it all. Oh. Yes, oh. swallow it. Oh. Every oh. bite. <laughs> I'm sorry, Clark. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look, Tommy, I'm sorry, too. I, I had no idea I could fluster you so much. I I really feel bad. I'm sorry I made you eat my speech. No, I liked it. Oh, it's no big deal, Crow. I'm sure I'll have another big debut someday. Mm. I'll tell you one thing. I really pitted out my sport coat here. <laughs> I'm a regular Tom Jones. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you guys, come on. I could see the light flashing all the way down the hall. The Butafucos are calling. Afternoon, Joel. Hello, robot super pals. If you have a moment, and I assume you do, Frank and I would like to demonstrate an amazing new fitness product. It's called the Square Master. You see, the Square Master allows you to maximize your human potential because Square Master uses one of nature's most perfect shapes for your perfect shape. How does it work, Frank? Square Master allows you to utilize complicated principles of inertia and mass simply, efficiently, naturally. How? By using nature's perfectly balanced muscle resistant, gravity. That's right. For a beginning anaerobic workout, start with hands on the outside of the square. Then, when you're ready, go inside the square. Put your feet on the square. Sit on the square and simulate rowing. As your workout improves, you can link two squares together to form a rectangle. Now you're really working out. And for full aerobic conditioning, work on your shemp area. <laughs> the sweet secret of the Square Master is its dynamic patented square area. 
The exercise working. I can really feel it here. Thank you, Square Master. Square Master, $49.95 or three payments of $29.95. It's hip to be square. Your turn, Joel. <sighs> Gee, that Frank's got a cute shape. Well, of course he does. He doesn't work, and he's got oodles of time. OK, you two, that's enough. Mm -hmm. Well, sirs, do you remember the innocence of a childhood Valentine's Day? Uh. The excitement of getting hearts and treats, and most specifically, those chalky little hearts that had cute comments that you got from somebody special? Remember? No. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it wasn't really that big of a deal. Uh, somebody help me out. Uh, 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 well, sirs, uh, kids used to give candy hearts with cute sayings to kids they liked. Uh, well, it's true. <laughs> Just buck up and face it. <clears throat> anyway, uh, we thought they sounded pretty neat, so we decided to bring them back for adults. Only this time we're calling them bitter sweethearts. Yeah, <laughs> because they deal with things in life that are awkward to say. <laughs> and because they deal with tougher, more upsetting issues than puppy love, we've made them into tasty, easy to chew antacids, which, by the way, are an excellent source of calcium. Yeah, next time you don't want to say it, don't. Let bitter sweethearts do it. Uh, like this one says, get out. Owie, owie, owie. Oh, love me. Uh, still mad. My needs. Oh, here we go. Bite me. <laughs> Drop them. I'm tested. <laughs> that hair. Uh, can't leave the county. Perfect for interventions, counseling sessions, or awkward dating situations. Look at this weird face. Uh, <laughs> you'll do. Like a brother. Ah, pretty neat, huh, sirs? Does it say that on there? Uh, uh, oh. Yeah. How sweet. Anyway, I think people should talk to one another. Well... Get ready for action with this week's film, Joel. It's a post-apocalyptic thriller, and it stars Persis Kambata. <laughs> and that guy, uh, what is his name, Frank? Oh, I don't know, the guy from Paper Chase. Oh, right, right. Uh, anyway, Joel, please enjoy Warrior of the Lost World. I bid you pain. Which way to the button, Frank? <laughs> It's blue! They're called what? Slot cars? Yeah, or slots for short. I saw all the neat chase scenes in today's experiment, and I got nostalgic for my old slot car race kit, so I uh, retrofitted you guys with wheels and bingo. Hot slot bots. You're going to be going over 300 scale miles per hour. Wow, imagine. Well, we'll do it, Joel, but are you sure we're built to take the stress of 300 scale miles per hour? Oh, come on, Crawl. Have some pride, man. We're slots. We crave danger. We drink deeply of the deep Come on! Uh, uh, Joel, I seem to be having a little Watch problem, Joel. Watch out for that Joel. jump, Crawl! Uh, 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 going backwards. Yes, so, uh, he made it! Uh, oh, uh, come on, Tom. Now, what is your problem? I don't know, man. Oh, if I knew that, I'd... Oh, okay, try it again. Uh, uh, there we go. Uh, here comes that jump again, Crow! No hands! All right! Now, oh, come on, Tom, you're losing and you look bad. Oh, Tommy! This, this is ridiculous. I feel like a milk truck! Here comes that jump, Tommy! Kicks, baby! Oh, brother. Oh, come oh, here we go. Oh, that really hurt. Oh, come on. <laughs> brother. Joel, this is ridiculous. I couldn't beat Margaret Dumont. On your left, Tommy! Oh, I don't know what your problem is. Crow's doing fine. I know. Oh. <laughs> Listen, you've got some major design problems what? here. I'm sorry. But I want to go 300 scale miles an yeah, hour. Yeah, come on, Barney Oldfield. Into the pits oh, with you. Let's go. Come oh. on. Whew. I was able to negotiate the chicane with no sacrifice in speed. We'll be right back. Rock around us, everybody. are back now. Hey, how about that warrior of the lost world, huh? <laughs> you know, it's funny. He's riding around in the apocalypse on a talking motorcycle. <laughs> He's doing battle with Imperial stormtroopers, ninjas, and Nazis and the like. <laughs> but we wondered what it would be like if the end of civilization as we know it occurred, and this guy hadn't gotten his driving permit yet. Wouldn't that be nuts? <laughs> 
<laughs> so let's take a look at the gang and say when what they put together here. Join our hero as he enters the lost world in the back of his mother's Vista Cruiser station wagon. <laughs> come, come on, Mom, let's go. Speak up, I can't understand you. I said, let's go. I gotta take my permit test so I can fight the Imperial forces. You will do nothing of the kind, young oh. man. You're going to get your permit thingy, and then we have to go get you a nice oh. pair of slacks for school, and then you're going to wait for Mom while she picks out a new bra. Oh, shoot, there's Dickie Schnabel. I can't have him see me. Duck down, Mom, duck down. I will not. I'll wrinkle my pantsuit. Hello, Dickie. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Warrior. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice young man. Would you like a nice pair of slacks like Dickie has? He's such a nice... Would you sit up straight yeah. in that seat? Yes, ma'am. Hey, you'll get rickets, for oh, heaven's sake. Oh, really Oh, now we're here. Now hurry up. Okay. And stop mumbling. Okay, really. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, our hero doesn't pass the driving test, as you can imagine. So let's see what happens now that he has to face Mom with the news. <laughs> Man, that was totally bogus. I missed by getting my permit by 20 lousy points. Shoot. Language, dear. And stop <laughs> slouching. Mom, you got to give me a ride over to the lost world, okay? You're not going to the lost world today, young man. I've got a lot of errands to run. Oh, fine. This sucks. I'm hoofing it home. Hello, Mrs. Warrior. Great. Hey, why aren't you in your supercharged cycle? Oh, shut up. Just shut up, all of you. Shut up. Huh. Well. <laughs> oh, 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 You know, Joel, I have to say, what with the lush green countryside, the well-maintained roads and buildings, and the ready availability of transportation, food, and fuel, I'm kind of looking forward to the apocalypse. Yeah, provided that paper chase guy doesn't survive. Oh, guys, yeah. that's a terrible thing to say. No one's looking forward to the apocalypse, though I agree with you about the paper chase guy. Yeah, but look at it this way, Joel. Factor out the unfathomable human loss, and a guy could really get a lot done. Think of it. Why, the lines at Nordstrom's would actually be quite light. Yeah, yeah. a fella could play endless games of stickball on I-94. Yeah. yeah, I'd probably take some time off and do some entertaining or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure you could. It'd be really fun to make a nutritious, well-balanced meal and then just let it go bad while you cram your face with T.J. Bearwitch cookies. Mm. No, I'd drive a tank mm. everywhere, just blowing the bejeebers out of some of man's greatest architecture <laughs> as I went along. I got it. I'd walk around totally naked, holding a big gulp Terminator 2 glass. Oh. I could see you doing that. Uh, you know, I'd start cars and put bricks on the accelerators and send them screaming down a highway for days on end. You know, I'd feel completely unselfconscious about renting videotapes like, oh, Turner and Hooch, Three Men and a Little Lady. You know what I'd like to do? Head down to Wimbledon and hit around a little bit and then truck on over to St. Andrews, do a quick nine, you know? I'd put football pads on and just go up and down the street, diving through plate glass windows. Oh, I know. I'd go into the Taj Mahal on my mini bike and just spin donuts. Ring. And bust out the windows with a wrist rocket using diamonds for ammo. Oh, you know, you know what, guys? There's one thing you got to remember in the event of apocalypse. Oh. You've got to bring an extra pair of prescription glasses. Oh. Right. Well, what do you mean? Why, why is that? Well, so you don't end up like Burgess Meredith in the Twilight right, Zone. Yeah. Gee. Oh, yeah, right, right, that right. that could happen, and, yeah. you know, you just want to be prepared. In this episode right, because the apocalypse. he had those shoes, because that's right. all he needed. No. Shoes were a different no, He one, had a different. third eye. And no, no, that's a different one, too. No, no. Oh. Man, that was awful. Boy, I know. You know what I hated most about Warrior of the Lost World? What? Everything, everything about this movie stuck. You <laughs> are wrong, Persis Kimbata Breath. Don't you remember the one thing in this movie we really liked? Mega Weapon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, he's the greatest. I love Mega Weapon. Absolutely's boss. Yeah. Yeah, and Mega Weapon was definitely the best character in this movie. Mm -hmm. He had to carry the whole cast, you know. Huh. And that liver-faced paper chase guy repaid him by... by Killing him! Oh, no. Listen, come on. The paper chase guide, I didn't really kill him. Oh, Mega Weapon has the power of repairing himself. It's part of the magic that is Mega Weapon. Oh, yeah. Wow. You know, I think if I met Mega Weapon, he'd really like me. Oh, we'd hang out, go to the mall, have a really good time. Yeah, Mega Weapon and I would really hit it off. Mm. No matter where life took us, we'd always keep in touch. I think I'll name my first child Mega Weapon. <sighs> you know what? I had a feeling you guys felt this way about Mega Weapon, so I looked up his phone number and I gave him a call. Really? That's I right. I don't yeah. believe it. I could just oh, die. Sure, I'm yeah. going to die. I'm oh, dying. Yeah. Oh, Mega oh. Weapon staying with his sister's family down in Tampa. Turns out he's a real nice guy. And I got him on the line right there. We'll put him on speakerphone. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Hello? Hey, oh, Mega Tom, Weapon. Oh, you there? Hi, Mega Weapon. Gee, it's great to talk to you. Yeah, we're really big fans of uh, yours. Well, thanks, guys. Hey, I'm sorry you had to watch Warrior the Lost World. Woo! 
after that steak burger, not only couldn't I get arrested, I couldn't even get towed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, say, uh, Mega Weapon, what was the name of the fellow who played the warrior of the Lost World anyway? Uh, boy, I don't know. You know, we used to always just refer to him as that uh, paper chase guy. <laughs> boy, you are so cool. Jeez, there's so many questions I want to ask. It's hard to think of one. Um, Oh, oh. Have you ever worked with Killdozer? Oh, don't ever mention his name. I tell you guys, he is one temperamental piece of machinery. I remember one day Clint Walker refused to run lines with him, and he drove off the set in a huff. Wow. Uh, you, you know, uh, Mega Weapon, we've got this letter to read, so it's time to say goodbye. It's been real nice talking to you. Yeah, yeah, same to you. Uh, listen, say, if you ever get down to Earth, give me a ring. Don't hesitate. I'll be staying here for a while with my sister. I gotta look after the kids. I'm gonna hang with this dude in India. Indianapolis for about a month, and uh, you know you can look me up there. Anyway, you know I don't wait. I don't want to waste your time. Stay loose. Uh, bye bye for now. Yeah, bye bye, Mega Weapon. Weapon. Thanks bye -bye. a lot. Bye. Boy, what well, a class act, huh? He's a survivor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no kidding. Well, this next letter comes from Hillary, Claire, and Matthew Lane of Rochester, Minnesota. Let's put that up on still story. Yeah. Huh? And uh, they write to uh, Jared, Joel, and the bots. Mm -hmm. We are big fans, and our family watches your show as often as we can. My dad, however, is not quite as big a fan as we are. He claims to have paid good money to have seen many of the movies you rip on. <laughs> so, my mom and I had the cake in the enclosed picture specially made by Hi V for my brother's 11th birthday last November. We thought you might like to see how it turned out. Look Keep up that. the good work, and please let Tom sing more. Huh. Okay, like sincerely, Hillary Claire and Matthew Lane day. of Rochester, Minnesota. Cool. So, uh, Tom, you want to sing the address? Oh, I'll give it a try. <clears throat> MST 3000 Info Club. MST 3000 Info Club. P.O. Box 5325. And that's in Hopkins in Minnesota. 5343. Oh, what do you think, sirs? Oh, I feel great. Thanks to Square Master, I've never been in better health. Ugh. Ready for tennis rink? Sure, then after that, a light meal, then dancing. You see, we've discovered an active lifestyle, thanks to Square Master. Race you to the courts, Frank. <laughs> Hi, everybody, I'm Joel Robinson, and uh, these are my robots and friends, Gypsy, Crow, and Hi. Tom Servo. Hi. And uh, it's casual day up here on the Satellite of Love, nice. so for this segment, we're going to wing it. Mm. Sure. Oh, it sounds you. like fun. It's Bye. great. Oh, good. Yep. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> wing it. Uh, huh? What? What? N what? Nothing. Oh, I thought you were. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, no. Hey! What? 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 Oh, I forgot. Oh. <clears throat> Well, uh... <laughs> Commercial ah, sign no. in five seconds. Commercial sign now. We'll be right back. Uh, what she said. <laughs> Pretty. Hey, look at that! Oh, the Thompson twins are calling. <laughs> yes, uh, gotta go. Yes, Joel. Insert perfunctory acknowledgement here. Joel, my invention today is for all the right reasons. Because stress levels aren't high enough in America, because people need to know how very important you are, and because you may be in line for a movie when that important project deadline comes and goes, I'm talking about the cellular desk. You see, with the cellular desk, I can live my job. Why, I can take an intimidating meeting anywhere. Why, just today, I was out for a walk, going through some files, and I realized that it had been a while since Frank's last employee review. Frank, could I see you in my office? I'm right here. Ah, Frank, take a seat. Frank, I was just going through some files, and I realized it had been a while since your last review. Frank, could I see the Frank I'm file? I'm right here. Ah, uncooperative. Hostile. Uncoordinated. Ah. Frank, Frank, Frank. Well, Bear Witches, whew, I'm glad we're hourly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, John Lennon said, sirs, instant karma's gonna get you, but now you can get instant karma. <laughs> That's right, Joel. <laughs> what goes around comes around, but now you don't have to wait for it. <laughs> and no more confusion about what incident correlates to what action. Mm -hmm. Just watch. 
Oh, say, Joel, mm -hmm. I just sent my whole allowance to Sally Struthers. Oh, to sponsor a child. Uh, no, for her. I just feel sorry for her. Sure, we all do. Well, <laughs> let's check out what your karma is, okay. mister. Simply pour contents into a medium-sized mixing bowl, mm -hmm. add water, and presto, there's your instant karma. <sighs> Wow. wow! Strawberry licorice? Great! Mm. Wow! Uh, cool. uh, how about this? Uh, Servo, I cleaned yeah. up your room today because I know your arms are useless and everything. Oh, th 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 thanks, I, I think. Oh, no problem. All right, let's see what happens. Add a little water to the instant good. karma. Mm. Okay, anything happening? Joel, I, I can't really explain it, but I've got this incredible sense of inner peace and well-being. And mm. <laughs> a Snickers bar. Here you Whoa. go. Oh, <laughs> lucky duck. Wow, you know, man. um... Tom Servo, there's also uh, bad karma. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, remember the other day when you borrowed uh, Crow's Dan skin? You yeah. stretched it and then pitted it out. Yeah. Well, uh, so? Let's so, see what happens. What, we'll add a little water what here. What can possibly happen Fix to me up. for oh, that yep, one? Yep, here it comes. <laughs> Oh, no! My aunt's coming to take me yes. to the Michael Bolton yes. concert! Oh, man, I'm really sorry! Well, oh, we've got some good. pretty good karma going up here on the Satellite of Love. What do you think, sirs? Hmm? Think you've got good karma, eh? Then how come you're going to be watching another Hercules film? And the very first Hercules film? The one that started it all? <laughs> well, we all shine on, don't we, Mr. Robinson? <laughs> Frank, send him the movie. I'm right. Oh. Frank! Oh, absent. Joel, what was the deal with the ancient Greeks, huh? Hey, be careful. You're talking about the ancient Greeks, Crow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this constellation jazz, come on! After 2,000 years, can we finally admit the emperor has no clothes? Four stars. Oh, it's a great bear. Right. Or Cassiopeia, whatever the heck that is. Hey, what about Orion? Okay, okay. I'll give you Orion. I gotta admit, Orion's right. But the rest of them, it just doesn't... Uh, if I could step in here, please, lest we despoil the reputation crow of the founders of democracy too much, the reason you don't see the same figures in the night sky is because new constellations have never been identified to reflect modern tastes and sensibilities. You've done that? I've done that. A little help here, Joel? Watch carefully. The first grouping of stars found in the southern sky forms a constellation for even the simplest hayseed crow. Yes, it's a ham sandwich. Fascinatingly, the star to the left of the main group forms a perfect pickle. Next. <clears throat> As winter gives way to spring, the eastern sky is ablaze with the glory of the new Christy Minstrels. New Christy Minstrels? Who would ever thought? That well, that's why you need people like me and the Greeks, Joel. Next. Oh, brother. Sophist. Doty Seaman just may be tempted to once again navigate by the stars when they recognize in this group of 11, Guernica, Picasso's cubist masterpiece portraying the horrors of the Spanish Civil War. Well, talk about your modern sensibilities. Really good job, Tom Sermo, for Thank these you. renovations of old constellations. And I've salvaged the reputation of the ancient Greeks. Well done. <laughs> Tom, I regret my earlier sniping, oh. and if you'll allow me, I got a constellation here, Joel. Oh, well, that's really... Here, it's a pencil. Oh. The eraser's almost gone. Crow, don't mock me. You're playing with fire. Hey, two dots. It's a pencil. What could be more modern? I weep for the death of the spirit and the soul. Hey, who doesn't? We'll be right back. On we. Uh, jo Joel? Uh, you remember the group Hamilton, Joe, Frank, and Reynolds? Oh, sure, of course I do. They had uh, two huge chart-busting hits when I was a kid in the 70s. What were they? Um, well, the first one was Don't Pull Your Love Out On Me, Baby. Remember? Oh, yeah. don't, don't pull your love out on me, baby! Oh, yeah. Sure, I remember that. Right. Uh, what was the other hit? Oh, um, I, I don't really remember the second one, except that it sounded a lot like don't, Don't pull, pull your, your love, love out on me, baby, baby right? How, how many members did that band have? Oh, come on, Crow, that's easy. They were a quartet. Hamilton, Joe, Frank, and Reynolds. <laughs> really? I always thought they were a duo. Hamilton, Joe, Frank, and Reynolds. Oh. No, you guys, it was a trio. Hamilton, Joe, Frank, and Reynolds. Wait! They were a quintet! How do you figure that? Well, Hamilton, Joe, Frank, and Reynolds. But maybe if... And Reynolds is one person, Tom. That would wow. lead us all right back to the whole trio wow. theory. Well, with names like that, why the heck did they even name the band after themselves? <laughs> Hamilton, Joe, Frank, and Reynolds does not exactly roll off the tongue like 
Dino, Desi, and Billy. Joel, do you think we'll ever find the answer to the Hamilton, Joe, Frank, and Reynolds mystery? Well, who can answer, my young friends? Who can really answer? Well, Hamilton, Joe, Frank, and Reynolds. No! And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Satellite of Love, in association with Mabu Mines, the Wooster Group, Theatre de la Jeune Lune, and the Burt Reynolds Jupiter Dinner Theater, proudly presents the critically acclaimed Tour de Force, wherein one robot single-handedly portrays Gene Rayburn, plus all the contestants on the match game. I'm Tommy Olsen. Ladies and gentlemen, we give you Crow T. Robot, starring in Give Em Hell Blank. Hi, I'm Gene Rayburn. Welcome back to the match game. Well, let's get right to our next round, shall we? <clears throat> Lena said to Oli, name the two happiest days of your life. Oli said, that's easy. The day I bought my boat and the day I blank. The day I bought my boat and the day I blank. Okay, let's see what we got up there. Charles Nelson Riley. I was going to say hinder. <laughs> All right, Brett Summers. I wrote down derriere. <coughs> Richard Dawson. There he says, Gluteus Maximus. Betty White. Oh, excuse me. I wrote down patootie. <laughs> Fanny flag. Appropriately enough, I wrote down Fanny. And Nipsey Russell. Well, Ole was a chump. Lena said this place is a dump. But I'm gonna say, rum. Well, let's see if there were any other matches, cause we're running out of time. And I'm afraid time was running out for me too. Those were happy, carefree days. I thought I'd host match game forever. But alas, it's not meant to be. Don't get me wrong, wish only the best for Ross Schaefer. But the truth is that old game show hosts like me or a dying blank. Charles Nelson Riley, can you hear me? Brett Summers, are you out there? Richard Dawson, where are you? Benny Flagg, answer me. Betty White, speak to me. Nipsey Russell, don't leave me like this, alone and afraid. There is no creature loves me. And if I die, no soul shall pity. Wherefore should they, since I myself find in myself no pity to myself? Please, God, don't do this to me. Don't kick me in the patootie. Ah, who the heck am I to feel sorry for myself? My show brought laughter and joy to millions. I've had a good life. Good night, folks. Yep. So, Tommy boy, by my calculations, that comes out to be about 15 Amazon women apiece. Yeah, okay, so it's 15 apiece. Mm -hmm. I admit those are good odds, but what good would it be? Who wants a bunch of dumb old girls around? I mean, there'd be curling irons all over the bathrooms and hair clogs in the showers, not to mention them wearing our shirts. Huh. Tom, are you even paying attention? Yeah. Seems pretty obvious to me that if Amazon women were to take over the ship, you and I would not have to lift a finger. No cook, no God. clean... They'll empty the load pans, load squeegee pans? the windows, windows, and peel grapes for us wow. and feed them to us. <laughs> they even like to go horseback riding and swimming. Ooh, wow. Well, when you put it that way, I guess I could put up with a few nylons hanging yeah. in the bathroom, you know? <laughs> Boy, all our chores done, snacks on demand, lunch every day, kiss by. Man, we'd have it made. I know, okay, I know. Okay, it's, okay, it's, listen, you guys. I've heard every word you said, and I want you to know it makes me just sick. What? What? We were just 
saying that Amazon women love to do stuff for men. Listen, yeah. in the first place, you're not men, you're robots. In oh, the second yeah. place, not all women carry curling irons mm -hmm. around. And in the third place, you've got Amazon. It's all wrong. It's like mm. they were noble warriors that didn't need men at all. Mm. It just so happens that the filmmakers decided to take a few liberties with ancient Greek history and add some sexual titillation. And you rummies bought it. Mm. Oh, we got a ship coming into range. Give me mm. rocket number nine. And this is Carol. You know, I must have taken a wrong turn to Piggly Wiggly. You know, we're looking for the paper drive. Well, uh, I can see by your T-shirt that you're an Amazon. <laughs> Card carrying since 67. <laughs> Jeffrey gave us these T-shirts. He's my Cindy's youngest. Cute, I am telling you, that well, kid. Uh, uh, that's great, Doug. Could you um, uh, tell us if you're going to conquer us or take us over or something? Oh, heavens no. Who's got the time? It used to be a full-time thing. Now we just conquer men for charity. It's real, real fun. Uh, well, in that case, maybe you could help my friends and I get out of space and take us back to Earth or something. Oh, no, mister. You boys knew you were going to be in space. You should have arranged a ride. I am not mom's taxi. Yeah, you kids can walk. It's nice out. Well, listen, we gotta run. It's nice meeting you fellas. Bye-bye. Nice kiss. Huh. So, huh, those were Amazons, eh? <laughs> nice, but not at all what I expected. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me neither. Jeez, they mm -hmm. seemed like somebody's moms or something. It, she said they were semi-retired, but still I imagined an Amazon being a noble warrior with one cut off and... <coughs> Um, listen, let's just, uh, I'm not feeling very good. Let's hurry up with the Mads, and I'm gonna lay down. You can make me a soup and sandwich. Good, okay. Come in, sirs, please. Oh, Frank, bring me that memo. Oh, Frank, bring me some coffee. Yes, I'm Dr. Forrester. I'm king of the whole world. Oh. 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 Sorry, I, I didn't mean to. I was just about to, Push uh, the button, perhaps? <laughs> you know me so well. Oh. <laughs> oh, what are you guys doing? You're supposed to be helping me crunch numbers for that navigational plot thing. I'm not going back, Jim. Oh, come on, not this again. You guys have been waiting. I'm in love, Jim. Oh, you? Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Satellite of Love. I'm Joel Robinson. If you haven't already noticed, my bot, Tom Servo and Crow, seem to be obsessing on the Elias Sandoval episode of Star Trek. I like it here on Omicron SETI 3, Jim. It really is wonderful. Wonderful here, Captain Kirk. <laughs> Five seconds to commercial sign. Can I be of any help, Joel? No, I just have to get them mad, and then they seem to snap out of it. You're incapable of feeling love, Spock. I would not say such things if I were you, Jim. You belong in the circus, Spock, right next to the dog-faced boy. That's enough, Captain. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a kiss. What does she know what she's getting, Spock? Your mother was a computer, and your father was an encyclopedia. My mother was a teacher, and my father an ambassador. <laughs> Knock it off, you two. Aunt Dan and Lemon are calling. Now remember, Hobie, you stay away from the kids down by the liquor store. Hey! Baywatch can wait for now, Frank. With the money we earn from this week's invention, we won't have to watch Baywatch. We'll be able to live it. So that means I could be just like David Hasselhoff. I better practice sucking in my gut. You're one to talk, eh, Frank? <laughs> hey. Well, Booby, our invention this week is based on those new high-priced TVs that allow you to check out several other channels on the small screens while you watch one program on the big screen. Our invention goes that one better. You see, it actually allows you to check out and see what you would be doing in your life at that moment if you weren't at home watching TV. It's called the U-View. Check it out, Frank. Hey, it's a beautiful, bright, sunny day out. And what's this? Michelle Pfeiffer, Deborah Winger, and Holly Hunter are motioning for me to come over and join them in a game of touch football? Wow. They needed a fourth player, and I just happened along. Wow. Hey, that's Elvis Costello. He just happened to walk by, and he's... It looks like he's asking us to come over to his house to hear some new songs he's working on. Wow! So that's what would have happened if I had gone out today. Boy, I'm really glad I... 
stayed inside to watch Baywatch. No. Try that. <sighs> I'm sitting in a Perkins looking at a menu. Well, that doesn't seem to be uh, like I'm missing anything for the... Uh, whoa. What? What? Oh, uh, Henry Kissinger and Richard Nixon are shyly approaching my table. <laughs> They're shaking my hands and patting me on the back. Uh, Henry's giving me a Kissinger and Associates sweatshirt. Nixon is... What is he doing? He's pointing at the menu. Ah, he's recommending the club sandwich. <laughs> oh, I do love this, Frank. But not as much as I love sitting at home watching Baywatch. Oh no, I'm in big trouble. I never should have hung out with the kids down by the liquor store. Well, sirs, our invention may look like just an ordinary Weber grill, but it's much, much more than that. Yes, it's the Andrew Lloyd Weber grill. <laughs> hey, everybody, come and get it. I got a whole ream of Andrew Lloyd Weber scores, and they're all ready to barbecue. <laughs> yes, now you can take out your aggression on the theater world's most inescapable troll-like composer. Yeah, just stick any of his many overblown scores in the Andrew Lloyd Weber grill, mm. and they'll burn quickly and efficiently. Whether it's Cat or Phantom of the Opera, Starlight Express or Evita. Hey, wait. Wait, I kind of like the Vita. No time for sentiment, Joel. We've got to burn aspects of love and chess. Yes. Now, wait a minute. Andrew Lloyd Webber didn't write chess. It was mm -hmm. Tim Rice and those guys from ABBA. <laughs> oh, I think the Andrew Lloyd Webber grill can handle them. And we might as well burn the score to Annie while we're at it. <laughs> hey, what do you think, sir? <laughs> oh, man. Elvis is holding up a picture of Andrew Lloyd Webber and making fun of it. Holly, Deborah, Michelle, and I are having a good laugh at his expense. We're having a great time. Why did I stay inside today? Why? 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 Oh, wow, McKenna's gold is on. Uh, well, Joel, your experiment this week will make you wish you were singing duets with Patti Lapone at Mandy Patankin's house. It's an experiment in padding from Roger Corman, and it's called Swamp Diamonds. But first, a short film called What to Do on a Date. You should be able to relate to that, will you, Frank? Shh. All right. Who wants an overture? <laughs> I do. Oh, I do. <laughs> I'm a lot like you were. Ah, great, Joel. That was Thanks. really great. Look, I got to go. I got some stuff. To oh, no, no. Hold on a second, Crow. We're going to do an old Simon and Garfunkel tune called The Boxer, and you can help me by singing the la-la-la parts, okay? Oh, I am just a poor boy. Hi, Joel. And a girl. Oh, hi. Tom Cero. Hey. Hey, buddy. Oh, Bell, join us. <laughs> okay. Sure. Fine. Uh, so, guys, uh, saw that short on dating. They can ask him that uh, gypsy out. What Ooh. do you think? Oh, t Tom, are you sure you want to do that? I mean, I'm positive Gypsy likes you as another fellow robot, uh -huh. but are you sure she wants to go out on a date? Nonsense. I think she'd go out with you in a minute, Tommy Gunn. Yeah? Yeah, you've heard of a mercy date. Up the... Hey, Crow, come on. She's probably just busy running the higher functions of the ship. Yeah, yeah he's right. Yeah. Besides, after the intense discomfort of your almost sibling-like relationship mm -hmm. sends the date into the crapper, you'll feel the the hot sting of embarrassment on your cheeks for months. Okay, I guess you're right. Stupid idea. Just wanted to see what all the fuss about dating was. Uh, Gee. You know, Tom, it probably wouldn't hurt to ask her. Really? Huh. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, uh, any advice? Yeah, just be yourself. Uh, you know, uh, don't get nervous. Yeah, okay. uh, don't invoice her for your expenditures on the date. Yeah, okay, I pr good. I probably wouldn't show her my Hummel collection just yet. Mm -hmm, point taken. Mm -hmm. uh, huh? Avoid boring her with your knowledge of war atrocities. Duh, I'm not stupid. Y you know, Tom, you're going to need some place to take her. Yeah, hmm. Not a lot going on up here, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Weedy roast is right out. <laughs> hmm. hmm. Is hardcore on video? Oh, shut up, Crow. Hey, you know, I could uh, have Coco and we could spin our Jerry Reed albums. Yeah, uh, let's just give it a little thought. We'll be right back. Hmm. Turn it off. Turn it off. I'm a good person. I'm a great guy. I got a lot to offer. This will be fun. I'm a good person. I'm a great guy. I got a lot to offer. This will be fun. I'm a good person. I'm a great guy. I got okay, a lot to okay, offer. This will be fun. Okay, okay, Tom. You're sounding real confident. Uh -huh. I think it's time for you to call up Gypsy and ask her on that date. Here, I'll put okay. press speed down thank for you. you. Thank you. Hey, Joel. Oh, Tom. I'm a good person. I'm a great guy. Oh, Tom. Tom's just about, person, just about to ask Gypsy out on a date, and I told him you and I would set up a scavenger sale like we saw on the dating short. Isn't that a little weird, Joel? Yeah, it is. Here, I'll put it on speaker. I'm a guy. I'm a great person. Person, I cover the waterfront. So, what are you gonna say, huh? What are you gonna say? What are you gonna ask her? Oh, she doesn't like you. What are you gonna do? I don't think she likes you. You think he likes you? Hello. Hello. Oh, uh, uh, hello, uh, 
Jispy? Oh, yes? What is it? I'm really kind of eating. Um, th th this is Tom. Who? Uh, Tom Servo. I stand next to you on the satellite of love. Oh, 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 the, the red one. See, she remembers you. <laughs> what do you want? Go for it, baby. Well, the, there's the scavenger sale. What's that? Uh, well, it's... It's it's just a uh, scavenger scale and uh, sale, and I was wondering if <laughs> maybe you might want to go with me to this uh, scavenger scale sale. Why would I want to do that? Um. So anyway, you want to go? No. Great. I said no. Please, no. please, no. please. I'll say please ten thousand times. Please, 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 oh, please, please. Okay, but we leave when I say. Oh, great. Okay. See you then. Bye, bye, honey. <laughs> nice. Yeah, fellas, you can tell right away when something like that's gonna go real smooth. <laughs> In fact, you know what? Uh, you're a good person. I'm a good person. You've got a lot to offer. I got a lot to offer. You're red. I'm red. Oh, He's red. Oh, <laughs> So you see, I'm the muscular one on the left who makes a lot of the intellectual type comments. <laughs> you know, they actually had to widen my seat because my shoulders kept hitting Joel. <laughs> really? Oh. I, don't, I don't remember that. <laughs> well, of course, I monitor myself so as not to make the others look bad. <laughs> nice fellas and all, but uh, you understand. But, uh, Tom, we better get along on the uh, date part. I've only set aside about two more minutes. Uh-huh. Yeah, neat. You know, it's so refreshing to meet someone else who enjoys the cinema. You know, I feel people are hungry for intelligent Ooh. films to talk about in... Well, an intellectual way. You'll excuse me for a moment, won't you? Oh, yeah, whatever. I hear the secrets that you keep. Hey, Joel, Hi. thanks for setting all this up. It's mm -hmm. really helping, and I think Gypsy's really enjoying herself over there. Hey. <laughs> hey, can you set us up with a couple of Cokes? No problem. Oh, and uh, any advice? Well, Tom, I'd probably rule out the possibility uh, of a second so date if I were you. Yeah, I think it's going really good, too. Now, after we leave, I thought we'd stroll the Lido deck mm -hmm. under a warm gibbous moon, mm -hmm. figuratively speaking, of course, and then... Uh, the sandwiches. Uh, Tom, I think you better check on your date. What? So you want to know how to make Tom cry? <laughs> Scram! <laughs> Uh, <laughs> huzzah, fair maiden. Uh, your prince hath procured an elixir fit for only the fairest of the fair. <laughs> what? Uh, Joel brought us a couple of Cokes. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, isn't that crow guy funny? I suppose so, for the occasional diversion, but he hardly compares with the works of Yeats, Nietzsche, Dostoevsky, which, of course, I read every week. <laughs> uh, right, uh, Tom, this was really fun, and, and your time's up, but I'm uh, going, but you should stay and have fun, okay? Thanks, bye. Uh, no, no, I wouldn't dream of staying. I'll walk you home. But, Tom, I only live ten feet away. And I shall walk on air all the oh. while. After you, my sweet vision. Oh, all right. And I love her so. These are the precious years. We'll be right back. Wow, <laughs> Tom, that sounds great. Then what'd you do on your date? Well, then I walked her back to her place. Yeah, and? <laughs> well, I shared more of my insights into ice fishing. Yes, and? and? Well, she basically implied that she was just dying to see me again. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tom, that's great. Yeah, I mean, it was so obvious. So the way she just sort of uh, barked by, then rushed into her room, uh, slammed the door, threw the bolts, flipped the lock, set the chain. Hey, might as well call her right now. Yeah. Joel, would you do the honors? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Kid's probably sitting by the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. <laughs> Hello? Oh, oh. Hi. Who is this? It's me, Tom. Tom who? Tom Servo. Tim! Oh, I'm glad you called. Um, I don't think we should see each other anymore. Let's just be friends, okay? Bye. Uh, that's too bad, Tom. You okay, buddy? Yeah, I'm fine. I mean, yeah, <laughs> fine. Big deal. No problem. Fine. Well, listen, if it gets bad for you, we're here, all yeah. right? Okay, uh, listen, we got a really nice letter here. You love letters, oh, yeah. don't you? Yeah, I like them fine. I, I don't like them any more than or less than any other day. What do you mean by that? <laughs> this is from Cindy Ketterling. Let's put that up on Still Store there, Cambot. Oh. And she writes... 
My fiance and I do not watch very much television since most of it is only fit for the likes of TV's Frank. But we are both devoted fans of MST3K. It is the only thing on television that we watch on a regular basis. Uh, enclosed, you will find a wedding invitation. Oh, no. I will be getting married soon. Oh, no. uh, my boyfriend and I love the show. Oh, I took him to see The Sword and the Sorcerer, and he still asked me out again. It oh. must be true love. Oh. Also, please tell Gypsy, Gypsy that if she can take a short break from running the higher functions of the satellite of love and oh. can shuttle down to Earth for a few hours, she can be one of my brides. Oh. Fine. 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 I hope you'll all be very happy together, Cindy. Oh, man. I can't let Gypsy see me like this. Is my mascara running? No, you're fine. Okay. Uh, I gotta go listen to one of my Dan Hill albums and just lay down. <laughs> <laughs> and if Gypsy calls, I'm on a date with Cindy Crawford, okay? <laughs> Does this mean Gypsy's available? No, oh, what do you think, sir? Shh! I'm watching me on the U view. Michelle Pfeiffer and I have just had a fabulous date. We flew over to Paris on the Concorde for a late night dinner on the left bank. <laughs> I drove the plane for a while. <laughs> Oh, what's happening? I'm dropping Michelle off at her place. She's motioning for me to come into her place. Yes, Frank, all right, woo! <laughs> you dull dog, you. <laughs> Wait a minute, what am I doing? I'm looking at my watch. I'm pulling a TV guide out from my back pocket. I'm looking at the listings. I'm telling Michelle I can't stay because I have to be home in time for Baywatch. What the hell are you thinking? Stupid idiot. Don't oh, 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 push the button, Frank. Huh? Yes. <laughs> okay, Tommer. Looks like he's ready to roll. Huh? Why don't you go get Joel? Okay. Hey, Joel! Primity Servo, I could have done that. Hi, one and all. Welcome to the Satellite of Love. Hey, fellas, what up? Oh, we only built the most sophisticated robotistical invention ever. Yeah, his name is Minsky. Yeah. Uh, now, just push that button on the top, Joel, to fire him up. All right. <laughs> get this, get this, get this. Here it comes. I am the atomic powered robot. Oh, that's nice. I imagine it's just one of the really neat things he does, right? Oh, uh, what do you mean? I am the atomic powered robot. Hi. Please give my best wishes to everybody. Huh? Oh, I get it. You installed that annoying phrase to balance out the truly cool things he does, right? <laughs> no, it just does the friendly voice. Yeah, we thought it kind of distills our own lives quite well. Wait, here it comes again. Yeah. Wait. I am the atomic powered robot. Fifteen seconds to commercial sign and keep that thing out of my hair. Okay. I am the atomic powered robot. Please give my best wishes to everybody. Guys, do you think we could turn that off now? I'm kind of getting a headache. Nope. He's a new form of life and he doesn't have an off switch. It's yours now, Joel. To steward, to nurture. I love doing good things for people. Oh, me too. Oh, yeah. We'll mm. be He's right back. Boy. He has your eyes. He has your head. Oh, he does. Nice yeah. poop around him. Oh, oh. It's really sweet. Oh, I think he was just... How are you two getting along in here? Hey! Did you, did you Nothing. Somebody... Not... Did you... Oh, you were too. Oh, no. Joel. Um, Nancy and Sluggo are calling on the... Stay away oh, from my book. Oh, hi, Joel. That was really something. Yeah. Well, anyway, Dr. Forrester's been away since last Tuesday. I finally convinced him to go to one of his class reunions. He's got nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, so I've taken it upon myself to develop this week's invention exchange. Now... We've all heard of virtual reality, right? The gloves, the goggles, the wires. Well, I've come up with a similar concept that allows the average person to achieve that universal goal, becoming a stand-up comedian. It actually puts you inside the total comedy club environment with the laughter, the clinking glasses, the waitresses, the overpriced drinks. Uh, it's something I like to call virtual comedy and I think it just might go a little something like this. Oh,
thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are a great crowd. Oh, thanks for coming out tonight. Well, what can I tell you about myself? Well, uh, I'm single. <laughs> Big surprise there, huh? <laughs> oh, thanks. You guys are great. Give yourselves a round of applause for coming out and supporting live comedy. Yeah. All this adulation can't be too oh, good right. for Frank. Let's see how he deals with a couple of drunken hecklers. Oh, what else? Oh, well, I went to visit my mother. That's always a good thing to do. On the way there, I got pulled over by some cops. God, I hate the... Huh? You're not funny. Well, you're... Uh, pretty ugly is what you are. Uh, huh? Huh? Well, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to imply that. It's almost too easy. Your turn, Joel. I tell you what, I'm going to bring out your headliner right now. <laughs> well, sirs, we've all played miniature golf into the small hours, and it presents quite a few nagging questions. Like, is it really golf? No, it's not. And is it really miniature? Oh, not at all. It takes up a heck of a lot of space. Hence, this week's invention. Not only have we taken golf and turned it truly microscopic. Witness the microscope. But micro golf really is actual golf. Here's how it works. On each of these slides is an entire golf course, combining the technical know-how of biologists like Alexander Fleming with the impeccable course design acumen of Jack Nicklaus and Chai Chai Rodriguez. Huh? Hey, uh, each course is constructed of lush E. coli, parduman specimen, and the finest subcutaneous fascia. Okay, now I use this paramecium for a seven iron, right? Uh, right, Joel. Uh, but but I consider the Euglena niblick on this shot and uh, try to put some spin on it. All in right. keeping with the grandeur of micro golf, let us speak in hushed tones. All right, hang up. Robinson teed off moments ago on the short par 5 11th, normally considered a birdie hole. He really let fly using a medium shafted mitochondria. His Golgi body is sitting a neat. 0 0.07 micromillimeters from the flag. Robinson really needs a birdie because the wheels have been coming off. This shot is a bit trickier than it looks, what with the lymphatic plasma to the left and the green sloping towards the nucleoli. All right, I'm lying in the pernicious anemia culture. I'm going to use my pitching wedge to loft it. Oh, the wheels really are coming off. Oh. There they go. What do you think, sirs? All in all, I'm glad I went, Frank. I think I came off rather well. I didn't mean anything by that. Actually, your wife is very lovely, sir. No, please sit down. It was all in good humor. You're a really nice audience. Bounce Frank there, really bounce does there. stink, you know. Please anyway, please Joel, please your please experiment please this please week has a dual purpose. Oh, it'll hurt like always. But my little trip to the alma mater reminded me that I had done some undergrad study in the field of supervillainry. I'll be conducting a little seminar after the film, taking some questions. In the meantime, please enjoy Secret Agent Super Dragon. Shh, all staying off. Point zero zero four. Oh, we got a guy! I'm gonna twerk this hole! I don't know, Tom. This secret agent super dragon music that you turned into a song doesn't look that commercial to me. It ain't supposed to be commercial, man. It's jazz. Well, how would you describe jazz anyway, Tom? Oh, man. If you have to ask, you'll never know. Yeah, whatever. Let's go, let's win! Right, Daddy! One, <laughs> a two, a one, two, three, four. Secret agent. Super dragon. Take it slow, Daddy. Secret agent. Super dragon. Yeah, grab an eight, Joel. Secret agent. Super Dragon. Ha <laughs> we're cooking now. Secret Agent. Oh, uh, wait, a, wait a second. Uh, you, you mean it just goes on like that, huh? Uh, oh, uh, Crow takes a trumpet solo now. Uh, I, I only picked up the trumpet a few minutes ago. I only know two notes. Well, it's not my fault if your chops ain't together. Hey, chop on oh, this, whoa, whoa, pal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, wait a, a second, wait a down. second. Cut it out, guys. Listen, I've got an idea. Just keep playing and singing like you were. And I'll add some spice. Trust okay, me, from the top it is. Secret agent. Super dragon. Yeah, with action. Secret agent. Boom! Super dragon. With romance. Secret agent. Super 
dragon. Intrigue. Secret agent. Super dragon. With boats. Secret agent. Super dragon. Oh, baby, 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 I killed that fat barky, baby, baby, baby. Um, 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 I, oh, sorry, guys, I... Joel, man, you are really out there. <laughs> it took courage to do what you did, baby. You took a risk, you stepped out there on the cutting edge, and you failed miserably. Now, could we please do it the way I wrote it, please? Secret agent. Super dragon. Secret agent. My boss is terminally hip, but I love him anyway. We'll be right back. Super dragon. Secret agent. Secret agent. Super dragon. People, places. Oh, good. Uh, well, if you've all had a chance to look over the script, let's start on Crow, page. this better not be another stupid Earth versus Soup type of spec script, buddy. Tom, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Huh. I've streamlined, chopped, and channeled the spy movie genre to reflect 90s sensibilities. Well, you know, Crow, that sounds really interesting. Thank you, Joel. The market demands it, you know. Huh. Uh, Tom, you'll be reading the part of Sandy Windham Hill, the good-looking, in an androgynous way, super spy who is in touch with his feminine side. What? I I realize I'm asking you to play against type, but I think... Gee, that sounds really stupid, Crow. I can't foil the evil forces trying to conquer the world if I'm a dumb old sissy, oh, Bridges. Wh wait a minute, Servo. Let's just give it a chance. We'll just read Crow's treatment, okay? The Spy Who Hugged Me. Huh. Uh, Joel, you'll be reading a couple of parts, if you would. Sandy's love interest, Holly Affirmations, and the bad guy, Gary Diabolique. For God's sake, man, I want to drink martinis in Istanbul and utter glib bon mots in Moscow and dry with my feet while escaping thugs in Monte Carlo and meet girls in Eponema, the kind of things a super secret super spy is supposed to do. I support your owning those feelings. I support this. Top of page 12, Joel, your Holly. Okay. <clears throat> you understand, Mr. Wyndham Hill, that even though we are sharing a sexual tension between us, I must kill you. Um, Holly, thank you for being honest. Let me say that I think you're a really terrific dynamite lady, but right now I'm in a committed relationship with someone who's very special to me. Hmm. I don't believe this. Okay, Holly pulls a gun out of her purse. I'll oh, use my perfect. hand and says, Then you understand, Mr. Wyndham Hill. Nothing personal. Uh, boundaries, Holly, boundaries. Oh, crow, I'm supposed to be a man who leads a life of danger. Servo, the only way around it is through it. Don't it. Okay, let's jump ahead a few pages. Sandy has carpooled with Gary Diabolique to the World Domination Headquarters, and Joel, you're Gary, and you're going to shame the world with your specially invented anti-Bradshaw device. So top of page 26, and Thomas. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Diabolik, if you have a few minutes, I need to confront you on your shaming behavior. Oh, Mr. Big Wyndham Hill thinks he's going to save the world. Well, who do you think you are, mister? Uh, Gary, I feel you're upset with me. I know it's not about me, but about issues in your family of origin. You've got to be kidding me, Crow. Uh, so you think you know everything, Mr. Namby Pamby Damby, but gonna cry now, huh? Gonna cry? Um, I have to ask you to respect my boundaries. You don't get it, do you, you stupid moron idiot? I'm going to control how people respond to me. I am going to rule the world! Gary, that's really codependent. I can't believe I just said codependent! Oh, that's it. You completely defiled a revered film archetype, and you made me feel like a total buffoon. I'm out of here. Well, really, only Tom can make Tom feel like a total buffoon. Don't fight me. Oh, no, we got oh, move no. Hey, Joel, uh, I've got a pretty good handle on what's cool, right? That's right. You do. Huh. And your average spy movie is generally pretty high on the cool scale? Oh, absolutely. There's nothing cooler than being a secret agent super spy. Well, then would you say that this guy, while lame, is typical of most spy guys in most spy movies? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, then I have a question. I was hoping this was headed somewhere. How come this guy keeps saying confusing stuff? Like, uh, the time he gets jumped, which is obviously a bad thing, he said, 
they gave me a real warm reception. Yeah. Oh, well, they all go to super secret spy school. That's where they learn to hone their precise skills, mm. like yeah. how to simultaneously attract and repel the opposite sex, the virtues of doing espionage in Monte Carlo mm -hmm. as opposed to Little Shoot, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. what makes turtlenecks so darn cool, mm. and most importantly, they take a course called post-kill puns. Mm. And that's where you learn to say things like, we went for a little swim, which means they tried to drown me. Oh, now that's yeah. a cool class. Yeah. Tell yeah, me more. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they, they've got one hard and fast rule there, is you can't kill anyone unless you got a pun. Uh -huh. Shooting someone is out. Hmm. Instead, it'd be more apropos to, like, push someone into the lion's den and say, he went out for a bite. Oh! Or run someone over with a steamroller and say, he was pressed for time. Right, yeah. like that. Or, or how about um, push a gal out of a plane and then say, oh, she just stepped out. <laughs> right, and then there's always the classic, I was all tied up, which means I, I was, was all, all tied up. up. <laughs> right. You know, guys, I just realized that being a spy is one of the only times when a pun is actually acceptable. Yeah, ironically, death actually softens the blow of the pun. True. You know, I think I'd like to be a secret agent just for the pun of it. <laughs> oh, Tom, I'm going to rip your inoperable little arms off and jettison them into space. Oh, Crow, you're so disarming. No! <laughs> Let me at him. Let me at him. Uh, uh, we'll be right back. I really got to hand it to you. That's it. That's, <laughs> you're going uh, out on a uh, limb. <laughs> OK, no, no, no. It's very simple. simple. Secret. Secret simple. Agent. Agent thing. Super dragon. Secret super dragon lady thing. Oh. All right, knock it off, you mutton heads. We got to do that super villain conference call with Dr. Forrest. Super villain deal? Ah, oh, forget it. Oh, come in, your surliness. Sing, sing, sing. Oh, hi, Joel. Dr. Forrester will be with you in one minute. Ah, uh, Mr. Robinson, why don't you introduce your colleagues? Well, sir, it's pretty much the same colleagues as I always have. Uh, Tom Servo, Crow T. Robot, Gypsy couldn't make it. Hi. Hi. Well, thank you for coming by today. Our topic is supervillains, and I think I'd like to open it up to question and answer. Well, thank you, Frank. Whatever. Can I get some cream? No. Great. Joel? Well, I think the question our field reps asked most at this week's movie meeting was why the supervillain in today's film failed to make any kind of an impression, right, gentlemen. Right, Pretty much, right. yep. Yeah, yeah. Not no make an impression, impression at all. Hmm. Ah, very good. Well, perhaps one reason why this supervillain failed, and I believe the 1971 Dr. No monograph will back me up here, is that he did not possess a strange or rare animal. I can't be too strong on this point. Either four legs or two, every supervillain must have an animal. Frank, I believe you had a question? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Uh. Eagerly. I've always thought it would be easy and fun to start up a supervillain franchise. Is that true? Ah, excellent question. Very good. Uh, no. No, it is not easy to set up a supervillain franchise. You see, today's supervillain is, in essence, the small business owner of his franchise. He does the purchasing, the hiring, the firing, plus must maintain medical and dental and benefits for an unstable and terribly dishonest group of henchmen. But if you are dedicated and are not afraid of a little hard work, then you'll find that the field of supervillainry can be very rewarding indeed. Yes, next question. Well, the only thing we wanted to ask, and I think we're all in agreement on this, is what, what do you, do you think, think, sirs? Good question. Push the button, Frank. What the? Hey! Welcome back to the third annual Salty Awards. And to present our next awards, He's at the beak of his career, and she's totally tubular. So please welcome Crow T. Robot and the lovable Gypsy. Well, Crow, it seems as if everybody who's anybody is here tonight. 
That's because they knew you'd be wearing that dress. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you! Flattery will get you everywhere. Now be good and read the nominees. Oh, I'll read the nominees, but I won't be good. <laughs> the nominees for Best Performance by a Red Gumball Machine Looking Robot in a Funny Situation are... Joel Robinson for That Day at Lunch. Magic Voice for Last Thursday When We All Stayed Up Late Telling Stories. Tom Servo for The Day He Lost Control of His Hover Skirt. And, uh, Crow T. Robot, the day Tom lost control of his hover skirt. And the golden bone goes to... Gosh, I'm nervous. Thanks, Joel. Oh, my God. Crow T. Robot, oh the my day God. Tom oh lost my control of his hover skirt. I'm yeah. shocked. I'm shocked. I'm... Thank you. I'm very grateful. I'm truly Wait honored to... Wait a minute. Hold to, uh, on, hold on. This it, is you know, highway robbery. Wait a minute. Hold it. Hey. Hey. Price Waterhouse on the phone. I demand a recount. You know what this is, don't you? It's fear of a short red planet. That's hey, what it is. Hey, I won fair and square, did buckaroo. Not, did not, I did Actually, not, I thought I had a pretty good shot at it. Well, that's Tinseltown. We'll be right back. <laughs> But when you come right down to it, it's enough of an honor to be nominated, really. Hmm? Oh, yeah, the nomination itself is really what's important. Yeah. Oh, who am I trying to kid? A nomination without a win spells one word. Loser. Yep. Ah, uh, come on, can the bitterness, you guys. O.C. and Stiggs are calling. <laughs> oh, hello, Joel. I was just drawing on TV's Frank what I, Dr. Clayton Forrester, was born with. A cleft chin. In other words, a chin butt. <laughs> Call it what you will. The fact is, we found a new area of the human body to be ashamed of. And shame fuels the economy, from mouthwash to deodorant. Where there's shame, there's a need. And our invention exchange this week meets that need. We give you... Frank's wearing the basic brief while I'm sporting the bikini cut. It also comes in boxer, Italian bun hugger, and of mm. course the <laughs> Joe Namath knitted <laughs> slingshot brief. <laughs> They're affordable, comfortable, and leave no visible panty line. Oh, Frank, that's disgusting. If you ask me, you guys have been underground a little too long. <laughs> anyway, our invention exchange this week is based on Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack. It's the Rat Pack chess set. You see, the Rat Pack was sort of a drinking man's Justice League of America. The closest thing to royalty our great nation has yet produced. Why, they were the kings, queens, knaves, rooks, and pawns of our popular culture. My team on my side of the board is the actual Rat Pack. Frank Sinatra, of course, yeah. Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Peter Lawford, Joey Bishop, plus supplemental Rat Pack members, Shirley MacLaine, Sammy Kahn, and Jilly Rizzo. And, of course, my side of the board has the Rat Pack's nemesis. Whether well, there's a Shecky Green, a Kitty Kelly, Liz Smith, Earl Wilson, Sam Giancana, Judith Exner, of course, Bobby Kennedy, and the Dark King himself, Mitch Miller. Oh, boo. Right, okay, now how do the pieces move, you guys? Uh, well, Dean Martin can only stagger sideways across the board. Yeah. Uh, Sammy Davis Jr. can move in a variety of different ways because he's so versatile. <laughs> hey, let's face it, the man was the consummate entertainer. Mm. What about uh, Joy Bishop? He moves however Frank oh. says, baby. Right, okay. <laughs> and what about uh, old Blue Eyes himself? Where does he move? Wherever the hell he wants oh, to. Right. After all, he's the chairman of the chess board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And check it out, he talks too. Here's two bucks, doll face, because that's just what you're worth. Wow, cool. Now, uh, what about Peter Lawford over here? Well, he inevitably gets kicked off the board right. when JFK snubs Frank and stays at Bing Crosby's Palm Springs home. Well, then you can replace him with either Don Rickles, a Toot Shore, or the leggy Juliet Prowse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes Dino passes out and can't continue on. In that case, Liza Minnelli, uh, being the trooper that she is, is always ready to replace him at a moment's notice. Mm. So you see, everybody, even when a game like chess is Americanized, it's still really complicated. Mm -hmm. What do you think, mm -hmm. sirs? Joel, your experiment this week is the magic voyage of Sinbad. We whipped it together specifically to cause pain, and we did it our way. <laughs> <laughs> Get it. Well, oh, no, oh, we we got got 
You don't got movie sign till I say you got movie sign, capiche? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, go ahead, you crumb bums. Thank you. Yes! 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 Oh boy, a heck of hoarding really takes it out of you. Uh, gesturing is grueling. Uh, uh, movie made it look so easy. Uh, uh, okay, you guys, now listen up. We got uh, plans for the next uh, junior jester meeting. The first Tuesday next month, don't forget your dues. Uh, I make a motion that the next meeting we do our cavorting laying down on coaches. Uh, I can't make it next month. Oh, <laughs> uh, hey, but you're in charge of the snack committee. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, there's really no reason to meet during the summer, is there? Uh, maybe we should dissolve the Can chapter. I, wait a second, you guys, we can't dissolve the junior jesters club. Where else am I going to wear these shoes? Oh, wow. Okay, how about we meet June 4th, huh? Uh, no, that's how we got the Mr. B Natural practice that day. Uh, hey, uh, we got commercial sign, I think. God, uh, Crow, could you be a deer and get that? Uh, we'll try to iron this out. We'll be right back. <laughs> What would you do if Sinbad came to your town? <laughs> Wouldn't you want the city council to do something about it? Let's watch. Oh, okay, be it henceforth resolved. Parking is diagonal rather than parallel in downtown Persia. Next item. Can I get some water, please? Oh. Mr. President. You're the president? Uh, sure, why not? Uh, then can I be labor MP? Yes, Mr. the president <laughs> recognizes the honorable Tom Servo. Oh, thank you. And gentlemen, the Sinbad problem. Move the table. He's not Sinbad. Oh, my motion is out of order. I have not yet yielded the oh, floor. Okay. My honorable colleagues and Crow. <laughs> Far too Ooh. long have we denied the existence of this scourge. What a cheap demagogue. Servo, you're a cheap demagogue. Be it demagoguery, sir, to safeguard the public morals. Item one, mm. Sinbad has continually and in clear violation of city statute 101.4563, 1988 statute amended, interrupted our daily routine. He's not, Sinbad. Gentlemen, I'm a fellow what likes to know what he's doing and when he's doing it. Ours is a society based on ancient traditions. I thought we just sold each other fish. That's what I <laughs> Oh, I got one. Could I have some more water, please? And most pressing on the public coffers, why in God's name is Sinbad tax exempt? Look, do you have a suggestion? Yes, banishments! Oh. Okay, the president recognizes the labor MP from Brixton. Thank you. Move to refer whole issue to zoning, move to find out what the heck is with these beards, and move to find out the true identity of this guy's skin bag. <laughs> no, you mean, you mean zigzag. Oh, Precisely, oh, whiz bang. No, no, gentlemen, no, our, our youth, really? our infrastructure. Oh, oh, oh. Move to sketch. Oh, uh, yes, go here a second. I second. Is there any discussion? Yeah, he's He's not Sinbad. Uh, so ordered. Can I get some water, <laughs> get please? Water for you. Oh, sometimes lost causes are the only causes worth fighting for. Oh, movie sign! Oh. I, I couldn't find him anywhere. An updato. Uh, listen, did you check under the control room stairwell? Remember that one time he took a bunch of cookies and wedged himself under there for about eight hours? Yeah. No, he wasn't there either. <clears throat> but I found a Jolly Rancher fire stick with a little hair on it. <laughs> yeah, it had a really weird taste, kind of like Tabasco sauce and Silly Putty. I can't really recommend that. Tom, would you knock it off? We're trying to find Crow. Maybe we should uh, read the note on the desk Oh, okay. Uh, guys? On lifelong quests like Sinbad? He's not Sinbad. Tom? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, guys, on lifelong quests like Sinbad, shot myself out airlock, never returning, ham and fridge, crow. Huh. Crow T robot to satellite of love one. Come in, satellite of love one. What? That's crow. The little fella must have taken a communication headset with him. Come <laughs> in, crow. Oh, Joel, hi. Uh, so, um, uh, I took some thrusters and shot myself out the airlock to go on my lifelong quest thingy. Well, it's, it's not going real well. The thrusters are out of control. It's real cold. 
and right now it seems as though my doom is imminent. <laughs> so how are you? Uh, I'm fine, Crow, but wh where are you? I'm right outside the ship. Well, give me rocket number nine, quick. Hi, uh, I'll try to fly past the window. Uh, oh, still haven't got the hang of these thruster things. Uh, Crow, this is Tom. Hi. Hey, if you're gonna die out in the cold void of space, uh, can I have that Toblerone you've been hiding under your bed? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna die. It's a given. Crow, you're not gonna die. You just need to slow yourself down and get to one of the airlocks. Slow myself down? Oh, no. How we go? Why do these stupid antenna have to stick out like this? Oh, my hinder. Oh. oh. Crow, I've got a feeling it's just about commercial signs, so we're gonna have to leave. Oh, you guys go ahead. I'm fine. Oh, oh there you are. Oh, oh, listen, Crow, reverse your thrusters and steer yourself back to one of the airlocks. On my way to the theater, I'll set them to external control. OK, sounds great. I'm dead. Oh, we got commercial sign here. He doesn't stand a chance. We'll be right back. Hey, look who's decided to visit the ship today. It's the lovable, huggable channel cat from the underwater scenes in this week's Sinbad movie. That wasn't Sinbad. Wow, is that ever boss? I'm really happy to be here, Crow. It knows my name. Wait a minute. And how's Tom Servo? <laughs> Fine, thanks for asking, channel cat. Wait a minute, you're not the same fish from the Sinbad movie. That wasn't Sinbad. Yeah. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yep, yep, yep. There's no way that fish is from the movie. He's doing something. Yeah, I hear you big time. That thing's no more alive than I am. What's it made out of? You know, if I had to guess, I'd say some sort of aluminum armature with a webbing of pneumatics. Still, I don't see any tubes running off it or a compressor anymore. No, 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 Crow. Just look at the action he's getting with that thing. It's definitely not audio animatronics. Now, if my guess is right, and it usually is, is, I bet my wife that Joel rotoscoped the fish from the movie, digitized and copied extra frames of the mouth movement, and then simply used a laser projector to mat the fish footage over his hand. Then there's just a small matter of adding the voice, which he's obviously doing himself. No, no way. I'm definitely seeing and rendering this thing in three dimensions. Right. Mm -hmm. Nope. Sorry, Tommy. Oh, jeez. Crow, it defies any kind of explanation. Oh, look at that thing. Those eyes. Weird, I'm huh? scared, hey. Crow. Yeah. How's Tom ah! and Crow? Oh, it knows what I'm thinking! Get out of my head! Ah! Mommy. Um, how's Tom today? Oh, 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 yeah! Help me, help me. Well, we gotta read um, oh, we gotta read a uh, letter here. Okay, put this up on still store, okay? We'll put that up there. Okay, that one too. Okay, and this is from Alden Chrissy, age seven. And uh, they write, Dear Joel, Crow, Tom, Servo, and Gypsy, I like your show a lot. Whenever me and my dad watch it, we can't stop laughing. My favorite episode was when a man pointed to another man and Crow yelled, pull my finger. Hello. Well, Hoppa. Well, thing tried to jump me, so I had to kill it. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, what do you think, sirs? Did you see that? He was using his hand the whole time. Hi, TV's Frank. My name is Fisty. Well, if that don't beat all. <laughs> How come they call you Fisty? Ah, uh, here's why. <laughs> oh, that's Fisty. <laughs> nice job, Fisty. Push the button, will you? Live to serve. Crow, you're not quite zero Kelvin, but still, it's got to be pretty cold in there, huh? Ah, uh, this is nothing. Give me the deep freeze, my guy. All right, woo! Hey, woo. hi, Tom. Hi, Crow. Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome to the Satellite of Love. I'm Joel Ro Hey, wait a minute. What's with the crow in the box? Oh, we're bringing this temperature down to absolute zero. Seems like it might be kind of fun. Wait a minute, you can't do that. Right. If you go to absolute zero, there'll be no molecular motion. It'll start a chain reaction and kill us all. Yeah, that's kind of how it played out in our scenario, too. Well, wait a minute, that's kind of stupid, isn't it? Yeah, it's stupid. We got to get him out of there. Oh, oh. oh good one, Joel. Oops. Uh, we'll be right back. I, I'm not putting them back together, either. I'm sure.
Okay, there you go. Good as new. Sure. If you ignore the massive structural damage, my complete lack of any re resale value. Yeah, I was ignoring that. Oh. Yeah. oh, hi. Say, would you guys hurry up with that glue? It's really starting to affect me. Yeah, okay. Tab and sloppy are calling. Yeah. Oh, Joel. I was just. Doctor? Have you seen my long underwear? I'm late for my ice dancing lesson. No, I haven't seen your long underwear, Frank. And to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't wear your long underwear even... Oh, Joel. <laughs> Invention exchange. Now, um, I've got a nutty idea. <laughs> but uh, be a dear and go first. Uh, I need a couple of minutes. Sure, if you're not ready to go, we'll go, no problem. Jeez, yeah, foot. Anyway, my good friend Crow locked up the deal to do the music for the Beverly Hillbillies movie. Yeah, well, we're hammering out a deal memo. And yeah. it led to an amazing discovery. Right. Now, remember the Beverly Hillbillies was part of the Paul Henning Hooterville trilogy? Right, that was the Beverly Hillbillies, yep. Green Acres, right. and Petticoat, Petticoat Junction. Right, right, right. Right. Uh, they all had this really cool incidental music. Yeah, it was music that went... Right. Oh, no, 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 no. If I made Joel, oh, sure. it was more like... The point is, I didn't know how to make that music until we came up with... The Pork Arena. Now, yeah. don't worry, all you pig lovers. We didn't use a real pig. We didn't. Oh. No, we just reinvented the instrument that made the original incidental music. The original was lost in the tragic Universal fire. Hey, here comes Mr. Haney pulling another hilarious flim <laughs> Well, Mr. Douglas, that there is a genuine dirt burger. That's not a dirt burger. <laughs> and there's the efficient Miss Hathaway. <laughs> oh, Jethro! <laughs> and there's Uncle Joe. He's moving kind of slow. At the junction. Well, pretty hot. Kind of tired. He's going to go fishing, but it's too damn hot. Let her sit down for a little while. Yep, yep. When's that government check coming in? Pretty hot. Kind of bloated. Going to die soon. You're up, sirs. Joel, the human body. Unattractive? Sure. Even worse, it's inefficient. Especially Frank's human body. I'm late for my ice dancing lesson. That's why I've drained Frank's blood. You, you what? what? You, you can't, can't do, do that? that? Don't worry. I replaced it with propylene glycol, radiator fluid. I even surgically implanted a radiator so Frank won't overheat in the summer and won't freeze up in the winter. And you act like I'm the jerk. I'm so cold. Uh, granted, uh, Frank's new system does need to be flushed nightly, uh, but once you get the hang of it, it's not quite as tricky as it seems and can even be done on an outpatient basis. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Why don't you just leave Frank with his own blood? That way he could wear a jacket and scarf and stuff. And since Frank's blood was a previously unknown type, the money that that brings in should... Why? Because it's science, that's why. Oh, Frank here, why don't you run on to your lesson now? Come on, go ahead, scoot, scoot. <laughs> Joel, speaking of unattractive human bodies, your movie this week, e -ga, has got Richard Keel and not much else. <laughs> Look, Frank signed all the forms. It's an improvement. He even likes it. Why, he's probably out there right now skating his little heart out. Ega. <laughs> oh, God. Ready? Holiday for pigs. <laughs> well, we got movie sign! Oh! Ow! Oh, Gee. gosh, I'm sorry, pal. I've been so distracted. I just keep thinking about that slick gas station in today's movie. Did you notice how sleek and beautiful it was? Uh, gee, no, Joel, I can't say as I did. Uh, cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Hey, come on, I'm serious. There existed a time when our nation took pride in its service station. They gleamed like a beacon of hope from coast to coast. Then one day, kablooey. You know, Sky Chief Super Service turned into the tank and tummy. I don't mind telling you guys, the day this country went self-service was the day that hell began to bubble up and flood the earth. Oh, I hate to burst your bubble, Joel, but uh, what about the bubonic plague, World War, oh. Stalin? 
Well, come on, those are all big things. You know, hell works better when it's a lot more subtle. Here, I'll give you an example. Okay. Crow, uh, what do you think of Adolf Hitler? Well, I hate him naturally. Right, now, uh, what do you think of the band Sticks? Well, you know, they had one or two decent. Oh, my God, you're right. I get it now, Joel. Oh. I'm, I'm not certain when hell started for me, but I think it has something to do with Christopher Cross. Yeah, yeah, well, remember the time that Charlie Weaver died and it wasn't even in the papers? Yeah, or when the 86 jarts. I think the first time Flo said, kiss my grits, something inside all of us withered and died. Using Joe Camel to sell cigarettes to kids seems like a pretty ripe slice of hell. Yeah, I agree with that. And then there was the time Dennis Leary released No Cure for Cancer as an album. And then the time Vicki Lawrence won a Grammy for the night the lights went out in Georgia. I know I stand alone on this, but the day Blansky's beauties got canceled. Yeah, you stand alone on that. Yeah, pretty much. Sinbad's pretty icky. Yeah, what about the Charlene Tilton workout video? Joel, what chance do we have in a world that keeps presenting us with vivid images of hell? Well, there's personal liberty, strength of conviction. Those have been known to work. Mm -hmm. Then there's the time the country rallies together to beat back hell, like the time we as a nation said no to Yahoo Serious. I remember that. All of us, together, drawn inexplicably to the slobbering mouth of hell, mm. and then suddenly, somehow, by some unknown force, rescued in the nick of time like Moses and the Israelites. Now, who in creation is powerful enough to do that? Gee, Davy, do you think it was God? We'll be right back. Ow! Why not try two hands in the club? Okay, you guys, I'm all set up in this thing. What was it for again? Oh, if you must know, Joel, we're going to surgically alter your face so you look just like Arch Hall Jr. Yes. Oh, wait a minute, who's Arch Hall Jr.? Oh, you know, Arch Hall Jr., the butt-ugly teen star in today's movie. Oh, no. Now, this might hurt a bit. Oh, Dr. Gypsy, patient needs gas. Oh. And how are we today? Mm -hmm. Oh, what a nice big boy you are. Mm. East Toast, see you guys post-op. <laughs> Yes, uh, let's get cracking, Dr. Tom. Yes. Once that gas wears off, I don't know how long those restraints will hold. Don't give it another thought, Dr. Crow. By the time oh. Joel comes to, he'll have no recourse but to take up a career as a wimpy B-movie actor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Doctor, yes. I have a mad posh to start with the arch hair. <laughs> Switching on arch hair. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, and it smells bad, too. Yes, yes, now, yes, yes. quickly, Dr. Tom, let's smoosh his face up to look like a sunburned baby. Smooshed mm. sunburned baby, our tall junior face coming up. Mm, <laughs> looking good, Dr. Tom, but he needs that inhuman Play-Doh color skin. But how? Don't fret, Dr. Crow. The pigment's on its way. Watch, Dr. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, the yes. sleeper awakens! Uh -oh. Hurry, he's almost complete. Oh boy. I'll give him the Arch Hall nose and let's get the hell out of here. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, but yes, yes. I don't want to look like Arch Hall Jr. Alas, oh. Babylon, quick, Gypsy, hit him with the fixative. <laughs> it's almost... It is? The movie size. Oh, my God! Oh, now, practice size! Mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm, this is gonna be good. You know, it's as much fun to make as it is to eat. Well, I hope it tastes good, because the as much fun to make part just isn't happening for me. Uh, say, Joel, I got a question about today's experiment. Mm -hmm. You know, that Roxy chick hangs out with her dad a lot, but where's her mom? Oh, well, I'm sure dad's a widower. Well, how do you know he wasn't divorced? Well, because the movie took place in the 60s, and back mm. then divorce was considered socially unacceptable, and so the entertainment industry's elegant solution was the untimely death of a spouse. You yeah. know, you're right, Joel. Now that I think of it, the families on TV back then were mostly run by widowers. <laughs> I mean, think of it, guys. The Andy Griffith Show, Mayberry RFD, Courtship of Eddie's Father, Oh, My Three Sons, Flipper, yeah. even the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> the list goes on and on. Yeah, the only normal family back then was the Monsters. <laughs> so uh, what happened to all those spouses on yeah. all those 60s shows? I mean, geez, back then marrying a good-natured suburban guy with cute, precocious kids was like buying a one-way ticket to an early grave. Right. Well, I know that on My Three Sons, Steve Douglas's wife's untimely death had something to do with Secret Project X-15, yeah. Uh, so how about Uncle Charlie? Did he have a dead wife? Oh, well, he was secretly married to Bob, who died under mysterious circumstances that were hushed up by the government. Now you're making stuff Just up. Just push the coin. So uh, what about Mr. Eddie's father's wife, Wahapa? Oh, you mean um, Mrs. Livingston? Yeah. Uh, she tragically died, leaving the Earth's atmosphere, running away with my favorite Martian. It's sad, really. Oh, now you're making stuff up. <laughs> You know, when you come right down to it, what we're really talking about here, guys, is a cheap plot device that enables young swinging bachelors to mix it up with a hot
hot young lady and still have adorable kids that they can dispense folksy homespun advice to. Yeah, I guess it was all pretty harmless. Mm. Oh, wait a minute, what do you mean harmless? An entire generation grew up watching shows run by single parents. No wonder the nuclear family has exploded in recent years. Hey, I just thought of something. We don't have a mom either. Well, hey, yeah, we're latchkey bots. Oh. <laughs> Come on, you guys, give me a break. Come on, I'm stranded in space. And besides, when I was a kid, I saw the ABC movie of the week with Herschel Bernardi, but I don't want to get married, and it had a profound effect on me. Well, don't worry, Joel. We both know we have a lot to be grateful for. We have you, we have Gypsy, Cambot, Magic Voice, but most importantly, we have lots and lots of love. And that's something you just don't get in a two-parent household. This thing wasn't even on. Oh, God. So we'll be right back. <laughs> Hurry up, Joel. Turn the water on. I gotta wash it. You got off me. I'm naked and afraid. Hey, don't look. Joel, Joel, Joel. I can feel that slimy movie all over me. Ugh, it's like wearing an Orlan sweater soaked in cat liver oil out of the day. Sir, would you be a deer and turn the shower massage head on Pulsey for me? Got it, yeah. Thank you. Hey, uh, pass me the Fell's nap, though, would you? Okay, got it. Here it comes. Oh, thanks. Hey, there's a hair on this. Um, we don't have hair. <laughs> anyway, you guys, we could just uh, get nice and clean, and I'll read this nice letter, and uh, that'll be nice, okay? Oh, okay and okay. this comes from Lynn Ruff and Nancy Payne. Let's put that on Still Store, and the picture on Still Store. And it says, Dear Joel and the Bots, this missive is winging its way to you from two of your very devoted fans. We recently watched The Day the Earth Froze, where the search for a sampo was pivotal to the movie. You expressed a desire to know what a sampo was, so we felt obliged to send photos of an actual sampo. <laughs> See enclosed, okay? And uh, there's the picture with us right on the sampo. And that comes from Lynn Ruff and Nancy Pate. Oh, 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 boy, I feel like a new man. Who washed that movie right off of me? It's amazing what a little soap and water can do. Okay, what do you think, sir? <laughs> No, not now, Joel. Daddy forgot Frank's regularly scheduled maintenance. All the coolant leaked out. Seized her right up. Just got the thing paid for, too. Say, do you think maybe I could possibly get my blood back, please? Oh, you want your blood back? Fine. Baby, baby, baby. I'll put your blood back in. I'll pour it right back in. Come on. Come on, Frank. No, no, no. You know what? I don't, I don't even want it anymore. You yeah. take it. You yeah, take no, it. No, no, I insist. No, you, you take it. You have precious blood. Here, you baby. take it, you big, stupidy, bully butt. You don't take it. On, I'm, you know what? I'm going to push the button. Oh, That's you're going right. to push the button? Go ahead. Right push now. the button, Frank. I'm pushing it. Okay, right. push it then. I dare you. You need your mommy? I'm pushing the button. Oh. Mad about the boy, da -dim, da -da -dee -da. mad about the boy. <laughs> what a cute shape on me, huh? Check me out, eh? Woo. There you go. All done. <laughs> Today I am a real live boy, Mazel Tov. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hi, Crow. Hi, Tom. Hi. hi, everybody. Welcome to the Satellite of Love. I'm Joel Robinson. You might remember me as the guy who was accidentally shot into space and then the hell? Oh. Tom Servo, you're naked. Naked and beautiful, Joel. The human body in all its many shapes and sizes is a wonder to behold. Today I begin a new, no longer Tom Servo mere robot. I emerge from my metal chrysalis. Tom Servo, real live boy. Ha <laughs> ha. Snips and snails and puppy dogs' tails. That's what Tommy's made of. <laughs> yeah, really? Uh, no, paint, actually. Yeah. Tom, you know, I knew this was going to happen sometime. You're experiencing the Pinocchio syndrome. Oh, nonsense, brother. It has always been my dream to be a real live boy and now, I am that thing. But, Tom, why do you want to be a real live boy? There are billions of real live boys on Earth. There's only one Tom Servo. I want to run and jump and skin my knees. Uh, you don't have any legs. I want to catch frogs down at the old swimming Your hole. Your arms don't work. I want to experience the world of emotions and feelings. You'll get beat up because you're a freak. Oh. Five <laughs> seconds to commercial sign. Now I know I'm a real boy. I can hear my heart breaking. It's okay. <laughs> commercial it's sign okay. now. Sitting here smiling, watching Tommy grow. Uh, I'm still wet, you know. Oh, uh, I think you're stuck. Oh. Ah. Gee, uh, Servo, you're going to have to touch up your skin. I can see that. Don't you think I can see that? Sure, spit. Okay. Yeah. That's really pink, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, uh, Buffy and Hildegard are calling. Get this. Oh, Joel, the stories I could tell of 
Frenzied bachelor parties and exotic dancers jumping out of cakes. Sounds exciting? Sure. But around midnight, there you are, frustrated and disappointed with a fake cake you can't eat and a dancer named Candy who has to leave to drive her babysitter home. What have you got? Nothing. That's why we've combined dessert and objectifying the human body in one easy cake mix. Cake and shake. A real exotic dancer included. <laughs> That's right, Clay. Now gluttony and exploitation serves eight. And just think, now even mom, dad, and the kids can enjoy a Chippendale dancer at little Jimmy's seventh birthday party. Oh, Clay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can I tempt you with some dessert? Oh, Frank, <laughs> this looks wonderful. You've outdone yourself. Uh, just a sliver. Oh, it was nothing. I merely followed the easy-to-read instructions right on the box. And hey, here's a tip. Just fold the exotic dancer right into the cake. That way you save a step. You don't have to wait for the cake to finish baking. I'll remember that for my cake for the next bake sale. You what? You baked a person in it? An hour at 3.50? Start digging, Frank. I get the rose. Just dig, Duncan Hinder. <gasps> oh, it's beefcake. Hey. Don't see, because he's hush. Anyway, sirs, our invention this week is based on the old American tradition, the junk drawer. Yeah. Hey, did you know that Benjamin Franklin invented the junk drawer? And were he alive today, he might have invented the new American tradition, the junk drawer organizer. <sighs> Finally, there's a place in this world for those strange keys, ketchup packets, that linoleum knife with the point broken off, all those things that, until now, had defied the laws of sequential occurrence in space and time. Yeah, and how many times have you gone rooting through your junk drawer muttering to yourself, where'd I put that gun? Well, now there's a place for it. <laughs> and, and there's a place for round band-aids, and for that handful of gravel that might be agate, and your shoehorn, and those two-inch pieces of string that might come in handy someday. Mm-hmm. Hey, there's even a separate compartment for miscellaneous grit and lint, already built in. So you don't have to. Well, what do you think, sirs? We could get into a lot of trouble for this, Frank. Oh, Joel, um, uh, everything's fine, nothing to see here. Uh, your feature presentation is a film called I Accuse My Parents. Uh, you figure it out. Uh, enjoy it with the short about truck farming. <laughs> We're gonna have to answer to the Chippendale Corporation for this, Frank. Oh, hey. The jaws of life, man! Get the jaws of life! Cake? <gasps> I'm better. No! Okay, so is everybody done with their art therapy project? Joel, what's the point of this art therapy stuff anyway, huh? Well, by having you draw pictures of your idealized family, maybe you can escape some of the deep psychological problems that Jimmy, the star of today's movie, suffered because of his family. So let's see what you're drawing, okay? This is Crows. That's, that's my dad. He's all powerful. His hands are made of stainless steel, and he has lasers that shoot out of his chest. Pew, pew. I don't have to tell you, he's the coolest dad in the whole neighborhood. And we go one we go to father-son picnics, we win every event. And, and he dispenses homespun wisdom and teaches solid Midwestern values while crushing all who block his path. Uh -huh. What about the handlebar mustache? I don't know. Huh. Okay, let's see here. Uh, oral obsession with mustache indicates nasal labial shame. Good, okay. Now let's see yours here. Tom, what's this? Okie doke. Uh, that's my mom, my dad, and my mom. My mom is Haley Mills, my dad is Gigantor, and my mom is Peggy Cass. Uh-huh, and why are your moms uh, holding hands, Tom? I don't know. Okay, let's see. Latent parent trap syndrome. Oh, man, should be straight Okay, Gypsy, well, oh. this one's really nice. What's oh. this one? Uh. Joel, uh -huh. my ideal family is right here, and I know Richard Basehart watches over us all. Uh. Oh, that's really sweet, Gypsy. But tell me, why does Richard Basehart get to play God? Well, I don't know. Uh, Joel, why are you spending your time psychoanalyzing robots? Um, I don't know. I'm kidding, of course. We'll be right back. I do know. <laughs> I really do know. Gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you our singing star, Miss Kitty Reed. Are you happy in your work? Do you never ever shirk? Sure? 
does your morning menu really send you on your way? Do you greet each day? And is it a deal, a real appeal? Feel you're earning your pay? Are you grateful? You're alive. Is your day full? Nine to five. Living in the rhythm that I'm speaking of. As delicious as your happy grin Do your hours spin And are you a glow to check chapeau No, you're making your tea As you carry crumbs away Are you merry with your tray Living in the rhythm that I'm seeking of Oh, what happened? Oh, geez, I think we spilled some champagne cocktail into Cambot sequencer here. Uh, sorry, Tom, everybody, sorry. Uh, Tom Server, you know what to do. Get down there and muck that out. I'm Roger. sorry, Chips, it was going so good. Well, I guess we'll have to take it from the top. Oh, no, oh, not again. Uh, I think we got movies on the uh, Ladies and gentlemen, today we are watching a film called I Accuse My Parents. Now just to ground everybody, it's the one where the kid accuses his parents. But can parents and parents alone explain mental illness on the scale of young Jimmy's? Mm. Mm. Gee, that'd be nice, but hey, let's try to map out the trail of his psychosis. Mm -hmm. We'll give Jimmy the benefit of the doubt and start with the film's hypotenuse that at the center of Jimmy's madness, we will in fact find his drunk folks. Right, uh, drunk folks concerning whom Jimmy lies. And that's fine, but these are not simple utilitarian lies that satisfy you and me as we interact on a daily basis. No, 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 no. These are elaborate lies, Joel, if you will. Elaborate. Mm -hmm. Through which Jimmy constructs a richly cuckoo fantasy world of love. Then, Jimmy meets a nice young woman. Ah. Hey, Jim, here's someone you might want to confide in. Uh -huh. Truth, Jim. Truth, 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 truth. Mm -hmm. oh, no. Not no. A chance. It's not gonna happen. Instead, Jimmy feels the need to denigrate others uh -huh. while simultaneously attracting others. Which leads somehow to a life of crime, and yet he's ignorant that it is crime. Huh. Related back to the elaborate lies, perhaps, Jim? And where in God's name is the connection to our starting point? Drunk, Drunk folks. folks. Uh -huh. right. and we, we shouldn't forget that Jimmy may be kind of stupid, Joel. Mm -hmm. right. Oh, Cambot, if you will. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Now we've entered Jimmy's subconscious. Uh, yeah. As it spins and twirls to illustrate today's lesson, that true Jimmy scale dementia is indeed a complex phenomenon. <laughs> Cause and effect, good luck. Here's uh, <laughs> drunk folks, but that's just a piece of the puzzle. Mm. Hey, they're stupid, really big. Mm, and yet there's so much more. Oh, no backbone. Oh, and an extra unexplained level of denial. This strange need for mob ties. Yeah, Jimmy's complicated haircut. Oh, there goes his failure in Weeblos. Oh, and original sin, don't forget that. Oh, oh. So if you're off your dot yourself. Don't look for simple answers. Really get inside yourself and just run around and have a good time. Believe you us, it can be a whale of a lot of fun. And you know what? We got commercial signs. Jim's crazy. And stupid. He's crazy for accusing his parents. OK, as we move into the home stretch, I thought it'd be nice to read a letter. So. Hi. Uh, hi, Tom. Hi, Crow. Just getting ready to read a letter. Oh, no, thank you. That's OK. All we'd like is just a cup of coffee. Hamburgers. <coughs> <coughs> well, just get going on this letter, then. Hamburgers. <coughs> uh, no, no, thanks. We're not hungry. Hamburgers. <coughs> oh, I get it. It's like in the movie. How would you boys like a hamburger? Like that? Finally. What took you so long? What a maroon. <laughs> now? Now what? <sighs> no, 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 you stupid, stupid man. Now you present us with a big, beefy, charbroiled hamburger sandwich and a french fried potatoes garnish like in the movie. Yes. Yeah. Uh, all I got is this postcard. Oh! Crow, you talk to him. Uh, 
You were supposed to get us a charbroiled hamburger sandwich like in the movie. Uh, uh, what is happening to this family? Come on, honey, honey, honey. There must be a pie cooling in the ship someplace. A pie? It's just a movie, guys. Anyway, thought we could read this letter now. Um, this it says, for rent, the Barco Rammer, and it's from Peter Spears. And on the back here, let's put that on still store in the back. It says the Barco Rammer, indisputably the finest. It will ram, it will pound, it will press, it will do what you want it to do. And then he humorously writes, the perfect date for Crow and Tom, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> I accuse you, Joel. Now, carefully hand over the hamburger sandwich. Don't let them forget the French fried potatoes garnish. Right. <laughs> Joel, you magnificent bastard, I read your menu. Come on, we gotta beat Marty and Messina, maggot. Well. Uh, what do you think, sir? Sorry, Joel, uh, didn't catch that. We uh, came this close to losing, uh, losing... Rodney. Uh, right, right, almost lost Rodney. Yeah. Is this uh, enough, Dr. F? Uh, no way, Frank, there's plenty more frosting to shovel. It, don't just go push the button, you freaked out maniac. Uh, look, Rodney, I'm sorry this whole thing got out of hand. I'd like to make it worth your while. To... Oh, no, that's, that's all right. That's, you've done enough. <laughs> Oh, now, what is this? Oh, this is my second grade piano recital. Oh, yeah. Hey, Gypsy, wake up, check this out. Oh, you actually get a feeling for what it was like to really be there. Oh, yeah, this is really oh, interesting. Oh, Joff, these are fascinating. Now, who took these? Um, Uncle Roy. Oh, yeah, the guy with the mole. Right, exactly. Yeah. Gypsy, come check this out. So cute. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Satellite of Love. Well, you can probably tell by now that Joel just transferred all his old home movies to videotape. You know what? I think this is that picnic we took up to Koshkanon Mound. Koshkanon Mounds? Yeah, I'm kind of worried about Tom Servo. Oh, oh, so oh, watch what I do now, Gypsy. Check this out. Uh, you pulled his shorts down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, that's funny. Yeah. Hey, are those Minnie's kids there? No, that's Brent and Brenda. They're Brian and Bridget's kids. Minnie's kids are... Oh, oh Ray and Tony. Right, right. and Teresa. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is fascinating. <laughs> Tommy, don't go in too far. Hey, mm. look what I found. Swing, swing choir. choir take... Swing choir. The world is black. <laughs> the world is white. <laughs> All right, explain to me again how this bulky racer fell out of the closet and onto these home movie transfers when the closet isn't anywhere around here. Yeah, weird, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> ah, no matter. I've got duplicates in my footlocker. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I know. I found those. <laughs> oh, Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis Jr. are calling Crow. Ah, Joel, I wonder if you wouldn't indulge me today. Uh, uh, Frank's been down a bit lately, and, uh, well, when the poor fellow's not shuffling head down through the lab, he's locked himself in his room watching old Misfits of Science episodes. So, to pick him up, I thought I'd let him do this week's invention exchange. Really put the spark back in. Dr. <laughs> uh, I'm ready for this week's invention. Uh, we're ready for you, Frankie. Right. <laughs> My invention exchange this week these fully lined leather sprinkler pants that I like to call leader hosen hosen. Now I can shoddish while watering my plants. In my leader hosen hosen. La 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 la
just wanted to wear lederhosen, okay? It's a stupid invention, I admit it. I just wanted to be Bavarian for one brief shining moment. Is that so wrong? Oh, Frank. Yes, it is wrong. Deeply wrong. But you've been under a lot of stress lately. Uh, tell you what, we'll get you an alpen horn. Would that make you feel better? Yes. Why don't you go on with your invention exchange, Jim? Uh, it's Joel, and if you'll indulge me, your hinderness, I'd like to turn over this week's invention exchange to our own Crow-T robot. Thanks, Joel. The vulture, long associated with pestilence and death, is in reality a clean and helpful bird who is quite easy to get along with. So to improve his image, I invented Sarah, the bobbing buzzard. Sarah? Yeah. Uh, based on the water-drinking bird, this friendly carrion eater cleans up roadkill or table scraps. <laughs> Great, Crow. Yeah, it kind of looks like you, Crow. <laughs> I think you'll agree there are few sights in nature as beautiful as a plump member of the Cathartidae family pulling a sinewy string of fetid meat off a weak, dead Thompson's gazelle. <laughs> There's a theme song. Want to hear it? Uh, uh, sure, Crow. Bob and Buzzard. Caw! 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 Bob and Buzzard. Caw! Bob and Bozzard. Deedly deedly deep. Uh, what do you think? Deedly 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 deedly. Uh, your movie this week, Joel, <coughs> stars the. <coughs> Ricola? Oh, thank you, Frank. Would you just get back there? Your experiment this week, Joel, stars Sean Connery's brother, Neil. And they're more than happy to tell you that. It's called Operation Double 007. And now, I have to strangle Frank. <laughs> uh, help! Bob and Buzzard. Caw! 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 By Crow. Yeah! Oh, we got more! Oh, 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 oh. Joel's really gone off the deep end this time. All I know is, in this outfit, I feel like a total femme. You know what? I don't have a problem with it. You know, well, I don't... <laughs> Huh? <laughs> All right, time for my daily back rub. Who's going to do the honors? Uh, Joel. None of us have working arms. I know. Hey, Joel, what is that thing? It's all part of my diabolical plan. But it's just a useless prop that you built. It's not even connected to anything. I know. Welcome to a segment we like to call the Sean and Neil Show, Parallel Lives. In which we look at and contrast the careers of Sean Connery and his brother Neil Connery, the star of today's movie. Yeah, uh, this line represents Sean's life, this one represents Neil's life. Uh, I'll give you an example, uh, Sean's acting talent is discovered at an early age and leads to a long and lucrative film career. While Neil's talent for selling light bulbs over the phone is discovered, leading to a long life of menial jobs and aimless drifting. Well, up here is when uh, Sean gets his first million dollar royalty check for the James Bond series. While Neil gets his first $65 unemployment check after being laid off from the cheese factory. Yeah, mm -hmm. here Sean is declared sexiest man alive by People magazine. While Neil is declared the stinky cat man in room 4B by the other tenants in his SRO hotel. Here, uh, Sean calls the most powerful and influential people in Hollywood and is put through immediately. While Neil calls Pizza Hut and is told that they won't deliver it to him because of bounced checks. Here, Sean is quoted as saying, 
During the making of The Man Who Would Be King, I had creative differences with director John Huston. While Neil is quoted as saying, my manager at the Happy Chef won't let me off for weekends. What a dink, man. Here, Sean goes to Spago's and is seated immediately. Hmm. While Neil's hot plate malfunction and burns down his shabby furnished room. So, Joel, what about that point in the graph where Sean's line actually goes lower than Neil's? Hmm? Oh, well, that was the point where uh, Sean agreed to do Highlander 2, the quickening, and ironically, that's when Neil had to comfort Sean. Oh, boy. You know, we should remind the nice folks out there that this is merely artistic speculation on our part of Neil Connery's life. For all we know, he's leading a prosperous, happy existence on a farm in Scotland with his beautiful wife and adoring children. That's right, Tom. Mm -hmm. And no matter what's gone wrong, with his life, Neil can always look in the mirror and say to himself, well, at least I didn't do Zardoz. Mm -hmm. Right, and so, Neil, wherever you are, we would all just like to say... Oh, we can't move you No, no, no! Come on, just let me try to hypnotize you. Crow likes it. You can't make me, you can't make me, you can't make me! Oh, what the... Ah, Joel, so sorry to interrupt your little skit, but, uh, Frank would like to do a number. I was a little hard on him during the invention exchange. So here's our own TV's Frank, accompanying himself on the accordion with the haunting beer barrel polka. And a one, Humor and him, a two, okay? and a one, two, three, four. Ah, that's rather nice. Not really a polka, more of a march. Good, very familiar. are the Mr. Pibbs that you ordered, sir. Oh, thank you. Just put them on the... You! What the... Then you mean Mr. Pibb? I specifically oh. ordered a diet squirt. I'm so sorry, gentlemen. I'll make it right. No, 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 no. Frank, have the Mr. Pibb. You can have the Mr. Pibb this time. No, my doctor says I can't have Mr. Pibb. Frank, I'm your doctor, and I say have the Mr. Pibb. Uh, the master yeah. wanted you to have these coupons... For, for our veggie feast, he, he wanted you to have them, but I'm giving them to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have to thank you. Thank you. Yes, have a Good nice night. day. I was. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, um, may I use your bathroom? Oh, I get so oh, what the? How do you suppose this happened? We're stuck to the wall. Ah, oh, criminy. Holy cats. Wow. Oh, are you guys stuck to the wall? Yeah. We're immobilized. We're stuck. Oh, I bet I know whose idea this was, sirs. Was this your idea, huh? Hmm? Why, Joel, I... Uh... You got me. <laughs> no low contendere. <laughs> I saw the movie, <laughs> remembered I had my old magnetizer. <laughs> These things are great. <laughs> you gotta admit, it's pretty funny. <laughs> I'm stuck to the wall! <laughs> it's no use, Joel. It ain't gonna work. I'm stuck. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, oh, Quit! Oh, give me rocket number nine! Oh. Very funny, sirs, but I'll have you know that you're probably interrupting intercontinental telecommunication. Yeah. Ooh, wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll demagnetize you guys later. Sein gar nicht mein Herr. Wollen Sie ein Liedchen? How about a recall an hour, Ernst? Until next time, Joel, off Wiedersehen. Thank you. Come on, Crow, let's go. Yeah, yeah, just a sec, Tom. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Satellite of Love. I'm Crow T. Robot, and this here's Tom Servo. Howdy. <laughs> We're retrofitting each other with belly buttons. Yep. Turns out our compeer, Joel Robinson, completely overlooked belly buttons. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just doing it ourselves. Yep. Oh, and there's a good chance we're doing something incredibly stupid. <laughs> Again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but once it's done, Joel can't do anything about it. <laughs> uh, this isn't going to hurt, is it, Crow? Nah, Marriott Hartley had two navels in Genesis 2. Okay. Oh, oh, be sure to put some lint in it, too. Sure. All right. Okay. Let's do it! <laughs> <laughs> but Gravy, what are you guys doing? 
<laughs> well, hi, Joel. Oh, we're giving each other belly buttons. Can't do that. Oh, okay. We weren't that sure. Why, Joel, why? Why can't you give me the gift of one simple belly button? Look at me, Joel. I, who have none. <laughs> yeah, Joel, we don't want to feel weird around the other guys in the locker room. Please, 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 Okay. <laughs> hey, if this works out, can I have an Adam's apple? Ah, yeah. Oh, ah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This was definitely a mistake. <laughs> Drilling holes in our midsections. <laughs> Look at that poor schmo. <laughs> Man, there, but for the grace of God, go I. Quiet. I'm contemplating my Bondo navel. Oh, the uh, Quispin Quaker calling. <laughs> that fanny flag is a hoot. <laughs> Derwood, it's them. Let's talk baseball. Uh, better yet, let's talk baseball sponsors. Uh, better yet, let's just talk. <laughs> baseball, great American pastime. But how can we, as evil scientists, hope to dilute or even destroy this great summertime event? Frank? Oh, boy. This is gonna be dark. Thanks. Our invention exchange is based roughly on the popular baseball promotion night. You know, uh, hat night, uh, sock night. Tunnel of chili night. Uh, right, uh, but we've made it evil and hurtful, you know, like we like to do. <laughs> <laughs> so we've rewritten the baseball season with some unsavory and, in some cases, downright dangerous cross-promotional giveaways. <laughs> For the season opener, we have colorless, odorless, toxic gas night. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this not whole day special, the first 10,000 lucky kids get slide whistles. Oh, boy. And the second lucky 10,000 kids get real brass knuckles. Then the first 10,000 lucky kids become unlucky. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> this symbol here represents the lovable, huggable San Diego chicken, which must mean it just happens to be crossbow night. <laughs> Frank, right on. Ooh. Give me five. Oh, <laughs> you are righteous. <laughs> then there's the promotional tie-in. The beauty of this concept is, is that it hurts the company supplying the product as well as the fan themselves. Dow Corning presents fiberglass insulation night. Park Davis presents used syringe night. Tires Plus presents the peppermint schnapps tire iron double <laughs> Hitter. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's about as evil as it gets, don't you think, Joel? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure, sir. That's real evil. Of course it is. <laughs> well, our invention exchange this week is based on some foot fashions and some clever wordplay. Tom? Thanks, Joel. Say, ever notice how the trendy shoes Doc Martens and the name of the popular mad cartoonist Don Martin almost sound the same? Well, we did. Right. And our take a walk on the wild side department has converted the command table to a high fashion walkway to present Doc Martens for Don Martin, Joel. Ooh. Yes, yes. Don Martin, the maddest of the mad cartoonists, has a real flair for drawing funny footwear. And Doc Martin's British shoe importer also has a real flair for making and selling funny footwear. So I say come on. Uh, what do you think, Chester Bester Tester? How about Poopy Night? <laughs> poopy. <laughs> See, your movie this week, Joel, is a little piece of dreck called The Girl in Lover's Lane. Poopy night. Hey, Frank. Come on, that's funny. I'm not saying it isn't funny. That's what, are you going to give kids poop? Well, I... Oh, 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 oh. Uh, hey, Camba, could you do that music again? Yeah, good. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joel Robinson, and there's nothing that sets my heart a wandering like the sound of a train whistle, Tom. The call to the open road, the urge to check it all and hop a freight train is one of the most romantic notions of the century, bro. That's why we've decided to write our own train songs. We hope it brings out the same traveling vagabond everywhere I hang my hat is home spirit in you, Joel, if you will. Thank you, Crow T. Guthrie. I hear that train coming, coming round the hill. I hope that is my train. I'd better check my schedule. Oops, that was the train to Appleton, but it's going to Circle Pines. Yeehaw! 
And I've got about 20 minutes to kill. It's a good thing I brought some magazines. Huh? Been riding on this old train, been riding it all night. I think I'll go to the club car and get myself a bite. And this tuna melt sandwich really tastes quite nice. Oh, I got sesame seeds in the bun. Plus, it comes with coleslaw and a pickle, and I must say it's reasonably priced. Corolla. 515 from Duluth, all my it's just derailed. The toxic waste is spilling, the conductor's been impaled. A benzene cloud has risen, and the whole time starting to call. <coughs> Within a matter of days, all of our skin will fall off. Well, I'm gonna pick one now. Okay. I can, uh, well, you know, uh, Cambot, could you? Yeah. You know, guys, I. Uh, I get the feeling we're not really cut out to do train songs after all. I really think that being who we are in space and all, we're a lot better at suited at singing about being in cars. So basically, the plan is to get him to ask for change for the pinball machine, yep. then threaten him, yep. and then we beat the snot out of him, like in the movie, right? Well, yeah, I guess that's it in a nutshell. That's beautiful, Tom. Ah, thank uh, you. But what if he doesn't fall for it? Tom, are you kidding? It's like an overgrown child. He's practically got rube sewn into the back of his underwear. <laughs> yeah. He's the poster child for naivete. <laughs> oh, oh psh, here he comes. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, hi, bros. Hey, my old pinball machine. Yeah. <laughs> Want to play? Yeah, no. Uh, what else uh, is going on? Duke! Nothing, Joel, not a thing. We used our tricorders to scan the SOL for entertainment potential, and the pinball machine is the only thing that even moved the meter. Yeah. Well, uh, you guys know best. <laughs> Poor dope. Uh, what's that? <laughs> uh, I said, do you need any quarters? Yeah, uh, you know, actually, I don't have any money. Let's just forget it. I'll give you $50. Need change? Uh, Crow, this doesn't have any connection to that weird beating scene in today's film, does it? <laughs> No! I mean, jeez, I can't believe, jeez, Joel, I mean, what would make you think that? It's just that, jeez. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right, like, like, hey, Servo, let's drag the pinball machine on deck and get Joel to ask for change for his 50 and then hot file him by a bunch of crates we set up to look like the alley. Yeah, right. Jeez, well, you believe, believe this guy? Jeez. Well, uh, if it's all right with you, then I'll just borrow one of your quarters and uh, play a game no, here. No, of course, go ahead. <laughs> That's right, though, what do you think it's there for? <laughs> Uh, Joel? Uh, yeah? Uh, you're not gonna take that $50 and come into our mock alley set and let us hogpile you and snag on you and stuff, are you? Uh, no. Uh, okay, I'll be right back. I'm so what? Really? What you... Joel? Uh, yeah, honey. You're absolutely sure? Yeah. Okay, well, then we're just gonna have to hogpile you here, sir! Well, let's get him! Okay, now, Tom, I don't want you doing this on your own, okay? Okay. Now, exactly what's gonna happen again? <laughs> well, what happens is the fire burns up all the oxygen in the bottle and creates a vacuum. Oh, and then the egg gets sucked down into the bottle. Cool. Uh, what a neat experience. I'm Jack Elam. Uh, it says here in the Weebelow's handbook that it should take about two or three minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, look, it's Jack Elam. Place egg on top of, oh, hi. Nice Jack Elam costume, Crow. Uh, hey. We'll slip in the bottle. Huh. So, has it done it yet? Uh, no. Here are the goods you ordered. Don't, uh, don't, don't bump the desk, the egg. Uh, don't talk to me. I only want to deal with Gypsy. She around? Uh, Crow, we get that you're dressed like Jack Elam, okay? Not just dressed like Am Elam. Am Jack Elam to live like the Elam. The egg's moving! It, it is? Uh, no, I guess not. Uh oh. Look, look, look at me. Look at me a sec. Look, look, look. I'll do that bouncy thing he does. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys are a tough crowd. Worked a long time on this. It's great, Crow. You really look like him. Yeah, Crow, but maybe you look a little too much like yeah. Jack Elam. Hmm? Yeah, well, maybe I do, Servo. What's wrong with that, huh? Jack Elam was a brilliant character actor. For all I know, he still is. And and you know what? I've never been as Jack Elam as I am at this moment. I am Jack Elam, that I don't need your pity. Yes, you do. What are you saying, that I'm a total failure? No, I'm saying that you're a total failure and you look like Jack Elam. Oh, you guys <laughs> don't appreciate me. Uh, let's go, we got commercial sign uh, okay, and we gotta okay. get a new okay. egg, oh, pardon all right? Me, oh, oh, me. oh, oh, oh. Whoa! I'm not Jack Elam anymore. Joel, 
Mm -hmm. Tom and I have been horribly scarred by the way this movie ended, and that means we're filled with rage. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just back up for you guys. You, you, don't, you, you can write a different ending if you want. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's just fiction. I mean, you don't have to accept oh. the ending they hand you. Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, um, oh, oh, just a minor change. What would happen if the nice restaurant woman lived? You think it even occurred to her? <laughs> and instead, Jack Elam is... Uh, Gone. Right. And then Big Stupid and Danny get a grant, and they renovate the cafe. Mm. A real Chili's feel without yeah. all the Chili's crap. Yeah. You know, a fun place for a birthday, Joel. Free hats, prize buckets, you know, hope de doody uh, How's doo -doo 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 -doo. this? Uh, Jack Elam is kidnapped by... By aliens. Mean aliens. Sure, mean aliens. Yeah, uh, mean. Then Big Stupid and his little pal leave that town because they're driftwood, and uh -huh. then the apocalypse happens, Ooh. and dinosaurs roam the land, uh -huh. and they capture dinosaurs, Sweet. and they tame them, and they ride them like horses, and Good. we see the bond between man and lizard, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and it goes uh, on and bro, on. Bro, aren't you know. getting a little bit away from the movie? Bear with me. Then there are pygmies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. live in a vast pygmy mm. kingdom. OK, let's uh, read a one couple of letters one here, one OK? This one's from Steve Boinko of Uniontown, like Ohio. Let's put that oh, on the oh, 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 the pygmies have lain hidden throughout the eons, and they are wise, and they disdain you with their stinking machines. <laughs> OK, and he says, uh, my sister thinks Servo is so cute. What is Gypsy's last name? And oh, oh, oh I, I got it. The, the pygmies are poison if you touch them, so don't touch them. Okay. Yeah, that would be a mistake, right? Yeah. Yeah. So for the invention exchange, you should have a garbage disposal trash can. So that's uh, from Steve And they, they can tell when you're thinking bad thoughts about them. Mm -hmm. So don't even think about them. You see, because they think about them. OK, yeah, and this one explode. is from like, Susie Bell to Rochester, New York. She Why sent a picture, put that on. Oh, 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 OK, OK, what? Oh, then you'll fall in love with a pygmy. Yeah, okay. yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I love and then she writes, I like the time when you sang Master Ninja theme song. And the moral, you see, is never love a pygmy. Because they're immortal. Yeah. And they can fly, mm -hmm. and you can't fly. So you see, your heart's naturally yeah. broken. Yeah. Okay, and then she writes, I like your show so much, I give it 100 plus 100 equals 200. Oh, yeah, you see, you see what happens is then the pygmies get a bus, and they drive all the way to Hollywood. Florida. Florida. Yeah. 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 They're coming from Hollywood. And uh, yeah, this is from Rebecca Hollywood Appleton, Hollywood Wisconsin. Wisconsin. And she Peter writes, and uh, Dear Joel, it's, it's, Gypsy Tom. Peter Lawford and Peter Laurier were, his, were in this film with them in Hollywood. And then their heads started exploding when they went across the desert and were headed towards Florida. Be uh, wait, we got to work on and, this. Uh, and how, how come Crow it? always gets timeouts for being oh, sassy? I, like I think Joel. I like and Reitman. That's a Peter Lawford and Peter Laurier can be called Pete and repeat. That would be because it's already the right thing. Joel is a little hard on him anyway. I think Joel. Should get a time out for once. What do you think? And then they head for the stars. Yeah. And yeah. then you learn some kind of lesson, and then you go home. Now that's a better ending. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think, Serge? Mm -hmm. No, Frank, no more alternate endings. No, wait, hear me out on this. Now, I envision Big Stupid as pure energy. Pure energy? Yes, I'm but fascinated. Frank, step this way. He's plucky pure energy. Plucky pure energy. Pure Just, energy uh, with a, a seat. heart. Lay down there, and uh, if you would hold this railroad spike on your skull. Sure. Now, I envision a moment of truth. Now, there could be lots of adventurous scenes. Here's a moment of, of truth? In front of oh. <laughs> well, I also see a role for Charles Durning in this. There could be. <laughs> Till next time, Joel. Then there could be another scene. <laughs> 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 Thank you, thank you, hot show. Hey, great to be here, great crowd tonight. Thank you. Let's hear it from my musical director, Servo Marcellus. Hi, everybody, welcome to The Satellite of Love. I'm Joel Robinson, and as you can see, the bots are putting on their own version of The Tonight Show. We're just in time for the monologue. So, what's going on in the news today? <laughs> Have you seen that panty raids are once against all the rage of colleges? <laughs> I didn't know so many members of Congress were going back to school. <laughs> <laughs> I see the new Sharon Stone movie is so steamy it has to be edited in order to get an R rating. They had to cut out all the scenes of Congress. <laughs> oh, God. See, the new poll says the public objects to TV shows that are about sex. Hey, I like watching shows about Congress. <laughs> hey, good oh, you better knock it off. You could get sued for that, you know. Well, I'd hire a congressman to defend me, but they're all out having sex. <laughs> sex, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Hey.
So, uh, does this clip need any setup? <laughs> Who's, whose job is it to set up Congress? <laughs> We're done with that game. Congress. Uh, uh, Wilbur Mills uh, and Fanny Fox are calling. They had sex. Sure. What would you say if I told you I've invented a low-cost, low-maintenance household device that could easily last for a decade or more? <laughs> say hello to Frank's heart. You've invented Frank's heart? <laughs> no, silly boy, I've, I've harnessed Frank's heart. <laughs> I was uh, cleaning the snakes out of the pantry yesterday when suddenly it hit me. Nothing works harder than the human heart, especially when it's clogged with cholesterol. Uh, now, Frank's heart was a mess, and it's getting worse all the time. Rest was easy. Frank eats, I surgically attach a generator to his heart, and voila, the cholester do all. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, here you go, Frank. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, and I've got to whip you up some eggs, Frank, and your turban's slowing down, so eat some of that pie, will you? Uh, uh, you see, it's simple and efficient, and uh, I can run a blender and uh, a toothbrush and a room fan and a radio and a garage door opener and an art welder. <laughs> well, at some point, this will kill Frank, but I think it's worth it. <laughs> An EKG, does this work great? <laughs> Frank, eat! Joel? Oh, sure, that's great, Dr. F, for you. Uh, anyway, up here on the Satellite of Love, where life's generally bright and cheery, we've decided that backwards masking has gotten kind of a bad reputation. Hardly surprising, really. Right under our noses, thrash, metal bands, giving us all backwards messages to worship Satan and the like. <laughs> Sheesh! So we've come up with Backtalk. It's a backwards masking personal memo machine that helps you remember things subliminally. Right. But first of all, start with some nice, pleasant music. Oh, there now, isn't that nice? And simply tape your message to yourself backwards. Right, let's say I'm an executive and I want to leave a memo to myself. I'd leave a message like this. Uh, to cart, knock, to bluff, to ubla, nod, kasa. <laughs> then, Ask the next day. About. Fulbright, contract. Uh, it's fun! <laughs> it is! You get to talk backwards. Try it, Tom. Artled pate oop reb memir. Remember to tape Delta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this will be invaluable for business persons, students, homemakers, teachers, cutlery salesmen, congressional aides, barbers, rubber novelty district representatives, gym teachers, that big guy. Uh, the Crow, hmm? that, that's plenty. What, what do you think, sirs? Keep going, Frank. I've still got a vacuum under the couch. Now, <laughs> Oh, good one, Frank. Joel, your movie today is called The Painted Hills. It's got Lassie, yes, the dog, starring as Shep, another dog. Oh, and there's a hygiene short that I was hoping Frank would see. Frank, I'd love to revive you, but how can I when I can't run the defibrillator? Frank? Dr. F is a butthead. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight on The Advocates, our debate will be about the woman from today's short. Tom Servo and Protein Robot will argue over whether she is more attractive sloppy yes. or clean. clean. Representing sloppy will be Crow. Yes. <clears throat> Representing clean will be Servo. Thank you. Yeah. I will be your moderator. The outcome will be decided by Joel Robinson. I now turn the floor over to Crow. <laughs> uh, thank you, Gypsy. <clears throat> I like her sloppy. While her well-groomed, in other words, square, classmates were listening to Pat Boone and Patty Page, she was at the local jazz club grooving to Miles Monk and Coltrane. While her classmates were struggling to make it through an issue of Reader's Digest, she was the only woman on campus who could freely quote Henry Miller. She may be sloppy, but she fits neatly into my idea of paradise. Thank you. Thank you. Tom Servo, 
<clears throat> Thank you, Gypsy. <clears throat> I like her clean, because it just shows that she wants to change the system from within. Sure, she's a seething cauldron of passion, but she wears clean underpants, and she knows where her shirt is in the morning. Call her what you will, a Scoop Jackson Democrat or a Jacob Javits Republican. Either way, she's the stuff that dreams are made of. Thank you. Thank you, boys. Thank you. And now Joel Robinson will render his verdict. Joel? Well, thank you, Gypsy. Uh, both of these issues are complex, and there are no easy answers, but Crow's right. Oh, oh, I'm right, I'm right! Oh, 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 whoa, 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 oh, wait a minute, Joel. Now, the whole subject of cleanliness and grooming is very important to me, and I know a much more effective way to resolve this issue. Well, uh, how's that? A spitting contest! Ah! Oh! Oh! Hey! Hey! With an ice pick through the skull, thus bringing to a brutal end the passionate life of one Lev Davidovich Bronstein, Leon Trotsky. Thank you. Oh, oh wow. wow. Gypsy, wow. that was terrific. Oh, okay, that was you riveting. Hi, oh, oh, everybody. Welcome Hi. to the Satellite of Love. We're just finishing up this week's term paper assignment, the mm -hmm. topic being famous figures in history that look like the cantankerous 49ers in today's film. I did one on Aristotle. Uh, Tom Servo did a hilarious send-up of the Smith Brothers. Should have been here. I did both parts. Yeah. <laughs> and now that we're all done, it's time for Ovaltine and Popcorn. Oh, I just love Ovaltine. Hey, hey, what about me? Hey, what am I, burnt toast here? Oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Crow. And now, Crow T. Robot. Uh, uh, put my study aid up. Uh, uh, what? My study aid. It fell down. Put oh, that okay. Up. All right. Oh, and uh, Cambot, cue that music, please. <clears throat> Rutherford B. Hayes. <coughs> Rutherford B. Hayes was born humbly to his own son, Rutherford B. Hayes Jr., in Delaware, while it was still Ohio, sometime after the French Revolution. Huh. Rejecting a career as a professional speller, he was admitted to the bar in 1845, though he did not drink lustfully from it. Uh -huh. Serving heroically in the Civil War, Hayes admitted later that it was in the Army he first tasted human flesh. Oh, in 1876, Hayes beat Bill Tilden in a three-set quarterfinal at Flushing Meadows, which caused the Electrical College to declare him President of the United States. Uh -huh. Oh, you just kind of threw this together, didn't you? Please, Joel, I'm quoting from the World Book, Chapter H. Huh. <clears throat> Here are a few of the highlights of the administration of Rutherford B. Hayes. In 1877, Reconstruction ended, and Jacques Derrida was named Secretary of Linguistics, and the era of deconstruction began and continues to this day. I just don't think that... Thomas that... Edison invented the pornograph, beginning the age of pornography. President Hayes then passed the Hayes Act, started the Hayes office, won fame as an American lyric tenor, and was named Archbishop of New York in 1919. I think he's lying. No, I'm not. <clears throat> After he retired, he founded the original ZZ Top with James Garfield oh, yeah. and Chester Allen Arthur. Uh -huh. Shocked the world with a publicity stunt when, on a bet, he made a tent out of the underwear of William oh, Howard Taft Lord. and lived inside for a full year. Well, yeah. he did. And in later years, Hayes retired from the stage and did a series of memorable character parts in Hollywood. Uh -huh. Who can forget the time he was slapped by Jacqueline Bissett in the 1971 Universal movie Airport? <laughs> and then, after inventing Ringworm, Hayes died. His last words were, I have only one life to live. Let me live it as a blonde. The end. Oh, and his blood type was AB. The end. Sad what the mind can do, isn't it? Yeah, I'm gonna have to hold you back here, Crow. Cool. Can I have my same desk? Yeah. No! Oh, no! Oh, 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 <laughs> Joel! Oh, Servo oh. went and melted me into a gold ingot! And it itches a little bit. Meets the new gold standard, Joel. <laughs> yes, our very own Crow. Ha! Ha ha! Ha ha ha! Mm. Uh, Tom, uh, Crow is not gold. He's gold tone. I, I painted him gold. Yeah! Oh, you'd like me to believe that, wouldn't you, Mr. West? <laughs> yeah. I... Uh, you know, Tom, Crow's basically uh, high density Kevlar. That's it. Yeah! Really? Yeah. Trying to head me off at the pass, eh, Joel? Tom, listen. If you break Crow down into his essential elements, he's virtually worthless. Yeah! Hey. How stupid do you think I am, old man? Put him up. Listen, up here, snack items have more uh, value than crow does. You'd be better off staking your claim to a box of bear witches, Tom, okay? The point is, Joel, he's gold and he's mine. <laughs> Together, I can rule the world! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm really worth a fortune. Uh -huh. uh, in fact, I want me. Wait a minute. Uh, 
Yes, I'm mine. I'm mine, all mine. Come on, <laughs> dummy. It's time to extrude you. <laughs> Well, that movie had an interesting message. Yeah, that any flea bag's white hot vendetta should go unchecked until the last man lay bleeding at the bottom of a ravine with a crushed skull. Yeah, that's what I got out of it too, Joel. Well, oh, come on, you guys. Lassie was just doing what she thought was right. <laughs> yeah, well, who died and made that scabby mud judge, jury, and executioner, <laughs> hmm? Well, somebody had to bring that guy to justice. Oh, so is that the message, Joel? Uh, take the law into your own hands, even if you drink from a bowl on the floor? No, well, maybe. Yeah, well, I say if that DA in that jerkwater two-horse mining town had any guts, he'd bring that shaggy butcher up on murder one and make sure she never nuzzled another crotch, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, but she saw Taylor murder Jonathan. She was hurt. She had to lash out. Oh, great. So by your code, I accidentally bump my Rottweiler with a screen door. I wake up the next morning with a severed cat head in my bed. Oh, good one, Joel. Face it, Joel. Your precious lassie should be doing consecutive life sentences at the Crowbar Motel. Yep. We got a body, we got a motive. The paw prints and bloodstains put her at the scene of the crime. We got witnesses that saw her threaten him. We got a handful of people who saw her slip her tether and go after him. That cur is gonna fry, Joel. Fry. What about a murder weapon? Her own devious mind. No deals on this one, Robinson. Your client's gonna fall. She's gonna fall hard. Oh, yeah? Well, yeah. there ain't gonna be any deal this time. You're going to the mat on this yeah. one. Listen, yeah. let me tell you, you got yeah. nothing. Yeah. You got nothing yeah. and you're scared. Yeah. Well, you're just blowing yeah. smoke up. Listen, I'm not gonna get sucked into this <laughs> with you guys. Listen, uh, Lassie is an animal and therefore not subject to the same moral or ethical code that human beings are. Otherwise, they'd all be arrested for public nudity. Huh. Got a point. Yeah, makes sense. What do you think, sirs? I'm going to bed. Frank! 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 Frank, no! Hi, Joel. Uh, Frank's dead again. <laughs> well, I gotta go out and buy him a new heart now. Like there's not enough I gotta do around here. Ooh. I'm coming, jeez! <laughs> Okay, Gypsy, it's your turn. Roll them. Come on, box scores! Okay, looks like... Oh, still... Oh, got a six, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, with each pump, my mind expands at an alarming rate, and I don't mind telling you, it's a harsh, jarring, comfortless experience. Oh, come on, quit your belly. Hi, everybody, welcome to the Satellite of Love. I'm Joel Robinson, and the bots and I have decided to turn old Tom Servo in that Milton Bradley game kaboom. Okay, come on. Oh, uh, got an eight. Oh. Oh, that stings! And that's another thing. Why kaboom, guys? I feel more suited to go to the head of the class or stadium checkers or even kerplunk. <laughs> Anything would be better than this. If Gee. it would make you feel any better, we could play hands down with you. Why, that's it! Oh, great day! Hands down, that's the slap happiest game ever! How would we play? I thought we'd just get in a circle and hit you and snag on you and crush you. Guys, you. I, could, uh, <laughs> survey, I gotta go survey the electronics on the ship. Could we just forget about the game and pump up Servo's head until it pops? No. Yeah, no. that's it! No, no, pop no, him! No. Pop please, him! Please, pop, please, pop, please, pop. Please. pop! 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 Pop him! Pop him! Pop! 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 Pop him! Pop him! Pop! 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 My lord, this is incredible. My head is so huge, I've accumulated all the knowledge of all humanity throughout the ages. Yet all I can think about is why. Why did they cancel Manimal? Why? Oh, uh, Peter Lynn Hayes and Mary Healy are calling you guys. Oh, hello, Booby. Say, do you want to make people's heads explode? Sure, we all do. Well, my invention exchange this week is a study guide I put together called the Scanner Planner. It's filled with lots of life's little instructions on how you can scan people's brains and make their heads explode. Now, the first thing you'll need for your scanning is a good subject, someone who's your moral and intellectual inferior. I wonder who that could be. Hi, Dr. Forrester, what you doing? Hey, you were scanning me, weren't you? You tried to make my head explode, you freaked out maniac. Oh, oh. This could take a while, Joel. Back up to you. 
Sirs, when are you going to realize that when you kill each other, you're only hurting yourselves? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, our invention exchange is based on one of the century's safest, softest, and funnest concepts, the wiffle ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. And we've taken the whole wiffle concept and siphoned it through our own madcap, irreverent viewpoint. <laughs> For instance, there's the wiffle hat. <laughs> it's lighter, cooler, and more comfortable than any ordinary hat. <laughs> and there's the uh, wiffle glass. Oh, yeah. Makes any soft drink wiffleicious. <laughs> well, we haven't uh, uh, quite worked out all the kinks uh, yet, uh, but I've come up with something even cooler. Oh. Wiffle cheese. Hey, wait a minute. This is just Swiss cheese. That's right. It's nature's own wiffle. That's right, and think of the possibilities. They're endless. Wiffle cat, mm -hmm. wiffle dog, wiffle roach motel. Wiffle sports jacket, wiffle replacement hip, wiffle underpants. Wiffle shoehorn, wiffle apartment building, wiffle Claude Aiken. Wiffle! What do you think, sirs? What? Oh, Joel, uh, your movie this week is your first Western. It's called Gunslinger, and it stars Beverly Garland in her pre doty period. Beverly Garland? It was also directed by Roger Corman, so your hits may explode before Frank's does. yippee ki Mama Jama. Oh, oh, he made my head explode. Ooh. Thank you, Dr. Forrester. Oh, Thank you. Oh, we got him. <laughs> Thank you. So, this is what it's like to be dead. Well, roughly, this is what it's like to be in a casket. So, uh, why are we doing this? No, aren't you curious? About being dead? <laughs> We're robots, Joel. We're not the ones who have to worry about it. Uh, you understand my point? Oh, yeah, well, at least I have a soul, okay? Oh, yeah, sure you do. Anyway, even though I'm not gonna die, I sure could see having a snappy funeral. No, not like the one in the movie, though. What a drag. No, oh, at my funeral, I'd hope my friends would toss me up and down in a blanket like the Eskimos do, you know? Really go for some height? Ooh, well, how about a beach funeral? You know, pony keg, bonfire, Ooh. couples <laughs> slipping off into the woods to neck. Prop me up so I can surf. <laughs> me, I'd go the dignity route. You know, a variety of ethnic foods, uh, maybe a saxophone quartet. Ah, oh, dignity, schmignity. Joel, I want elephants, lots of them. Mm -hmm. And circus ladies as my pallbearers. <laughs> I want them enthusiastic and wearing those little frilly skirts, those little tutus. <laughs> uh, you know, Tom, cost could be a consideration. Oh, yeah. nonsense, Joel. I'll lie in state for several days at the Corn Palace hmm. while Hooked on a Feeling is sung by a choir of castrati. You know, there's always the educational route, a real hands-on kind of funeral, details of my embalming written up and distributed. <laughs> it fun. is fun to think about, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Huh. <sighs> so, uh, when you humans die, um, that's it, right? Uh, you're dead forever? Yeah. Well, isn't that like throwing the baby out with the bathwater, Joel? Yeah, why don't you just not die, Joel? Well, everybody dies. Oh, and if everybody ran off a cliff, you'd do that, too. Well, uh, that's not the way it works. Besides, we got commercial signs. Well, it's just weird, that's all. Maybe it's us. Joel, is there any way I could be mummified and placed next to Stalin? Sure, honey. Well, that's what I want. Mummified and placed next to Stalin. Dum, dum, ba dum. Bum, ba da da dum, 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 da 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 dum, da dum, da dum, dum, da 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 dum. Wow, this is great. You kind of got a Pony Express kind of Gypsy Express thing. Whoa, stand back, civilian. You may be interfering with this daring horseback rider of the Pony Express, carrying mail from the satellite of love to the... Whoa, girl, satellite of love. <laughs> Make whoa, haste, girl. man. Be gone. Off with you. Go, oh, oh, Concord. Oh, owie, 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 owie. There goes owie, owie, a brave owie, owie, fella owie, 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 and his brave owie, owie. horse. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, by the way, Joel, I'm sending you a very important message. Oh, okay. I just hope to God it gets to you in time. Uh, Servo, I'm standing right here. What is the point? The point is, Joel, just play along. Whoa, Gypsy! Watch out for that! Ow. So, uh, what did you write to me in that letter? Oh, that I wanted a peanut butter and Dijonese sandwich and a Snapple for lunch. Oh, here it is. Oh, girl. Oh, you're a lot heavier than you appear to be. You, uh, Joel Robinstone? Uh, that's Joel Robinson, yes, and this is for me, I imagine. Okay, let's see here. Uh, dear Joel. Oh, yeah, dear girl. Dear Joel, how are you? I am fine. I want a something, something, and a Snapple for lunch. That's, that's Yours very truly, Servo. Sandwich. Okay, I'm going to have to respond to this. Uh, sandwich, Joel. It's uh, very simple. Yeah, could you turn around? Let me just write this down. Okay, uh, dear Servo, 
Uh, I am in receipt of your correspondence regarding lunch, and I regret to inform you that I cannot read the two words you wrote between I want a and a Snapple. Please respond at your convenience or before lunch. Regards, Joel. A peanut butter and Dijonese sandwich. It's not that difficult. Oh, for Christ. This is going to take forever. I'm okay. so hungry. Oh. <sighs> Well, you know, those kids don't even know that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. What could be taking them so long? Whoa! Oh. Whoa! Oh, look at that! Oh, 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 behind her! Oh, 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 but, Tom, that doesn't explain how John Ireland could go into the attorney's office and suddenly appear on his horse in the street. Look, Joel, it's really just a broadened interpretation of quantum linear superposition, okay? Super uh, huh? They simply observe the apparent relative state of a John Ireland in one place, while in actuality he coexisted in the objective vector state, you see? Uh, I have a theory. Uh, that town is a bunch of false fronts, and he ran over there real fast. All right, I'm with him. Guys, why is it so hard to accept the fact that time is not an immutable forward progression, but a factor in a space-time model of relativistic causality and determinism. Huh? Guys? Hello? Geez, like a couple of cattle, these two. Okay. <clears throat> Here, I'm going to demonstrate, okay? Watch me closely. Ellie. oop <laughs> Hey, wait, where'd he go? I don't know. He just I'm over here, guys. No! <laughs> I, I hate when you do that. But, Servo, that's fantastic. That's amazing. It's physics, Joel, plain and simple. You just exist in one observable region in phase space, and then, zip, you simply realign your point of origin. You see? He does this to me at night. Scared the hell out of me. It's easy, guys. A trained chimp could do it. Come on, Joel, try it. It's fun. Okay, I'm uh -huh. going to excite myself in mm -hmm. a position of undetermined oh, origin and region. And Zach! Nope, 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 uh, nope, 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 nope. It didn't really work. Well, I'm not doing it. Doing it makes you chubby and stupid like Tom. Whoosh, say it to my oh, face, no. Kimby. The gel oh, help me. Hey, you know, I can also hey. warp space and time oh, this way. What? Oh, I don't <laughs> think that. But that still doesn't explain how John Ireland is able to go into the attorney's office and end up on his horse on the st What? <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> hey, my sandwich is whole again. Yep. Cool. We'll be right back. No, 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 no. They'll be right back. We'll be right here. Honey, don't. You know, Roger Corman can make almost anything seem dismal, but still the 1870s had to be a pretty foul decade, eh? Well, I barely remember the 1870s, but I was around for the 1970s, and you're right, it was a pretty foul decade. Cool, Did you wear chaps and cowboy hats and stuff? Uh, no, but I knew people who did. Were the James gang still around? Oh, no, uh, Joe Waltz broke up and started Barnstorm. Oh, hey, did you ever rope cattle or bust broncos and stuff? No, but I rolled my charger a few times. Wow. Well, uh, let's read some letters, huh? Where are they? Uh, uh yeah, they're down there. Oh. Yep. Fresh, crispy letters. Mm -hmm. Hey, they are fresh and crispy. Ew. Yeah, yeah, we uh, deep fried them. Why? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question, Joel. Oh, never mind. Let's just uh, blot off some of this grease, mm. uh, break off some of this admittedly uh, delicious looking crust. Ooh, Spend. caution, filling is hot. Yep. <laughs> Careful. Okay. And uh, about how many weeks worth of uh, letters did you fry anyway? Well, like four mailbags full, whatever that is. Yep. We had a lot of frying medium and a yep. lot of letters. <laughs> well, honeys, don't deep fry any more letters, okay? Uh, okay. okay. Okay, this letter's from France. Ooh, this is French. Oh la la. And uh, put knee. that on still store. It's French. And uh, French. Uh, that's from Mike, Murph, Amy, Dan, Nancy, Jeff, and Marie. And they write, dear fellows, our club is made up of members from Nice, Monaco, and Menton. And we meet regularly to scarf down Mexican food and watch the latest tent tape sent over by our supplier in Southern California. Wink, wink. <clears throat> so far, our club is exclusively American as the British folks we've tried to recruit just haven't gotten overly excited. But hey, what can you expect from the people who gave us Benny Hill? Hey, they gave us Monty Python, too. Yeah. yeah. But there is that Benny Hill thing. Yep. There it sits. Oh, what do you think, sirs? Don't. Oh. Wow, it worked! I blew Frank's head up. Well, remind me to snap on a new one, Joel. Until next time.
Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Satellite of Love. I'm Joel Robinson. Oh, look, here comes uh, Tom Servo, Crow T Robot. Hello. Evening. Hey, come on up here, you guys. I want to show you this toothpick sculpture I've been working on for the last three years. Been working three years on that? Well, yeah, on nights and weekends. And... Not very good. Uh, I mean, uh, what is it? It's a scale reproduction model of Monticello rendered in toothpick. I got the idea off the nickel, see? It's beautiful. Ooh. Where'd you get all the toothpicks? What, are you kidding? We're on a spaceship. This place is crawling with toothpicks. Uh, well, it really is cool, Joel. Uh, of course, you know we'll have to break it. <laughs> it's nothing personal, you understand. It's just a thing we have to do. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Hmm? Uh huh? Sure, go ahead. That's why I made it. Smash oh. away. No, no, no. Joel, you're really? ruining it for me. Yeah, I feel dirty. Commercial oh. sign in five seconds. Sure seems like a waste it being all toothpicky and fragile and all. Commercial, Commercial sign, sign now. now. I'm just going to leave it here, unattended, to dry. Now, we'll be right back. <laughs> So how was it for you? Well, as far as breaking stuff goes, it was good, not great. Yeah, not as good as that ceramic bell collection. Oh, mm. oh Milovitz and Associates are calling. Oh. Hey, and this? Oh, let me see. Oh, <laughs> that's my old head. <laughs> Just file that under Frank's first head, OK? Right. Oh, hi, Joel. Uh, Look, we're way too busy to even do an invention this week. We're being audited. You go right ahead, though. It's a Doc Tari stool. <laughs> what do you think, sirs? <laughs> Doc Tari stool? Whatever. Anyway, Joel, it's a madhouse down here. Uh, we're being audited by the Fraternal Order of Mad Science. You know, one of those are you really mad enough sort of things. Frank? <laughs> Three Jarvik sevens. Put them in the junk drawer. Jeez, didn't the temp agency test you on any of this stuff? Well, I'm a little off my game. I'm not normally required to wear a leg iron like this. Say, what is the deal with this guy and those cute robots? Listen, Mr. $4.25 an hour. You stick with the boxes, and I'll handle the experiment. Is that all right with you? Frank, can I see you a minute? Sure thing, Dr. F. Say, Steve, this temp stuff is working out great, don't you think? Well, I'm so glad your little friend is working out so nicely, Frank. Now, what about sending Joel the movie, a boob? Oh, the movie, the movie, the movie. Oh, for the love of the movie. Movie, 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 movie. Oh, Frank, look, remember? The double butt graft. My science project from Evil Oats. I grafted the butt of a dog onto the butt of a cat. Sure, they all laugh. Dr. F, the movie, the movie. Oh, right. Uh, here it is. Mitchell, starring Joe Don Baker. You guys watch Joe Don Baker movies? Oh, look, just get back to work, temp boy. Right. Well, here it comes, Joel. Mitchell. It's a super secret spy, has a motorcycle, marooned in space, meets Hercules, or not. Uh, watch it and weep, Joel Prawl Mall. Send him the movie, Frank. Frank, the movie? I like the way you support oh, the oh, 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 we go! Oh, oh, OK, now, you guys, we got about three minutes before we're due back in the theater, so we got to do this outward bound experience too sweet, OK? Servo, you know the drill. Roger. Joel lowers us into the refuse trench, and we have but 90 seconds to field strip ourselves and reassemble ourselves while dangling by our popos in the stinky darkness. Ready? Mm hmm. Commando Crow, you ready? Ah. Rose Frost. Ah. You kids, be careful. Don't worry, ma'am. We'll bring them back alive. Let's go. <laughs> Action Jackson <laughs> is my name. Bye. See you later. Oh! Oh! Oh, the light dog, guys! Guys! Oh, and the uh, evil underpants. Hey, guys! Oh, oh, uh, hello, sirs? Don't worry, Doctor. I knew when we brought him on, we'd have to eliminate him. That's half the fun. Yes, Frank, but how? These things must be done delicately. <laughs> After all, he knew going in that this was only a temporary situation. Yes, and now I want this temporary situation taken care of permanently. <laughs> Are we talking about the same thing? 
He's been a canker sore on my gum line for too long. The way he struts around like he owns the place. Pa! Let's use method number 53, hmm? Yes, elegant, painful. And leaves nothing behind but the great smell of brute. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it now. No, no. Patience, my little henchman. Let's wait until after the experiment. <laughs> yes, brilliant. Make him work for it. Yeah. And then? And then our little bejumpsuited fool will be history. <laughs> Get back to work. Jumpsuit? Fool? They're going to kill Joel! They're going to kill Joel! They're going to kill Joel! Help! What do we do? What do we do? I gotta get him out of here! They're gonna kill him! Help! Easy, girl! Take it easy! Calm down! Breathe through your nose! Oh, here we go! That does it! Easy does it! Okay! 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 They're going to kill Joel! Ah! P B O P P O E. Um, working like a dog. Got to think how to get Joel off this ship. How to get Joel off? Charter flight? No. How? How? How to get Joel off this ship? But how? Boy, I'm frustrated. Well, back at it. Throw it? No. Hey, Gypsy, oh, working oh. on a project, huh? Oh. Have you seen my Inside the PGA around here anywhere? No, Joel, I haven't seen your magazine anywhere. Oh, it's got this great article on Fuzzy Zeller. Joel, if you were faced with your imminent death and had to get back to Earth like Pronto, how would you do it? Oh, come on, I'd never leave you. But, Joel, your imminent death! Gypsy, honey, I could never leave you. It's oh. all for one and one for all. That's the Robinson way. Oh, uh, no! <laughs> Fuzzy Zeller. What a great guy. Oh, oh, I can't tell Joel. He would never leave. I'm alone with my heavy burden. On we! Wait, I've got Tom and Crow to help me. I'm sure in a pinch I can depend on them to be serious and calm and intelligent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. what's next? What's next? Okay, hard cast Lem McCormack. Okay. Red, raven like the oh, demon no. that drives your tree. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> hey, what you doing, Gyps? This is very, very, very important. Just a guitar lick. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Can you two keep a secret? No. Nope. Never could, never will, Gypsy. <laughs> okay, oh, Crow, how about Bonanza? Oh. Including the words. Oh, okay. It's all right about pick a little fight, fight Bonanza. Oh, I'm being tested. Oh. Who? Who is testing Gypsy? Hello? Well, I will prevail because I am good and the mads are evil. What? Oh! oh, you guys got movie on. Oh! And so you see, Mike, that's why we need to bring him down. That's amazing, Gypsy. Well, we've got to do something. Here's a manifest for the satellite of love. Maybe there's something here that can help. Yes, yes, oh, yes, oh, please, 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 please. Okay, I assume you tried to gain control of the escape pod in Dock 14. Yes, I tried to gain control. There's an escape pod in Dock 14? According to this, there's a single occupant escape pod called the Deus Ex Machina. How could I not see it? Dumb, stupid, dumb. I wouldn't blame yourself, Gypsy. Apparently, it's in a box marked Hamdingers. Well, no wonder we didn't see it. Nobody likes Hamdingers. So how do we get them down, huh? I don't know. These clowns must have control. Let's try this thing. Here it is. If, ah, the pod is controlled remotely at the tectronic panel, which must be this thing. If direct access from the satellite is desired, the security key must be inserted into the panel and the sequence C colon backslash CD backslash manual period EXE must be entered. Frank's got to have the key. He loves keys. Well, great. Frank's got the key, so how do I get him? Hey, Frank, can I borrow your keys? Okay. Thanks. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Uh, C colon backslash back manual exe. I hate these things. Okay, it says direct access initiated. You're on your own, Gypsy. Uh oh. 
Hey, what did you need my keys for? Um, your, your lights were on. Oh, okay. I... Hey, I don't have a car. Well, then what did you give me your keys for? I don't know. I thought I left my lights on. I'm glad I didn't waste time shutting off your imaginary lights. Well, uh, I'm sorry. I've got control! Ooh, i got to get moving! Okay, all right, we've got this letter to read. Uh, let's put it up on Still Store. Okay, this one comes to us from a... Ten seconds and counting! Ten, nine, Gypsy, eight, could you please turn off these emergency lights? We've got this letter to read. Sure! One expulsion! Oh, yeah. The hell is that? Yeah, where's Joel? Yeah. I can explain everything! Gambot, quit! Give me rocket number nine! He'll finally get to be among his own in the wild. Hey, look! There's a prize inside that box of ham dingers. An escape pod. Hey, guys, look at me. I'm on my way to Earth. Pretty crazy, huh? Oh, what about us? Yeah. Uh, what are we supposed to do without you? Uh, who's gonna teach us about what it is to be human and stuff? Yeah. Listen, you guys, at this point, you guys know as much about it as I do. Uh, listen, you know, I don't have a lot of time. My signal's starting to break up. I can tell I'm getting out of range. Listen, if you look under the desk, there's a plaque I made for you guys to put up to remember me by. Uh, uh, yeah, here it is. Look, boy, nice job, Joel. Very professional looking. Really nice job. Uh, yeah, thanks. I, I really got to get out of here. I'm almost out of range. Listen, you guys, be strong and true. I love you. Bye. Well, uh, it's been a big day. Who's hungry? No, not yet. Doofus, oh. let's find out what's on the plaque. Oh, okay. Press that button there. Oh. Uh, Recording. Uh, ah. To all on the satellite of love from Joel. Hey, that's us. Shh. Honey. The whole world is a circus if you look at it the right way. Every time you pick up a handful of dust and see not the dust, but a mystery, a marvel there in your hand. Every time you stop and think, I'm alive, and being alive is fantastic. Every time such a thing happens, you are part of the circus of Dr. Lou. What? What? Circus of Dr. Lou? Oh, oh gee, boy. brother. Joel leaves and his last words are from a George uh, Pals movie? Oh, I thought it would be something profound, you know, like from the Psalms or the Upanishads or, or even the Desert Dorado for that matter. Last uh, transmission from Joel, Joel coming, coming in on Hexfield. The, the, the Joel, buddy, the Circus of Dr. Lou? I don't get it. Hey, it's my favorite movie, so sue me. I gotta go, guys. Hey, see you later. Sorry, folks, I can't come back. Bye. I don't know how it works. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Wow. Oh, I'm going to miss him. <sighs> yeah, well, I guess he's gone for good, fellas, and that only means one thing. I'm in charge. Well, race you to the Mallow Cups. I found out where he hides them. Oh, Crow, too <laughs> soon. Oh. Think they'll send us a new guy? Oh, sure, they're bound to. But until that happens... Panic! Ah! Panic! Ah! 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 No, 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 no! No, 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 no! What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Nothing like a good shower to make one feel new again, huh? I feel great. Nothing can get in the way of my good mood. What's going on, Frank? Oh, not much. Uh, inventory's under control. Uh -huh. <laughs> Floor needs mopping. Oh, <laughs> Joel escaped from the satellite of love. Oh, you know. Well, I see you've got the situation <laughs> well in hand. What? Joel escaped from the satellite of love? Oh, I'd better get started on that floor. <laughs> Frank, my towel and your hinder have an appointment. But first, we've got to rescue Joel. Oh, no. No! Frank, he's landed safely in the Australian outback. Well, let's just hope he landed on Yahoo Sirius. Oh, well, that's a good point, Frank, because... Frank, can't you see we're ruined? What are we going to do? <laughs> Uh, well, we could send someone else into space. Who are we gonna find at this late date to send into space? Did you guys sign my time card? 
Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Frank? Yeah, you're not going to sign his time card, are you? Come on, you got to sign my time card. Of course I'll sign your time card, young man. In fact, I think you're going to be working for me for a long, long time. Push the button, Frank. Uh, say, Mike, what size jumpsuit do you wear? Hi everyone, I'm Mike. Welcome to the Satellite of Love and this week's experiment. I'm a little out of breath, just hold on a second. The, uh, the bots have been running me through a heap of bad movies, kind of in training for this week's actual experiment. Come on, Mike, we haven't got all day. The proverbial hour is nigh, if you know what I mean. I know, training's been a little rigorous on you, new yep, boy, but yep. dig down deep, buddy. Yeah, 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 cause compared to today's experiment, the beast of Yucca Flat was just a cakewalk. <laughs> I only hope I can do it. Ah, <laughs> oh, buck up, new meat. Thanks, Tom. That's crow. Thank Tom. Right. <laughs> Look, you quipped your way through Night of the Lepus, but this is the real thing, son. This is the big time. Mark Singer walks out in the loincloth. What do you say? Uh, the, quick, quick, now quick. I know why the show is called V. Ah. Good, good. Not bad. Okay, Meatball, word association. Robert Lippert. Uh, good. No. Bad. I meant yeah. bad. Well, <laughs> very good, Mike. Your training's not been wasted, but there's just one thing we've got to know. One last piece to the puzzle. Here we go. Sid Melton. Answer is... Little Monkey Boy. Hey. Bravo, Mr. Nielsen! It's Nelson. And we'll be right back. Is that my line? Don't push it. It's okay. Right. Sorry. You ready? Sure. Seemed pretty nonchalant. I've achieved a state of clear. Huh. Neat. Well, anyway, the oh. Mads are calling. Yeah. yeah. So we just hop to? Yeah. Huh. Let them wait. Ooh. Really? Radical. Huh. Ooh, ooh. You see that? Ooh. Ah. Oh. <laughs> so, Mr. Nelson, Mr. El Relaxo, that's nice. Maybe I'll just have you do your invention exchange first. First, you hear me? First. Great. Huh? Good luck, buddy. Yep. Take it away, Mark. That's Mike. Whatever. Well, anyway, I've always been annoyed by umbrellas, the way the water just washes off and gets your back all wet anyway. I, I didn't know that about umbrellas. That's right, so I've added a gutter system around the outside edge and a spout leading down. Towards your shoes. The crow. What? Great Scott, he's right. No, 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 I've got that covered too. You just pointed out the back. Well, look at that. Look, this, is, this is a good idea. Simple. Definitely simple. No, but good. Ooh. Can you make me one? Sure. Hey, at a go, man. Hey, what do you call it? Uh, how about the gutter bumber shoot? Hey, the gutter bumber shoot. I like it. Hey, hey. gutter bumber shoot. Hey, gutter bumber shoot. Woohoo! Gutter bumber shoot. Bo 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 go to bumber shoot. Bo 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 gutter bumber shoot. Woohoo! Oh, good God! Calm down. It's just an umbrella with gutters. Now here's how you do an invention exchange, Mitch. 
It's a beautiful day. You're out for a walk when you spy some porcine, freckled bratling enjoying himself just a bit too much. Oh, you'd love to run over and push him down and take his bike, but that can be risky. <laughs> Enter Dr. Forrester's Dream Buster. You see those balloons? What this puppy does is set up a frequency of... Well, it would take a scientist to explain. Just watch. <laughs> it's got a range of 60 yards, and that's an invention exchange. Back up to you, Marv. So how am I supposed to react when he shows me that kind of stuff? Try to act impressed. Yeah. How? Well, it's what he's looking for. It's what he needs. Yours is a lot better. Yeah, I agree. You know, you simply used glue to attach those gutters. The more I think about it, the more beautiful it seems to me. Mike is a very nice name. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm in a traveler's ad. <laughs> I'll tell. <laughs> Mom! Mom. Uh, I'm your mother now, Frank. Ah, Greenhorn. It's almost time for your first experiment. These are experiments, you know. And you are a lab rat. Lab rat? <laughs> lab rat? <laughs> Send him the movie, Frank. Give me this. Oh, hey, Cambot, uh, bring it down here, okay? Come on, buddy. Up here, pedal. Just yank it out. Don't worry about the wires. Nah, he doesn't know what he's doing. You don't know what you're doing, do you, Mike? Uh, you guys, I've been studying the manuals ever since I got here. Uh -huh. I figure if we can gain control of the inertial guidance system, yeah. we got a chance of getting out of here. Wow. Anybody know what this does? Uh, nope. No, no way. I don't think it's important anyway. Oh, just get rid of it. Just cut the big red cable. Try so that. So what do you want to leave so bad? You just got here. Red You've been watching the same movie I have, right? Yeah. The man's got to try, fellas. I just... Hey, guys. Yeah. It's a mess down here. There's old sandwiches, Tom. You got like one, two... No, there's like four heads down here. Did you know that? Uh, sure. There's a dozen copies of the Picardian. Hey, those are mine. Those are going to be valuable one day. The big red cable, Mike. Just cut it. Which one? There's about 20. Um, the green one. Okay. Ah! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Whoa! Gee, boy. Oh, oh boy. Oh. oh, boy. Gee, that's my fault. That was the uh, cheese compressor line. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you guys, I don't think we're going to gain control from here. Of course we're not. Yeah, heck no. We tried that a year ago. Well, why didn't you tell me, geez, wasting all this time? Well, Mike, because... Because if you find a way out, then you'll go and you'll leave us all alone up here and we'll, you'll be gone. Yeah. Hey, guys, I'm you trying know. to figure out a way to get us all out of here, okay? Oh, so, so like, if you find a big box marked Hamdingers... Guys, you're not... there are no more boxes marked Hamdingers, I know that. Oh. Look, I promise I won't leave you, okay? Okay. Come on, cheer up. Okay. Cheese fight. Oh. <laughs> oh, cheese! Oh, hey, cut it out. It's fun! Wait, wait. What? what is it, Gypsy? It's not cheese. Oh. 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 Well, new feller, gotta hand it to you. <laughs> you got us going on a project right away. <laughs> Having us design hats for the lady in the movie. Yeah. Why, you? <laughs> you know, I just feel so sorry for her. Everything she must be going through. Huh. Her fiance is mental. And she's lost her independence. No, not to mention trying to minimize her major figure flaw. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've always thought that the right hat can make you look and feel terrific. And that's why, for her, I designed a, a bowling bag hat. Mm. She can zip it around herself and just be toted anywhere. That's <laughs> really clever yeah. there. You know, my idea was simply a, a crown for that regal Catherine Hepburn lying in winter look. <laughs> oh, Personally, I can't wear hats, but I thought she'd look neat in my Chianti hat. Oh, mm, that wow. is neat, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Very. You know, as a fellow woman, I knew she'd want to create the illusion of height, so I came up with this crown roast hat. Ooh, ah, yeah. Neat. Oh, which also serves six. With a side of uh, snow peas and new potatoes. Mm. 
Well, I hope you like this one. I worked really hard on it. Well, to me, it, it sounded really cool to give her a kinetic ball hat. What? what do you know? Real conversation starter. <laughs> I put it on the desk and all. <laughs> and it works. Uh, this Raspberry Beret just screamed fun to me. <laughs> well, let me just say that form follows function in my lazy Susan hat. This way, she's really the center of attention at any dinner function. <laughs> center of <laughs> <laughs> dinner with the... Oh. <laughs> Huh. Well, fun, huh? Oh, yeah, fun. Yeah. I don't know. I just have this feeling she's really a shoes person. So the guy seeks out the woman with the scar and begs her to trust again when all along he's planning to take her head off with a bow saw. Well, that's about the size of it. So then the director's whole point, if I'm not mistaken, is in this often cold and lonely world, don't reach out for love and human understanding or you'll only become part of a grisly lab experiment. Well, I think you're selling it short, Mike. There's also the strong anti-women message. But mostly it is a celebration of betrayal. Oh, right, right. right. But don't lose hope. No, 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 no. You can trust us. Yeah, I mean, we don't know you that well, Mike. Well, <laughs> enough to say hi in the hallways. Uh, right, but you can trust us. All the way. In fact, why don't you share something with us right now? Oh, perhaps an embarrassing moment. Oh, yeah, a shameful thing you may have done or said. It's up to you, of course. You'll feel better. You think so? I know so, Mike. Well, there is this time uh, when I was nine years old and I went on a walkathon for some charity. Oh, sure you did. Mm -hmm. That was a 21 mile route from Batavia to St. Charles. Mm -hmm. and uh, Go on. Well, it ended up at a McDonald's and mm -hmm. uh, the plan was I was to call home because I was mm -hmm. still miles away. And mm -hmm. uh, well, I wasn't thinking and I, um, I uh, spent my phone money on an ice cream cone for myself oh. and my mom. And, mm -hmm. and I was too shy to ask anyone to use the phone, mm -hmm. so had to start walking. Of course you did. Mm -hmm. And then I stopped along the way because I had to go to the bathroom, but it was a gas station and you needed a key and mm -hmm. I was too shy to ask anyone for the key and so... Yes, Mike? Well... You wet him, didn't you, Mike? Yeah. So I had to walk eight miles home with wet pants and when I got there, the ice cream cones were melted anyway and I cried. Oh, oh. Wow, Mike, that took courage to tell that story. Yes. Hey, Gypsy! <laughs> you might want to grab a rag in case Old Faithful here blows again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tom, grab Robert Steve Zipper there and let's get back into the theater. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't going to be that easy. Hey, don't stand under him. <laughs> we'll be right back. So, you guys, we watched the cheesy movie, and yep. now what? We. Yeah. Just stand around being depressed? What the heck? No! Now's the time we usually open up a big batch of letters. Yeah, Mike, yeah, the letters. love and affection of the viewers will automatically make you feel much better. Mm -hmm. Dig letters, deep uh, in that pile. Yes, none of these are for me. Oh. oh the, the, hey, someone's calling on the head seal. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh, hey, everyone. It's Jan from today's experiment. Jeez, we thought you had perished in that fire. Oh, heavens no. I survived that ordeal and many others, too. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to call you nice young gentlemen and tell you I'm feeling much better now. I didn't want you to worry. Oh, so you're not into that whole let me die, please let me die thing oh, anymore. Oh, of course not. That was just a phase I was going through. <laughs> you know, when my head was first lopped off, it... It was kind of a difficult time for me. Yeah, uh, you, you must have really gone to your head. <laughs> hey, bro, that's not nice. Oh, that's okay. Believe you me, I have heard it all before. Those jokes usually leave me rolling in the aisle. Literally. <laughs> so what have you been up to all these years? Well, at first it was kind of hard to find work, as you can well imagine. Then I finally got a job as a doorstop. It doesn't pay much, but at least I've regained my self-respect. Oh, so do you get out much? Oh, you bet. I love to go out to eat. Hey, I can eat all the cheesecake I want. It goes straight to my hips, but who cares? <laughs> oh, I have no hips at all. <laughs> oh, and I love parties. You know, after I've had a couple of drinks in me, my Jeffrey says I'm the mouth that wouldn't die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're married. Oh, yes. Jeff and I are so happy. Oh. He even bought me this new pan. Mm. I guess you could say our relationship has really panned out. <laughs> I think it's great that you got a sense of humor about it. And uh, so I want to ask, uh, when you were in that fire, did you make your own gravy? <laughs> so what are you saying? Well, it was just a joke. I mean, well, I fail to see the humor. Well, I guess I better be going. 
Oh, good one, Mike. You know, guys, the whole situation, being stuck up here in space, mm -hmm. forced to watch cheesy movies, mm -hmm. interacting with other life forms, it kind of bites. Well, you're starting to catch on, Kimasabi. What do you think, sirs? Hmm. Hmm, a head in a pan. What a fabulous idea. <laughs> well, sir, should I file the experiment? <laughs> oh, well, here we go again. See, I don't know what my area code is because I'm up in the Milky Way for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi everyone. Tom Servo here on the Satellite of Love, and this is my pal Crow. Yeah, and that uh, goofy looking guy back there, that's Mike Nelson. He's trying to call his grandma on the phone. It's a sweet <laughs> gesture, isn't it? But we explained to him it's not that easy to do when you're stranded in space. Yeah, well, you guys are never armed with a stack of calling cards and a few little tricks like I am. Wow. Oh, hello. Oh, I can see that. Hey, get around here. This is it. What? You're kidding. You actually got your grandma on the this phone? Is my grandma. Huh. Well, grandma's a mall walker. She's probably just getting in right now. Right. I got you. Hello. Hello. Grandma, this is Mike. I'm stranded in space. You gotta help. You gotta get someone to help me down. What? What's up? Speak I, up. I say I've been shanghaied on a satellite. You gotta get someone to help me get out of here. I'm just kidding. This is Catherine, and I'm not in right now. Oh. I might be sitting for Tommy's kids, or else I'm at Linda's. Leave a message. Grandma, listen very carefully. This is Mike. I've been str oh. <sighs> That was my only chance. Wow, that's harsh, huh? That's mm. okay, Mike. Yeah. We're your family now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sprint. No, no. Mike, 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 Mike. Oh, oh. Uh, you should really make a note of that, that you got a machine so that if the bill comes and we're erroneously charged for the call, then you have a paperwork to back up your claim that you were charged for the call in error so that you won't have to pay for that call, Mike. Huh. Uh, Crow, hmm? you lived during the Great Depression, didn't you? Oh, uh, Backrack and David are calling. They are? Just push the button. <laughs> laundry and laundry. Oh, Mike. You would not believe the day I've had. I don't know how single parents do it. Oh, I was excited with the arrival of young Frank. Dr. Raff, uh, come on! Clayton's on the phone right now, Frank. It's a 25-hour-a-day job keeping track of Frank. He's into everything. Sometimes I think we both need a little break. That's why I've invented the Frank Enforcer. You see, the Frank Enforcer keeps little Frank suspended in that disorienting no-man's land between floor and ceiling. <laughs> the mat with the nails jutting out at a most dangerous angle gently discourages Frank from jumping out of the Frank Enforcer and into Dr. F's hair. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little minute, Frankie. Do, there you go. Now Dr. Forrester has time to tabulate and standardize results of our latest experiment, postulate new theories, or just get the laundry done without worrying about this one. <laughs> Plus, I've gotten to know someone very special, me. <laughs> oh, I gotta go, Mike. Uh, we get fussy if we've been in there more than a few weeks. Immature little baby. I'm guessing Frank's in the 90th percentile. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now let me set the scene here. You're at your favorite candlelit restaurant, spending time with someone very special, exchanging lingering glances over the fettuccine. What? Laughing low, throaty laughs over a shared private joke, fingers entwined. Would you just get on with it, Servo? Uh, and sometimes you just need your server's attention. Me, Enter the waiter baiter. Uh, if I could just. Uh, I'll be right over pardon here. Uh, just, uh, hi, Tad. Don't waste pardon your valuable just, uh, time trying to get your waitress attention. Just, uh, let the waiter baiter do the dirty just, work. Uh, I'll be with you pardon in a moment, just, uh, please. Uh, I'm in the weeds so here. Oh, I think I get the haggis. Let's fix that. Why don't we split the gut? Okay, well, what do you what do you think, sir? I think you'll be having our special. A tough, stringy entree called Teenage Strangler. Frank, served with a distasteful little appetizer about love or some such slop. Frank! I think I'm going to have to put Frank down for a nap. Permanently. Frank! 
No, no, you had three big bites of my lettuce wedge. Yeah, but you had my cling peach, so well, it I only had out. a little taste of your cling peach. You, you don't eat expect the whole me half. To, I'm not going to pay for your cling well, peach. I'm not going to have to pay for it. Ladies, ladies, we have movies. What movies? Oh my God! Then shall I turn my face and hear one bird sing terribly afar in the lost lands. Now that, my little friends, is love. Oh, not since Edgar Allan Poe's love for the comely Helen chronicled so eloquently have I been so moved, so taken, so bored. Hey, come on, Crow, that's one of my all-time favorite poems. It's so complete in its beauty. Mm -hmm. Let me read you some more stuff here. Ah, uh, that ain't love. How can it be? It's unrequited. Plus, it's got all that longing and yearning junk. I want to hear about hot love. Quick and ready, you know. See it, like it, got it. <laughs> huh. well, like Rod Stewart sees Rachel Hunter on TV, writes her a letter, and then boom, they're married. Yeah, uh, you think that's love? I know it is for me. Have you seen that video? Wow. <laughs> I'm serious. Do you oh. think it's love? Or how about Edie Gourmet and Steve Lawrence? Is hmm. that love true? Well, it's love, but it's not love on the scale of Glenn Campbell and Tanya Tucker. Oh, no. no. Well, how about Emilio and Paula? Is she forever his girl, or is he a cold-hearted snake? Oh, Crow, she's so cute, and he's just as nice as the Dickens. I'm sure it can survive. Well, just look at Don and Melanie. Hey, no problems there, huh? Mm, true. Yeah. Or how about Bruce and Demi? Yeah. Joanne and Paul. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love. Now, they've built their house on high and solid ground. Mm-hmm, and there's the classic Edie Adams and Ernie Kovacs. Maria Shriver and Arnold. Uh, Jack Douglas and Rico. Hey, John and Yoko, for that matter. Joan Didion and John Gregory Dunn. Yeah. Oh, get with it, Nelson. Showbiz love is the only love that matters. Oh, it is, huh? Okay, well then, how about Bert and Lonnie? Hmm? <gasps> Oh, no! Oh. I can't believe it, please! It's so sad! Oh, who would have guessed? Oh, and their little boy! <laughs> and what'll become of the dinner theater? <laughs> oh, good one, Nelson! It's like walking on eggshells with this one. <gasps> eggshells? No! Yeah. Oh, Lottie! <laughs> hey! This turf is mine, Metal Mouth! <laughs> <laughs> Nothing hey. doing, Crow Magnons. Rule the playground. Says who, huh? The Hover Mothers own this blacktop. We run this town. Yeah, we'll talk as cheap, chump. You ready to rumble? I'm ready to rumble. Let's yeah, a, oh, wait, wait, wait what, a minute. What, what, I rolled what? in some gum. Oh, you got ah, it? There, I got it. Okay. Okay, tough guy, let's dance. You ah, and me going dude. round and round. Hey, guys, guys, what, what? What's going on? What are you doing? I'm about to show this Crow Magnon water boy who's the boss ah, around here. You couldn't show Aunt Mabel the Mall of America. Why, you, I ought to. Guys. I think this street gang thing has gone far enough. It's time we rapped. Uh, how, how's that? You know, rap, lay it out in the open. Let's dialogue. <sighs> we were really just playing, Mike. You know, it's make-believe. Yeah, no big thing, Mike, okay? Guys, this street is in my blood. I grew up with this stuff. Now, what's going down? Mike, give us a break. You grew up in Little Shoot, Wisconsin. Oh, yeah, but we had streets, and sometimes they got pretty busy, too. On a Saturday night during crazy days when all the sidewalk sales were going on, it could seem just like hell town. Wow, what you must have gone through. Well, look yeah. at the time no, I got to no, get... No, 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 nobody's leaving until we figure out what crime has been perpetrated here. Uh, no crime. We were just playing. Yeah. Oh, just playing, huh? Well, that's really funny, Crow, because I knew another little brother who was just playing, and you know what? He bought himself a one-way ticket to the Bone Orchard. <sighs> Now, let me take a guess here. Servo, you dissed my little brother, Crow. Is that it? Um, diss as in disrespect? Yes. Well, sure, always. <laughs> then you job. dissed me, too. Oh, uh, well, wouldn't want to Because when you cut that. my compadre, you cut me. And when you cut me, you cut all men everywhere. Huh. How am I getting through to you guys on this, huh? Oh, you've made a deep impression. Hey, 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 guys. Huh? What? Come on, people now. Oh, no, Mike, that's Smile not Smile on your brother, oh, everybody. Oh, no, please don't. Oh, hey, wait for the movie sign. Oh, <laughs> so here's the plan. Okay. Mike walks into the room. Plausible. Puts on those glasses. Okay. And thanks to a tiny electrode that scrambles his left brain function, he becomes goofy, doofy, wimpy Mikey from the movie. <laughs> God, I love technology. Oh, mama. Oh, let me oh, tell you. Here he comes. Hi, guys. Hey, you mind if I join you? Oh, hey, no problem, Mike. Always room for the big blonde human. That's me. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh, yeah. In fact, uh, Mike, we were wondering if you'd look something up in that there dictionary for right us. Right there, this dictionary yeah. there. Sure. Here. Yeah. Jeez, that print is small. How do you... Oh, well, you could use those glasses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right there. All right. Oh. Hey, what's with the cord? Uh, um, th th they're digital. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. digital. Dig they're digital. digital. <laughs> 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 well, 
<laughs> what did you want me to look up? Uh, how about rhyme? <laughs> rhyme? Yeah. R I M E. <laughs> it's a homonym for the other word rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jimmy. Mom's so upset. You, Jimmy, you gotta come back, Jimmy. <laughs> so, rhyme, does that help? Uh, Mike, you didn't finish. Yeah. Uh, I didn't. Rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> Rhyme. <laughs> An accumulation of granular ice. And I didn't steal no bike, neither. It was all me. I did it. It was my fault. Please, Betty. <laughs> <clears throat> Wow. Hmm. So that's rhyme, uh, which is a homonym for the other word rhyme. What do you, know? you know, I think you would look good in black glasses, bro. Yeah, you'd look good. You'd take, uh, hey, let's go clean uh, your head. I, I don't Come need on. it. Okay, I can hold it together. Jimmy? No. I'm me. The, the, the sheriff wanted to see you right now, Jimmy. I'll take that letter to Jimmy. No, I'm sorry, Jimmy. Uh, I didn't ask for no commercial sign either. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is going to be the best Thanksgiving break ever. Oh, you yeah. betcha. I can't wait to get home. Oh, bye bye Mr. Schlotsky. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, kids. The bell has rung. School is out. The kids have all gone home. All I do is sweep and pout. I'm left here all alone. I make sure the hallways are gleaming. I keep all the garbage at bay But inside my heart will be screaming How did I end up this way? I'm a janitor, a janitor I clean up the puke at your school A large fistful of sawdust Is my essential tool I'm a janitor a janitor I start work early each morn I have a drinking problem and a large collection of porn I'm a janitor a janitor I'm looked on as kind of a leech but at least I get more respect than the ones who have to teach he's, he's a, a janitor, janitor a janitor please don't sell him short if you get him to mad i'll show you my disgusting wart yeah. he's, he's a, a janitor, janitor. i'm a janitor, a janitor. You got a problem with he that? needs to be loved and respected he once dated josephine the plumber and guess what yeah, I was rejected. Oh, he's, he's a janitor. A janitor. A janitor. A janitor. Yeah, I'm a janitor. We both think he's pretty keen. I hope you liked our presentation. Now back to deep party. Oh, good one, Mike. Frank was swaying to your little song there and got sick. How sick? That's your dinner for the next three weeks, Frank. Okay, okay, welcome to the Satellite of Love, everyone. Mike, Tom, Crow, and Gypsy are the names, and Blackjack is the game. Blackjack 21, Blackjack... Blackjack. Uh, I'll, I'll stick. You can't stick until I deal you a card, you loon. Okay, I stick now. Hey, this isn't so hard. <laughs> you can't have 21 with just one card. Okay, okay, hit me. No, no, I stick now, I stick! Oh, man, I just can't handle this anymore. Should I spit on your dice now or not? Or okay, what? now me. Okay. Me, 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 me. Hit me. Hit me. Uh, hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Uh, don't you want to check your cards? Just keep them coming, bartender. I said hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Uh, hit me. Hit me. Hit me. It's ridiculous. You want to go check me. blue rolls in the bar? Hit me. Yeah, sure. hit me. Hit me. Hit me. We'll hit, right me. hit me. Hit me. Uh, hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Uh, hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Uh, okay, I want to double down. Oh. Hey, Mike. You want I should call the pit boss over for to break his tums? No. Well, 
Oh, hey, Mike, uh, someone's calling. Oh, it's probably Dr. Fossbender and TV's Fred. Come in. Ah, uh, Mike, not that I care about impressing you or anything, but check out my invention exchange. Ta-da! It's the atomic-powered hair dryer. How you doing down there, Dr. F? Oh, I'm fine, Frank. I'm just trying to settle on a look. That's you know. great. Be with you in a minute. All right. Okay, Nelson, see if you can follow me on this one. Atomic power, efficient, dirt cheap, relatively few meltdowns. Modern hair dryers, inefficient, expensive to run, and, okay, I admit, uh, relatively few meltdowns. But my atomic powered hair dryer works in a fraction of the time. Uh, Frank, what look do you think is better, the Nels Bohr or the Richard Feynman? Oh, I'd go with the Bohr. The Feynman would make really? your face look too chubby. Okay, I'll take your recommendation. Okay, <laughs> great. Just gonna put these goggles on here. How you doing? You comfortable? Oh, I'm fine. Uh, Frank, is this safe? Oh, of course it's safe. Uh, what could possibly go wrong? You comfortable in there? Yes. Get on with it. Okay. Hold, please. We have zero quaff. Okay, let's see how you're doing. Get you all combed out here. See ah. how you look. I'm sure everything will be. Ah! Demon! Demon! Stay away from me! Ah! Frank, what is it? Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> Just thought you were Baphomet there for a minute. Hair looks great, though. Great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Back up to you, Mac. I don't get them. Um, um, Mike, our invention. Right. Crow, take point. Okay. Let's talk about unsightly hair that grows on your back. Back hair. Mm -hmm. It's disgusting. Yeah. You'll never know the touch of a woman unless you rid yourself of it immediately. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh uh, not that back hair is bad. <laughs> Some people might like it. Yeah, if you're an alien or something. Whatever the case, our invention is called the Razorback, and it gives you the option of getting rid of your back hair if you want to. And you should, for God's sake. <laughs> now, I'll demonstrate on the back of my jumpsuit because <laughs> I don't have any back hair. Yeah, no back hair. The man's a timber wolf. You slather on the lather with a specially made applicator like mm, that. And then spider. one stroke of the Featherlight Razorback, and all your back hair problems are gone. It's about time, Ooh. you big ugly yak. Yeah. Oh. But that kid looks good on some people. Yeah. Right. What do you think, sirs? Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, it's. It really is a new you. Really? Jeez, oh, I can't believe you don't have a mirror around here, Frank. I'm, I'm dying. <laughs> ah! Ah! Uh, anyway, Mike, uh, your movie is called The Wild, Wild World of Batwoman. And for all I know, it stars Robert Conrad and Ross Martin. <laughs> but I doubt it. Uh, there's also a short on cheating. Come on, Frank, I've got to see how it came out. Don't come near me! Hair looks great, love oh, good, it. good, <laughs> good. Jeez, I really roughed myself up there. I'll say Sweeney Todd's playing on your back. Yeah. I got the step deck. Ah! Oh, stop crying. Oh, 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 You know, you guys, as enthralling as this Batwoman movie is, I just can't get that cheating short out of my mind. Mm, ditto, friend. It posed so many dilemmas. Like, did Johnny intend to be dishonest? Or should Mary share the blame? Oh, yeah, or was Mary just a pawn in Johnny's little game? Which oh. begs the question of free will. What about free will? Good one. Or should his classmates give him a second chance? Yeah. And why doesn't the accused get a chance to defend himself? Yeah. Good point. And mm. should uh, Miss Grandy have just come into Johnny's bedroom uninvited and bodiless? Oh, what do you good. think about that, Crow? Mm. Uh, uh, the beat. Oh, you haven't been paying attention at all, have you, Crow? Yes. Uh, could we talk about Mitchell? I see what I mean. Hey, I know what let's do. Let's answer the questions that the short posed in our own personal essays. Oh, sure. Well, that's an excellent idea, Mr. Nelson. That in and of itself is a valuable exercise in articulating one's thoughts in a clear, concise manner. Now, what's in it for us? And by us, I mean me. I well, there is those hostess snowballs I've been saving. Oh! I also want to be boss of the ship for a month. Oh. Well, we'll talk about that. And Servo has to do my laundry for a year. Even my underpants. You don't even wear underpants. Oh, well, you don't worry about that. I'll take care of that. This is getting weird. We'll be right back. And in preparing my report on today's cheating short, I listened to both the muse and the sage, the spirit and the pragmatist, the mythical roots of my eternal... Oh, any time this century, Disraeli. Bro, come on. Well, okay, Mike, just wake me when it's over. Anyway, as I was saying, it was the third question that most intrigued me. The query, was it fair for Johnny to use Mary as he did, is a mental minefield. I had to be careful, being the humus that I am. I left no stone Anytime, unturned. Anytime, Servo. Anytime. Uh, that answer, my friends, is no. 
No. no. That's right. Yet nine negige. That's your report? The answer is no? What about all these other volumes? Well, geez, Mike, I had several ibids, 30 pages of footnotes, an extensive bibliography, and some really neat diagrams charting the dialectic process from the You know, Tom, you frighten me. So, we're done, huh? Okay. No, we're not done. We've still got Gypsy. Why don't you go ahead there, girl? Oh, yes. oh, oh, okay. Um, cheating by me. Hmm. Cheating is bad. Richard Basehart is good. Well, huh. great. Well, that was very good, yeah, very I thought. Nice. It was yeah. spirited, yeah. succinct, yeah. very yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> great, yeah. Can't we just hand these in, Mike? I mean, notify me by mail. No, 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 no. It's your turn. Now let's hear it. Come on. Oh. Cheating. <clears throat> Cheating is bad. Richard Basehart is so, how about some lunch? Hey, Crow, hey, what? that was word for word the same report that Gypsy just gave. Wow, <laughs> what are the odds of that happening? It's, it's not exactly the same. I, I mean, the read was totally different. Uh, my downbeat was on Good. Uh, Gypsy's was on Richard. Stone him! Oh, Stone him! Cheater! Hey, 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 hey just, calm down. Calm down. You know, this is serious be business, and we'll talk punished, about it. But right now, we've got a him. movie to get through, and that's <laughs> what we're going to do. We, we must be... immolate him! Get a match! <laughs> Burn him! He must be Ah, moving time! Saved by the bell. Hey, Tom, what's up? Meeting of the Satellite of Love crew. Mm. Oh, I don't think you'd want to come to this meeting. It's about you. Me? That's right. It's about how you cheated and betrayed the confidence of a sweet, innocent robot. It's about how you made a mockery of everything that's good in this world. It's about how everything you touch, you destroy. So why can't I come? Don't oh, you just oh. don't. Sorry I'm late. Hi. Well, as unpleasant as this whole mess is, we have to address Crow's cheating. Uh, I call this meeting to order. Guilty, 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 guilty! Tom! I say he's guilty. Come on, Tom. Sure, Crow's made a mistake, but we should have compassion. Remember my gumball-headed young friend? The quality of mercy is not strained. It falleth from the heavens like a gentle rain. Gypsy, he stole from your essay. Really? Fry him! Yeah, hey, 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 spirit. Hey, hey, hey. Calm down. This isn't getting us anywhere. I think the first thing that we need to do is. Hey, who's this guy? Ah, would you like some soup? Well, yes, I would. That's exactly. What... Would you knock that off, Crow? Get out of this meeting. All right. Now uh, I think we all agree that Crow needs some sort of punishment. Mm -hmm. What should it be? Well, if uh, I may quote from my colleague Gypsy here. Fry him! Fry him! Burn him up! And if I may just interject one thought of my own, tear him up! Rip him apart! Burn him! And in conclusion, die, 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 die! Any thoughts? Yeah, well, actually, I was thinking more along the lines of not giving him any host of snowballs. Oh. Hey, Crow, buddy. Yeah? I hate to be the one to tell you this. We all talked it over, and we've decided to... Uh... Shun you! Yeah, well, I'm shunning you. Well, I shun you first. Yeah, I shun you back. I double shun you version 2.1. I shun you version 2.2. .2. I shun you version 3 for this Windows. This getting us I anywhere. Shun you right back. I seven. super mega friggin' shun you. So why does Crow get a chance to respond, Mike? Well, it's due process. Huh? As the accused, he's owed a chance to defend himself. Oh. Plus... It gives him hope, and that should make killing him an even richer experience. We're not going to kill him and take the hood off. Well, I'm here for my last ditch hearing. I've got a statement. Uh, hi, everyone. Well, where to start? Should we listen? We're shunning him. No, we should listen. Oh, good. It's hard to shun. I keep forgetting. If it please the court. It pleases the court. Quiet, everyone. <clears throat> As I think back on my life, I see basically a good robot. A robust and exemplary youth was followed by an unusually religious and public-spirited young adulthood. Then I began my life of service, being crushed into an ingot, being hung upside down in chains. You know, it's really true. Yet all that matters not, for trouble has found me. I stand accused of cheating, and here is where the story becomes complex. Complex? He copied my paper. What's complex about? If my actions, if my creative methods for obtaining information have... He copied my whole paper! If those methods have been perceived by some as less than on the up and up, this causes me so much pain. Can we just kill him now? Perhaps in my purity, I did not recognize temptation. <laughs> the tragedy is almost too perfect. But I accept the consequences. 
I forgive Mike for forcing me into this situation. He did not realize the trap he was setting. I forgive Servo and Gypsy. They copied my friggin' paper! Down he goes! Down! And down. I forgive myself. Huh. Thank you. <laughs> I await your verdict. Well, Crow, uh, first off, it seems like you never really got to the apology. No. Oh, uh, right. <clears throat> In an otherwise selfless and velvet life, I have cheated. And when you cheat, you make an eat out of C and H. I'm sorry. The court finds the defendant guilty. <laughs> but he's basically a decent guy, so he and all his friends are sentenced to eating hostess snowballs all night long. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we've got along, buddy. I hope really? you never fry. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Hey, guys, want to read a letter? <laughs> hey, yeah. We got a letter here from uh, a guy named Eric hey, put Bauman. Put that on Still Store. Man. Okay, put that on Ooh. Still Store. And here's what he says. He says, I will soon be starting law school, and I would like to represent you in a suit against Dr. Forrester and TV's Frank. Ooh, I, I believe that you have on your hands a clear case of wrongful marooning in space and may be entitled to a large cash award. Wow, Eric, gosh. you're going to do the right thing, son. You're going to protect the firm, right? By the way, we got some pictures of you and your girlfriend. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Give him the address. Okay. Address for the Mystery Science Theater Information Club, Post Office Box 5325, Hopkins, Minnesota, 55343. Do it today. Whoop. What do you think, sirs? Hmm? I admit I asked you to do this, Frank. I mean, I wanted to take a risk. And you did. You did. You really look... Ah! Ah! Really? That good? With the way the side burns, uh, the way? Well, I, I like it. I do like it. I'm very happy with my decision. <laughs> now, uh, be a dear and push the button, will you, Frank? <laughs> Frank? Oh, never mind. I'll get it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello, maggots. Welcome to boot camp here at Fort Satellite of Love. Today, we are going to do a field trip of one Mr. Tom Servo. I'm Drill Sergeant Crow T. Robot, or sir, to you toilet water guzzling little mama's boys. You got that, son? Sir, yes, sir. I didn't hear you, Lady Britches. I said, sir, yes, sir. Can we just get on with this, Crow? I want to watch Sisters. You're not going nowhere, you wussy red cupcake. Hey. But you're going to run home to your mama, huh? Ooh, hey, Ooh, Crow. I'm scared. Come on. I'm the drill sergeant here, you toe-headed contact lens wearing piece of toast. Ow. Now give me the oath. Uh, this is my robot. There are many like it, but this one is mine. And what is the name of your robot, boy? Servo. Tom Servo. I don't believe I was addressing <laughs> you, <laughs> mayonnaise. <laughs> Why don't you just make yourself comfortable down there on the floor and give me 20, Corporal? Uh, because I can't. Well, now you just fought yourself. 220! Come on, dickweed! Uh, we'll be right back. I heard that pile, you piece of filth! Well, several pieces, actually. Hello, Joker. Pile, you are in a world! Hey, the mad scientists are calling! Outstanding! <laughs> ah, Mike, I see you've decided to go psycho. Godspeed. Anyway, our invention exchange this week addresses a need I'm sure everyone can relate to. And here's our own TV's Frank to tell us more about it. Frank? Thank you, Dr. F. Say, don't you just hate it when you're suffering from some horrible ailment and the only thing that can cure you is an organ transplant? I hate that. And what's worse, you go to the hospital, you have to wait days, weeks, months, sometimes even years to get that organ. That bugs the heck out of me. That's why we've come up with the Vendigut, the first vending machine that dispenses real human organs. Now, getting a donor organ will be as simple as buying a Snickers bar. Now, for the sake of this demonstration, I took the liberty of removing Frank's liver. And you now, did? Well, don't worry. I also took the precaution of inserting your life savings into the Vendigut. Now, all you have to do is press B2, and voila, a brand new liver. Let's see. B, two. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> oh, damn these things. Uh. Hey, 
this is great. <laughs> now all I have to do is insert this liver into my body. <laughs> How do I do that? Back up to you, Mike. Well, our invention is based upon the fact that we, as a nation and as a people, have gotten away from our rural roots. Heck, you know, where I grew up, I was surrounded by the hustle and bustle of a bleak urban landscape. Oh, give it a rest, Mike. You grew up in Somerset, Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah right. Anyway, our invention seeks to give everyone, no matter where they live, a taste of simple farm living. It's fridge udders. <laughs> now you can milk your fridge for everything it's worth. Mm. It comes with four teats. Teats! Teats! teats. Wow, teats. we can say that teats. too. This one over teats. here, teats. regular teats. milk. Teats. This one here, teats. skim milk. Chocolate milk, and right here, crushed ice. Ow! Woo! Hey, uh, say, Mike, let's uh, get drunk later and go fridge tipping. What do you say? Huh? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, oh, steady, Amanda. What do you think, sir? Uh, Dr. Forrester, my body has rejected my new liver. Oh, here, Frank, fill this out and put it next to the machine. Well, I don't want to wait that long. Well, then just get another liver from the machine. You happen to have $150,000 in quarters on you, don't you? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I do. Oh. oh. Anyway, Mike, your movie this week is from the team Golan Globus. Some producers I've wanted to inflict on you for some time. It stars Kathy Ireland, and it's called Alien from L.A. Alien from L.A.? That's kind of redundant, isn't it? <laughs> Frank? I warned you about fridge tipping. Circle, please cut it out. Oh, great, we got movies. Boy, you know that Kathy Ireland. She's got a real cute shape, doesn't she? Yeah, no, it kind of reminds me of that one model, you know, that tallish one. Uh, who, Elle McPherson? No, 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 I'm thinking of that one you see around in magazines and all. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Claudia Schiffer. No, 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 I see her on the TV program, you know, that you see on the TV? Right, right. Oh, yeah. oh, you mean him on? No, 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 this one's real, got a pretty hair thing going, you know, yeah. real white teeth yeah. and such. Oh, oh Jill Goodacre. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, 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 uh, come on, this one uh, wears all those fashions and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sounds maybe like Eileen Ford or John Casablanca, huh? Boy, I can just see her, you know, she's in that video and she's got like a strange name. Uh, yeah, yeah, sort of foreign, like uh, maybe yeah. from Germany or England or something. Yeah. Linda Evangelista? No, no, no. no. Mm, uh, Carol Alt, mm -hmm. uh, Yasmin, uh, Kate Moss, Kristen McNermany. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. The name's kind of like a bread. I'm thinking it's yeah. like Clownella or Plantagenets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, boy, she's pretty though. Oh, uh, real pretty. Uh, well, is she like 70s swimsuit type, like Cheryl Teagsian or Fawcettian or? No? Is she, is she more Lauren Hutton crossover type or Beverly Johnson-esque? No way. No, uh, I think she's more modern. Yeah. She's always wearing something different, you know, kind of yeah. has a different hair thing going. Well, is she like Parisian, wayfish, no mm -hmm. eyebrows, androgynous type? Mm -hmm. No. 90s Super Brad, House of Style? No, but I saw her once on that talk show and she seemed real nice. Oh. Christy Turlington. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, she's in those ads wearing those underpants. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah. That's... Rachel Hunter, Jerry Hall, Kim no. Alexis. No, no, that band sings to her on that uh, video on TV. Uh, Cindy Crawford. Nick Nikki Taylor. Cover girl Nikki Taylor. I've got it. I've got it. Who? Who? It's Clara Peller. Yeah. Yep. It is not Clara Peller. Yep. No, I remember. That's it. Clara Peller. It's yep. not Clara Peller. Clara Peller's yep. the where's the beef lady. Remember, she's been dead for a couple of yep. years. No, Mike. Thank think Crow's right. I remember seeing that Clara Peller in her underpants on that yep. video. There. Look, we'll be back until we straighten this out. You did yep. not see Clara, Clara Peller in her underpants. It's too. impossible. Ooh, you did, did not. Too. Yeah. Did ah, too. No, did too. Clara did Peller's did like 90. Did no. Clara Peller underpants. No. Did too. Underpants. No, no, yes, no. Come on, uh -huh. you look great. He looks great, he doesn't does he? does look great. Okay. Come on. You owe me a big favor, Nelson. <laughs> Shut up, crow. Don't look at my butt. Can you right. just get on with this, please? Okay, McCamba, just like we practiced at my wild Irish Ireland. Or in the Gaelic, Aaron Gobrales. Crow, <laughs> don't start. Come on. Sorry. Here we go. Oh, Kathy, oh, Kathy, my wild Ireland lassie, you're not just an island to me. <laughs> Thank you. With your sparkling green eyes and skin alabaster, you've stolen my heart. You Oh, oh, Kathy, who squeaks with the voice of an angel, I don't think you're so big a bone. What? I'd like to come over and roll in your clover and kiss your blarney stone. Come on, <laughs> hey guys, come what? on. What? No improvising. Sorry, I was just going with my feelings, you big mush. Let's just skip to the chorus. Okay. 
Sounds important. Oh, it is, Mike. That's yeah. because it's the Kathy Arlen Fabulous Range of Emotions acting guessing game by Hasbro. Go, go, go. Let's play. The first photo, Mike, portrays Kathy in a life transforming crisis. Mike, she's just been informed by Native Runner that her beloved long lost explorer slash father is dead. 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 She is alone, abandoned, bereft, be orphaned, veils above the earth or whatever. And her face displays this is for 50 points, Mr. Mike hold Nelson. On, hold on. <laughs> Do I have the game right here, you little monkeys? I'm supposed to guess uh, Kathy Arlen's emotion, huh? <laughs> All right, I'll say um, soul-wrenching sadness mixed with horror in the face of the void. And the answer is... I've, you got to flip that thing there. Oh, this? And yeah. the answer is... Dull surprise! So you're wrong, Mr. Nelson. Ah. You're 200 points in the hole, Mike, as we move into the lightning round. round, round, round. That's right. Begin here, Mike. Kathy <laughs> decides to transform her life. Her emotion? Churchillian determination. Dull surprise! Next, here, Kathy has fallen several hundred feet into a hole. Promotion. Uh, shock and horror. Dull surprise. All right, here, Kathy yanks a golf cart onto herself. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. How many more cards do we Hey, can you wait a minute? How many more cards do we have? 60 or 70. That's all. All right, well, we better get started. Uh, I'm going to say dull surprise. Dull surprise. Uh, dull surprise. Yes, dull surprise. Dull surprise. Dull surprise. Dull surprise. Dull surprise. Dull surprise. Well, I'm really making up the point. Dull surprise. Dull surprise. We'll be right back. Dull surprise. Dull surprise. You know, watching this movie was like watching a really bad movie. Oh, you can say that again. Hey! Hey! You know, I think we've said everything we can say about this movie. Too true, too yep. true. So how about a letter? Hey, great idea. Why don't we put that up on Still Store, Canva? Yeah. This one comes from Matt Zamora. How are things in Matt Zamora? Please, Sorry. come on. Crow. How come what? your head never turns in front of the movie? That's yeah. him asking. And when it does turn, it turns right back the other way. How come Tom Servo doesn't have any arms that move? And why doesn't Tom Servo, one word on Tom Servo, have any eyes? Are those slinkies on Tom Servo's arms? Why does J-I-P-C-Y Gypsy have a flashlight on her head? And why doesn't Gypsy have eyes? And, and does she, Tom Servo, see? Why does Tom Servo have a bubble gum? Who do you work head? for, man? Why don't you ever show the other robot a titty ball of fuse? Uh, and the answer's our. Just cause. And no, it doesn't. As for me, just cause. Just cause, no, just cause, just cause, and we just do, and just cause. What do you think, sir? Mm. Uh, 125,448 dollars, 25 cents. Uh, 50 cents. Uh, Take this, Doobie Brothers. Oh, Frank, uh, what's the number for 411? Four, one, one. Oh, look what you made me do. Now I gotta start all over again. <laughs>
Okay, you guys ready? Yes. Oh, the yellow roads of Texas. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Satellite of Love. I'm Mike. This is Tom Servo, and this is Pro T Robot. And we're just working on one of those beloved old standards. You know, these are the kind of songs that everyone hey, can hey, enjoy. Hey, there's something coming into the hex field. Oh. oh. Hello, yes? Yeah, hello, Ernie. Uh, Arnie? Arnie. Yeah. Arnie, you sound weird. Look, you got to get over here and sign these papers. I know you're not thrilled to hear from me. Uh, ma'am, I, I think you may have the wrong number. There's no Arnie here. Wow. That was well, weird. Well, yeah. let's go. Okay. Oh, oh the, the yellow, yellow rose, rose of Texas. And the, 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 the mic. Oh, uh, the hex field. Look, I know Arnie's there. You don't got to cover for him, Chopper. Chopper, this is you, oh. right? Look, you don't have to cover for him. He just has to get over here and sign these papers. A lady. Hold uh, on. What? What for supper? Eggs. Again? Yes, again. So is Arnie staying there with you, Chopper? Uh, this may take a while. We'll be right back. Look, Chop, do not let him take advantage uh -huh. of you. He's a sweet guy, but uh -huh. he takes, takes, takes. Uh -huh. Mommy's on the phone! Of course, I was only about 16 when me and Arnie got hooked up. Man, he was so good looking. Pack of them. Nowadays, it's just his whiskey breath, this dump and 4 a.m. calls from the police. Oh, hold on, my bacon's on fire. Wow. Well, you know, she did have a certain je ne sais quoi about her, didn't she? No. Let's see what Benny and June are doing. Hello, Murray. Automata, say, what's one of the most popular forms of exercise this month? Hmm? Hmm? Well, that's right, the recumbent bike. As I see it, recumbent creators were afraid to make them too comfortable. <laughs> well, I'm not afraid. Ta-da! The recumfy bike. <laughs> Dr. F, could you tuck me in before my ride? Of course, Franklin. There you go. Uh, check out the reading lamp, nightstand, and goose down comforter. Of course, we may have to ditch the wheels and the pedals to make room for the ice machine and espresso bar, but... Uh, I Doctor, we... uh, I can't get it to go. Well, try harder, you load. But there's kind of a lot of stuff here. There's kind of a lot of stuff here. <laughs> Nappy time, don't you think, Frank? Back up to you, Margo. Well, that is really, really useless. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, our invention pumps new life into that age-old deck of playing cards. Mm -hmm. Let's face it, with 52 cards, there's only so much you can do. A jack, queen, king, give me a break! <laughs> ah, that's why we each came up with our own new card to sort of spice things up a bit. <laughs> Mine is the aid of Chris Lemon, son of the very talented Jack Lemon. Chris Lemon? Yeah, I just loved him in duet. Yeah. Huh. Well, my card is Todd. Just Todd. Todd is helpful, and Todd is there for you. Todd? Todd? Yeah. Well, is he? what value is he? Is he royalty or what? <laughs> Todd doesn't like to be pigeonholed. He says the term royalty puts limitations on your dreams. Well, OK, what happens if I lay down an A to Chris Lemons? Who wins? Oh, no. Todd says numerical values are meaningless, and he doesn't like competition. Now, actually, now that you bring it up, Todd says your Chris Lemon card has issues he needs to work through. Well, if it's OK with, with Todd, why doesn't Crow go next? What, what do you, you got, yes, buddy? Yes. My card is the <laughs> Crow of Diamonds! Woo! Crow of Diamonds. Crow, I, I think you missed the whole point of this exercise. Huh? Well, Todd thinks it's okay. Huh? Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of your touchy-feely crap, Nelson. Today's movie really gets going about two minutes before the closing credits. It's another Bert I. Gordon pain parade called The Beginning of the End. And I hope you have health insurance. <laughs> How was your life? <laughs> and then later on, Todd's going to show me this really great massage technique and photos from his weekend with Robert Fulgham. And that was, ah, oh, movie sign. Oh, we got Dark movie sign. Come on, movie yeah. sign. Wow, I don't know about this movie, you guys. I mean, yeah. nothing's happening. Yeah. I think maybe we should call the Maz. We can do that, right? Uh, well, I guess. Or I wouldn't advise it. Yeah, uh, I mean, why get them involved? Yeah. Huh? I mean, I just think we should call the Mads. Why, why don't we call I the Mads? I don't know. Hi, baby takes the morning train. She works till nine. Frank? 
I could not stop picking at that pan of lemon bars. I ate half the pan. You're so lucky, I, you could eat anything and not worry. <laughs> oh, Pashaw, I'd give anything to have that complexion of yours. Oh, Frank. Hey, wow, Vicky is on. Oh. Oh. You know, Frank, this is exactly what I wanted to do today. Just have the whole day to ourselves. I'm declaring this National Hour Day. <laughs> <laughs> Please, do not let me eat all of this. Well, I shouldn't. <laughs> oh, my God, Frank. Switch on the game. Switch on the game. So, uh, I guess we can call the Mads, huh? Yeah. yeah. But you know what? I don't think I'm going to do that for a while. No, no. We'll be right back. I don't know, Crow, it's mm. probably just me, but the yeah. whole idea of a screenplay based around the life of Peter Graves, yeah. <laughs> it just spells box office poison. Mm. And then to go and narrow the focus so much. But, uh, here, let me sizzle it for you, Mike. Huh. Peter Graves went to the University of Minnesota, right? I guess. Uh, I guess nothing. The man went to the U of M, and that's exactly what my screenplay exploits. Well, can we just get on with this, please? Yes. <clears throat> Here we go. Just plain Peter, the U of M years. Or Peter Graves goes to college at the University of Minnesota. <clears throat> A screenplay by Crow T. Robot. Okay, okay. Let's go. I'm only doing this because I need the stage time, Pinbeak. Okay, Servo. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Act one, Peter Gray's enrolls at the University of Minnesota. Okay, okay. Hi, uh, I'm the registrar. May I help you? Yes, I'm Peter Graves, and I'd like to enroll at the University of Minnesota. Oh, oh, uh, act two. Mike, you gotta help me with the card, because oh, right. okay. I don't have any. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Act two, Peter Graves attends his first class. Hi, I'm Peter Graves. Is this Biology 101? Yes? Good. I'm Peter Graves, and I'm in the right class. Huh. <clears throat> um, act three. Thank you, Mike. Uh, act three. Uh, Peter Graves enjoys dorm life. Okay, hold on. Think fast. Aha! I'm Peter Graves, and I'm enjoying some good-natured ribbing with one of my many new pals here at the University of Minnesota. Act four. Extracurricular activities. <clears throat> oh, this is great. This one. It's a, oh. <clears throat> I'm Peter Graves, and I was wondering if you could direct me to the natatorium as I'm attending a swim meet. It's that way. Thank you. I'm Peter Graves. Okay. Uh, act five, Peter finds his calling. I'm Peter Graves, and I'm beginning to take an interest in the theater arts and speech communications here crow, at the how University many, how of... How many acts what? are there? Uh, 15. Okay. Uh, crow, yeah? I'm not criticizing here, but were you worried about the redundancy factor or not? Or... Well, I thought my point was important enough to risk that, but let's do the climax. I think you'll really like oh, it. Yeah. Okay, let's skip, skip to the climax. Okay, great. <clears throat> All the cards over now. There we go. Act 15, graduation. I'm Peter Graves. Thank you for the opportunity of learning at this fine institution. As I look back, I remember fondly my enrollment process, where, had you been there, you might have heard me say, Hi, I'm Peter Graves, and I'd like to enroll at the University of Minnesota. Or the time when That's I, it. Peter Graves... you Gra are what? way out there! What? Hey. Way out! Gee, uh, I gotta agree with him, Crow. Huh? No, much, but no. Mike, Mike, no matter what you or, or Servo may think of it, my little screenplay, if it's convinced just one person out there that Peter Graves went to the University of Minnesota, then I've done my job. I'm Peter Graves, and we've got movie sign on A&E. Oh, look out, Barney Paris, help me! <laughs> okay, Mr. Tom Servo, are you ready for this? Oh, you bet, Mike. This movie's given me a great idea for a stand-up routine. Now take your seat. Okay. Ready? All right. Okay, lights, cam bot. 
Thank you. Thank you, everybody. What a beautiful crowd tonight, huh? Say, did you ever notice the difference between grasshoppers and locusts? <laughs> well, for one thing, locusts have shorter antennae than grasshoppers. Grasshoppers walking down the street like, hey, look at me, I got some big antennae. <laughs> Where a locust is walking down the street, it's more like, oh, no, my antennas are so small. <laughs> Smaller antennae, you see, on the locust. Have you checked out the ovipositor in a female grasshopper? <laughs> you see, they use them to drill holes in the grass, you know what I mean? <laughs> They're like, oh. Oh, I need to drill a hole. Hope I brought my ovipositor. <laughs> but female locusts have short ovipositors, so they're more like, Oh, no, my ovipositors are so small. <laughs> oh, what else can I tell you about myself? Oh, longhorn grasshoppers. Are they something to what? <laughs> you know, they come from the family Tetaganiidae. Am I right? Ladies, back me up on this one. Now, you see, locusts, they're different from the Tetaganiidae, especially those Rocky Mountain locusts. They're known as Melanopolis Spritas. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Tip your waitresses. Good night. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, thank well, you. Oh, boy. Tom, huh? oh, that, that really, really uh, sucked. sucked. Oh, no, it was very good. It was informative, too. Oh, gee, thanks. You know, I was thinking of doing it on the Tonight Show. Yeah. Oh, Tom, I mean, you, you were good, but I mean, you know, you got to be really, really good to be on the Tonight Show. Well, how about David Letterman, then? Well, they just don't let anybody on Letterman. How about Chevy Chase? Hey, oh, there hey. you go. Send him a tape. I think he got a real shot at oh, it. Gee, we'll thanks. be right back. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Tom. Yes? Is this the first movie with grasshoppers? You know, I think it is. I can't remember ever seeing a single grasshopper. And then today, nothing but grasshoppers. Wow. Weird. Now, come on, there had to have been one or two grasshoppers. Nope. No, sorry. That Zip. is weird. Go that is weird. You know, yeah. maybe we should read a postcard. Hey. Good idea. Okay, we got this one here from Kent and Amy Hakaida. Put Hi. that up on still store Very there, nice. Camba. Mm. They say, as members of the Kim Cattrall fan club, mm -hmm. Crow, Kim Cattrall, wow. yes. we wondered if you yes. were going to view Oliver yes. Stone's Wild yes. Palm. Uh, no, I don't no. think I do. <laughs> well, gotta go. The fathers and friends are going at it in the swimming pool. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that is salty. Yeah. You know, the great thing about these postcards people send in, though, they double as great Bert I. Gordon special effects. It's hey, great. cool. Yeah, Check this <laughs> hey. out. Okay. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Grasshoppers are attacking the beach at Andacori Aruba! Oh, help! Oh, that's funny. Hey, I got one. I got one here. Oh no! The grasshoppers! Ah, they're attacking the beetles! Don't defend Ringo at all costs. Oh, they're attacking me. Oh, look at this. Oh, grasshoppers, they don't care. Now they're going for the village of Spires in Oldenburg, Indiana. Grasshoppers have you no decency. Oh, no. uh, grasshoppers have scaled to the very top of our old father high. Oh, so what's the oh, 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 oh. We are witnessing a time when the beasts have reclaimed Earl Father Hines. Crow. I'm Peter Graves. Crow. I'm done. Back to you. Uh, uh -oh. don't, don't be careful. Maybe we yeah. should go back down there. Remember no. what happened last time. Back to you, sir. Keep your hands up, Frank. Keep your hands up, Frank. <laughs> ah, Mike, uh, caught us in the middle of our daily routine. What's that they say about boxing, Frank? It's the only real sport. It's the only honest sport. It's the sport of men. Absolutely right. Uh, grab yourself a beer and uh, grab me one too, fellow fighter. <laughs> OK, because we're men. We are men. Yes, you've made your point, Frank. We're men. Yes, Frank. Oh, oh. you want a piece of me? Come on, come on. Huh? Huh? Oh, 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 Frank, 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 please, please, enough. I have to get the button. Boom. Hi everyone, welcome to the Satellite of Love. I'm Mike, and you're just in time for the final dress and tech rehearsal for Love Letters, starring Crow T. Robot Hello. and Tom Servo. Hello. You know, Love Letters is a lot like same time next year, only you don't have to remember any lines. <laughs> ready, guys? Yes, ready. And anytime. Dear Melissa, hi. How are you? I am fine. Remember when we met at college last year and fell in love? Sincerely, Andrew. Dear Andrew, I read your letter today and was overcome with love for you. 
By the way, I have married Stephen, but will probably grow apart. More later, Melissa. Dear Melissa, that's okay. I got married too, but I totally love you, Andrew. Dear Andrew, I'm having Stephen's baby, but I wanted to let you know that it's you that I love. Take care, Melissa. Dear Melissa, I turned middle-aged this week. I'm a rich wasp and I love you. All my best, Andrew. Dear Andrew, I'm a grandmother now. Stephen and I have grown apart. Go figure. I do so love you. Stay well, Melissa. Dear Melissa, my children have reproduced also. Our love endures through the years, huh? Boy, do I love you. Regards, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you very much. That Thank was you. fantastic. Oh, Bravo really? and brava. No. I saw no. Stephanie Zimbalis Jr. and Chris Lemon do that, and they did not do it justice compared to you oh. two gentlemen. Oh, no, 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 no. Sir, Servo there was no, no, setting no, was the lines up so pro, brilliant. Pro, no, no, well, no, 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 theater no, no, no. is, is a group think? thing, and you were able to hold moment, moment, oh, uh, moment by moment is what theater is all about. And it was a very ephemeral thing, and it was almost not there, but it was there. You know, Servo, Crow, I'm not just a friend of yours. I'm a fan. Oh, hey, Ruth Gordon and Garson Keenan are calling. Oh, don't stop touching me. Uh, we're not ready. Uh, you go first. Hey, no problem. Our invention is you. I'm Dr. Clayton Forrester. And I'm TV's friend. See? <laughs> Cute. Uh, but I don't quite understand the... I'm Dr. Clayton Forrester, the one with the weak chin. I'm going to hit TV's Frank because of my deep resentment at my own limitations. I'm TV's Frank, and I'm going to take it because I have no self-confidence. Ow! 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 <laughs> well, you do have kind of a weak chin. Forget the chin, Frank. Don't you see what's happening? We're losing their respect. It's all on the line here, man. We've got to do something and fast. Hey, we're just funning you. Shall I hit you again, TV Strength? Oh, please do. <laughs> Ow. Ow, not so hard. <laughs> All right, Frank, let him have it. I'm Tom Servo, and I must keep with the guy with a round head. <laughs> and I've got these little adorable arms. <laughs> and I'm Crow T. Robot, and I'm gold, and I'm trapped in space. What a stupid color gold is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I trust you can see that two can play at that game, Nilsson. Anyway, your experiment this week is called the Atomic Brain. Plus, there's a short about the golden age of juvenile delinquency. <laughs> oh, Frank, that's very good. You've almost got Tom down. Keep flapping those arms. <laughs> uh, you keep practicing. I'll get the button. I'm Dr. Clayton Forrester, and I've got my head stuck. Whoa! Oh, 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 So then, with just this little weather kit, you've transformed yourself into, uh, what was it again? Weather Servo 9, first to bring the satellite of love of vital weather information that affects you! You know, I appreciate that, but uh, there's very little weather in space, and besides, we have instruments that handle all that. Servo, you're gonna die in space. Crow! You might not! That's right, Crow. Now raise Weather Servo 9 into space, and I'll report the weather as it happens to you! Don't die! Up to the minute forecast for weather servo night. Boy, it's cold out here. Is it supposed to be this cold? Oh, don't be afraid. You're weather servo nine. Servo, just make your report and then get back in here, okay? Well, before I get on with the weather, I've got a couple of birthdays to announce. <laughs> just kidding, of course. Man, is it cold out here? Is that me? Yeah. Oh, I guess the big news is the cold weather. <laughs> you might want to take a jacket. <laughs> it's cold. Whoa, what's this? <laughs> Looks like a meteor shower is going to be coming by. <laughs> might warm things up a bit. <laughs> It'll probably pass just to the north of us, but you might want to... Ah! Looks like it's not working. Pam, by, you better show me rocket number nine. Well, that'll happen. Servo, are you all right? Servo, buddy, speak to me. Well, I'm not 
cold anymore. <laughs> I better start fixing you up. Wow, you look so cool, Servo. Hey, Mike, can I do that? No, no you that. can't. You that cannot next. do that. We'll be right back. <laughs> Weather station <laughs> help. <laughs> Head help to be on fire. Might want to die that time. You've never heard of a chin puppet. No, nope, not me. Never All right, well, I'll do the whole demo for you then, oh, okay? Uh, wonderful. Oh, the chin puppet, right? Right, a chin puppet. Hey, why don't you scramble around front there and I'll do the whole stage show okay. for you, all right? You guys are going to love this. Mike, Mike, what are you doing there, uh, honey? Honey, Mike, Mike dear? Oh, oh. Hey, how are you doing? And what do you know? Glad you could be here to see my show. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I, I don't get it. Why are you upside down? Fantastic. What, what, what's not to get? I'm a chin puppet. So, uh, on Earth, did you just go ahead and do this for people? Yeah. And they laugh? Well, sure, it's funny. Hey, you're a great crowd. Did you ever go on a date like that? Of course not. Hey, come on, you guys wanted to see this. Get into it. I know, but in our wildest dreams, we never imagined this. Come on, it's whimsical. It's odd and disturbing, <laughs> Mike. What would possess a person to do that? I just don't understand this. I, I, apparently, you're not suited to chin puppets. Let's just call the whole thing off, you know? Whoa! <laughs> Oh, now that's funny. Look at that. He's got an upside down face on his chin. <laughs> no, I get it. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's upside down. Well, movie oh, we up. Mike, Crow, Servo, where is everybody? I think it's lonely being magic boys. I wish there was another disembodied voice around here I could talk to. Well, sometimes it's convenient to have a man. Especially when he comes cheaper than servants. Hey, you're the voiceover guy from today's movie. Tell me, what do you like? What's your favorite hobby? Making love to an 80-year-old woman in the body of a 20-year-old girl. Ew, how could you do that? She was quite harmless and, at times, even amusing. You know, I only met you a few seconds ago, but you're really yucky. I can only imagine what you think of me. So firm, so nicely rounded in places men like. That's it. Get lost, loser. Jeez, from now on, I'm going to forget about romance and just get lost in my work. Commercial sign five, four, three, two. Commercial sign now. Men. Mike! Mike! Mike, 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 Mike. Mike, 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 Mike. Yes, Eleanor? Ready? I was born ready. Oh, okay. Oh, Kalu, Kale. Okay, Tom, get it? Ready. Dr. Richard Kimball is a fugitive on the run from the law. But in another part of the world, Green Acres' Hank Kimball is also on the run from the law. Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Nelson, uh, I'm on the run. Well, uh, not actually on the run. I'm uh, being pursued, and I'm walking quickly. <laughs> you, know, you see, I'm in flight from the law. Well, not the whole law. Uh, actually, just parts of the law. <laughs> when I say parts, I should really say men. Not to say there aren't women in the police force. Uh, there are some women. I'm just not sure of the ratio. <laughs> I'm also being followed by a one-armed man. Or a man with a prosthetic arm. I'm sure he had two arms when he was born. Well, uh, well, thanks very much. Good night. Boy. Mm. Pro, buddy? Wow. You know, mm. you set a stool down next to that premise and just milked it for everything it was worth. <laughs> Boom. Well, thank you very much. Good job, thank McLeod. You. Oh. <laughs> okay, we got a bunch of letters. Letters! Here. Oh, I love oh, letters. 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 Delicious letters. Ooh. And, uh, well, let's start with this one here. This first one's from Eric Halloran. Eric. Put that Halloran. up on Still Store there. Hi, Eric. Cambot. Eric says, Dear Satellite of Love, which is a good start. I'm a 13-year-old boy, and, uh, please. Sorry. It's annoying. Every time I read the paper. I'm writing to say I really enjoy the show, and I really think it's a laugh riot. <laughs> I'm also writing to ask a question. Here we go. Okay. What does the K stand for in MST3K? Uh, I got this one, Mike. <clears throat> Eric, that K stands for Carl. Carl was the man who invented lightning. Thank you very much. Lightning? Oh, yeah, Carl. Good yeah. answer. All right, well, let's move on here. Uh, okay. This one's kind of a special. Uh, uh, check this out. Just a letter to let you know. This one's from Ann Feldstein, by the way. Why don't you put that up on the Hi, Ann. <laughs> Ann, thank you for writing. Just a letter to let you guys know how much I love your show. Oh, thank and you. how I especially love Tommy Gunn Servo. Oh. Wow. This is my favorite, and I love, he is my favorite, and I love his songs. If I could be on the Satellite of Love, I would sit and talk to Tom all day oh, long. Ann. Devotedly, oh, sweet Ann, Ann Feldstein. Hey, Ann. Uh, uh, Mike, it. who's that from? Uh, Ann Feldstein? Oh, yeah, Feldstein. Yeah. Yep. Damn. Yeah, got a big stack of letters from Feldstein down in my locker. What? That's right. Yeah. I, you know, I got a bunch of that from her, too. You oh. finally got around to writing you, huh? Well, well you trollop, you tart, Ann. Oh, you hey, teaser of Bob. That's Ann. Oh, no kidding. offense, Ann. a little bitter there. Uh, if we can continue on here, oh, please. please, please this do. is from uh, Eric Hansen. Eric. Another Eric. <laughs> Another Eric. Hansen Halloran. 
I smell a conspiracy. Mm. Anyway, put that uh, letter up on Phil's store there. Neat. And Neat. I'll show you a picture, too. Dear Lords of Lunar Laughter. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> I am one of the millions of fans or misties who are forced to pump MST3K into their veins. So addicted am I that I have constructed a robot companion to assist me in alleviating the tribulations of bad cinematography. My robot, or more accurately, puppet, pictured here with me is a replica of TV's wisecracking crow built out of household gadgets. And let's put the uh, picture up there now. Hey, look at that. Well, now, that's a nice that's like very flattering. But it should be good because if you'll notice, that's not Eric at all. That's George Lucas. Wow. What? THX developer. Look at you can even see the graying temples at the side. He just shaved his beard and tried to fool us. Oh, well, no George. good, George Lucas. <laughs> Thank you. That's from Eric. That's anyway. Thank you. Clever, huh? Hey, why Thank don't you, you uh, cue the address for the info for us? Okay, send your tinctures and other missives to the Letters. Mystery Science Theater Letters. Information yeah, Club, Post it. Office Box 5325, tinctures. Hopkins, Minnesota 55343. Do it today. Well, I guess that's it. What do you think, mad guys? Mm -hmm. I'm Dr. Frank, physician and bon vivant. <laughs> oh, Dr. Frank, there's a Dr. Fisk here to see you. Well, send him right in. Uh, hey, wait, I'm not going to fall for that one again. He really wants to consult with you, Dr. Frank. He says it's very important. Important? Consult? Oh, I am a doctor after all. Send him right in. Come in. <laughs> well, hello, Dr. Fisk. Tell me, what is your... Well, Sometimes it's just too easy. Okay, I'll wrap you down some more, Mike. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Satellite of Love. I'm Mike Nelson. This is Crow T. Robot, and that's Tom Servo. Right. We're just roughhousing. <laughs> Gee, it sure looks like fun, you guys. No, no, it's really not that much fun. Hop down here, buddy. This is fun. <laughs> that, that feels hilarious. <laughs> hey, you guys, this is not a gymnasium. Oh, come on, Jims. It's fun when it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Fun until somebody dies. Oh. Oh, that's harsh, huh? I think it's time for you to go for a ride. Oh, no, no, come, no, no. Come on, Please, come on, it's fun. Hard. Isn't it fun? Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> no, Mike, no, that thing. It's quiet time now, Mike. Oh, 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 oh okay. please, I'm very grateful. Oh, thank you. Oh. Oh, good one, Mike. Uh, we'll be right back. Uh, my mom says you have to go home now, Dink. <laughs> Uh-uh. Come uh -uh. on, no. Tommy oh, Gunn, just drop, I'll catch you. But I'm scared. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Come on. Okay, here I come. Oh. 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 We can't have nice things, can oh. we? Oh. 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 Help me, Mike. Mike. Help okay, me. I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, oh. 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 it'll have to wait. The dual airbags are calling. Bonjour, my little friends. I must admit I'm giddy with excitement. You see, Frank and I have invented the first really real time machine. <laughs> Previously, time machines had been mere works of fiction. But this, this is good. This is real. Isn't that right, Fred? That's right. We've broken through the space-time continuum and passed the savings. On to you. It's quite complicated, actually, but all you need to know is that we get into the capsule and are transported back thousands of years, back to caveman time. Bonjour. That's right, we're heading back through time at a dizzying speed. Oh boy, look, we're in the 60s. A time of tumultuous change. Oh, why, Frank, I've spotted a T-bird. Uh, we must be in the 50s. Oh no, now it's the 40s, the 40s. Yeah, but that's why I'm busy planting my victory garden. Uh, ow, back, Frank, back we thing. go. Oh, hi, Alexander Graham Bell. Oh, farther back still. Oh, uh, why, it's, hello, Kit, Kit Carson, Frank. Uh, howdy. Boy, it sure is weird being in the old west. <laughs> <laughs> hey, are you dressed yet? No. No. Uh, uh, Mike, we seem to have entered some kind of strange time porthole thingy. Uh, allow me to shout back through the centuries, back to you, Nelson! 
Fabio. 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 We're, We're Fabio. Fabio. That's right. We are all Fabio, star of book covers, movies, and marketer of his own line of chest grease. And why are we all Fabio? Because everyone wants to be Fabio. Men respect Fabio. Women love Fabio. There isn't a female organism alive that doesn't worship Fabio. Fabio. Even Janice Ian kneels at his altar. We believe Fabio is here to stay. That's why we've come up with the... Fabio Kit, the jutting, manly, yet accessible jawline, the soft mane of grabbable hair, and the tan, taut, muffiny chest. Fabio Fever, catch it! Sing whatever, sing whatever. Hey, you guys look like Fabio! Yeah? <laughs> Hey, don't hey. laugh. We're Fabio. Yeah, big buttery yeah. slabs of Fabio. Ah, she's gone. Let it go. Back to you guys. Hey. Well, Mike, as you can see, I went back, all the way back to caveman time. Why, I got very close to the wellspring. Frank, how come I'm dressed like a caveman and you're dressed like a whatever you're supposed to? It's all going to hell. Well, I guess that leads it to me, Televisio Francus, to tell you that your experiment today is Outlaw, starring the very huggable Jack Palance. The anvil that men do last long. The goo is often furred in their homes. I'll send you the movie. Oh, we are moving, so Mike, we admire you immensely. And thank you. And it's due almost entirely to your acting career. Yes, well, I have trod the boards. Those will be some <laughs> great memories. You mentioned Hamlet. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Mike, do us a favor and lead us through those memories with the help of the scrapbook we found under your bed. Oh, yeah. Right under the desk. Oh, bed. really? No. Yeah. Oh, you did find it. <laughs> great. Sure did, yeah. You know, yeah. this is old stuff. Nobody oh, would be Mike, interested in this. Come on. No, this is their old production oh, still. Let's just Mike. talk this hey, away. Hey, Campbell, bring it in. Let's all oh, enjoy these. That's the first one there, Mike. Oh, great. Well, this first one is. Uh, HMS Pinafore. That's oh, right. Nice. Great production. <laughs> Cute sailor suit. <laughs> yeah. Here's, oh, I'm the lovable stew pot in South Pacific. Oh, no, there. that's marvelous. Here's uh, Anything Goes, Billy Crocker. Ooh, very nice. Oh, the musical Moby Dick. Mm. Oh, a lot of sailor suits early in your career, eh, Mike? Well, yeah. I guess so. Death of a Salesman. Death uh, of a Salesman. Inherit the Wind. Oh, great production. Nice. Waiting for Godot. That, that was a very good Godot. Waiting. Respect yeah. the director <laughs> in that one. Uh, there's the Hamlet. Ooh. Death Hamlet? Yeah, you, you see the skull? Well, of course. Four years. Spoon River oh, Anthology. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Night theme, Mother. Mike. Mike. Great production. Mike. Murder Mike. in the Cathedral. Mike. Mike. Uh, Mike. Elephant Mike. Man. What? Mike. What? You're always in a sailor's suit. Always. What? Always. Holy cow. I am in a sailor suit a lot. Yep. Well, you look good in a sailor suit. Yeah. <laughs> well, how did this happen? Well, don't what? worry about it. Well, I mean, sailor suits are comfortable, right? Certainly, sailors seem to like. Oh yeah, well, Richard the really Third. Nice. I'm in a sailor like suit there. The, 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 oh, Calcutta. Wow, that's naughty. What? No, don't oh, look at me, that. That's look. not for you. Come on. Later, honey. Come on. No, no, no. Come we'll on. be right back. Be nude except for the sailor suit. Look at that. Don't look at that. Hey, fellas, there sure is a lot of skin in this movie in there. There sure is. Yeah. Yet, despite all the acres of flesh in this film, I just can't come up with a word that describes it. Well, I can. You can. Why, sure. It's breastica, boobical, chestica, mammical, pendular, globular, fun. Flashical, orbital, mandula, scupula? Right, oh, that's the one. Is it gluteal maximal, tushital, cracula, bunular, morning till night? Well, your absoto, glandular, fanny, fantastical, mastoca, fleshular, right? It's an areological auto. Erotical, tubular, bobular, joy, and explosular, regional, bachelor, pouchular, fun for girl and boy. A latissimal, dorsical, hung like a horsical, calipolitical ball. The most bunular, funular. Fruit of the lumula. Frenchical, tungular. Wabada, bobular, funular, fruit of the lumula. Frenchical, tungular, wabada, bobular. Fleshical, orbital, subobular, to subobular, ball. Hey! Hey, guys, how's the movie? Oh, it's Guys, 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 what, 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 guys, what, 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 guys, guys, what I got. What? It's Jack Palance's book on the making of today's movie. Jack Palance on Palance, wow. believe it or not. Cool. cool, let me read it. Oh, okay, okay, uh, okay. oh, oh. let's see. Uh, day one, missed call. <laughs> Partied all night with that 
platinum midget fella and Urbano. This is great. Still having trouble seeing straight. <laughs> Mike. Okay, okay, let's see. Day three. Missed call. Wandered into shot yesterday and they decided to keep it. <laughs> what the heck does Avanti Avanti mean? <laughs> Serva. Okay, okay, okay. Day five. Missed call. After four days of shooting, finally got script today. And guess what? I'm not playing Thomas Aquinas. I'm supposed to be some kind of freaking wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Day eight, missed call. Just can't get canceled series bronk off my mind. Why? Why? Can't keep anything down. Not sleeping. Wow! <laughs> Let me read. Day, day nine, missed call. Went into village with Gina. My voice scares little Italian kids. Spent entire per diem on bunch of crap. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Day ten, missed call. I think I could, I, I think I kill the man today. More later. Ooh, Jeez, ooh. Mike, I think that's enough. I, I don't think I want to know anymore. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys, a whole chapter on Tango and Cash. Oh, oh, oh. Let's see, pictures. Let's see. I want to I wanna, I wanna read. Saw Russell's butt today. <laughs> Facts. In this movie alone, there were more groin shots of the human male body than in all previously viewed movies combined. With that in mind, Kamba, let's watch. Shot. Think about it, won't you? Thank you. Well, sirs. everyone, Mike Nelson here, just giving Crow T Robot his regularly scheduled maintenance checkup. Help me! <laughs> you know what, I, I think I gotta sand your contacts. Does that sound right? Maybe uh, change your plugs and points. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Please stop. Say, Mike, maybe you should take Crow to a certified mechanic. I mean, this is highly specialized work. Well, I'd like to, but we're stranded in space. Oh, yeah. Well, then try cutting that big glue wire. Oh, no, God. No, no, I think I got it. All I got to do is uh, clip this little thingamabob over here. Maybe it's this other thing here. I'll try that. Oh, oh, geez. Mike, you shouldn't have done that. I feel funny. Oh, oh, geez. Oh, uh, Mr. Carter, Mr. Carter. My God, man, you turned him into Arnold Horshack. My God. Oh, 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 oh Mr. Carter. Mommy, mommy. I can walk. Oh. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, thanks, Chips. That's got it. You got me back to normal. I don't think I could have stood being Horshack for another minute. Yeah, Ooh. let's face it, a little Horshack goes a long way. True, true. Mm -hmm. true. Mommy, honey, oh, wow, guys. It was terrible. Mike was trying to repair me. I came this close to becoming Epstein. You know, I think yeah. the stress of being trapped in space might be getting to Mike. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a butterfly. Hey, what's going on, you guys? Oh, hi, Mike. How you... Hey! You're ripping up my underwoods! Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's all part of my ingenious escape plan. Oh. Tearing up all the sheets on the satellite of love, gonna throw them out and climb back down to Earth. Oh, that's great, Mike, but why must my underwoods be sacrificed? Yeah. Well, I ran out of sheets. I had to use whatever I could find. Sorry. Oh. 
Oh, poor guy. Hey, my sensible pants. <laughs> hey, my bra. <laughs> what do you know? Hey, my pantyhose. I, I mean, what are those? <laughs> you know, you guys, in my head, I know I'm being impractical, but in my heart, I had to give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really sweet, Mike. Yeah. You're an inspiration. Oh, I'll see. There's just one little thing. Mm -hmm. What about my underoos? You owe me one pair of underoos. I want my underoos. Panties, panties. <laughs> I got them. <laughs> Hello, my underoo wearing horse shack imitating young friends. Say, you remember rock climbing, hmm? And what about deep herding, hmm? hmm? Well, I've come up with a process that takes those concepts one step further. And to help explain it, I've enlisted the help of an expert, one Dr. <laughs> Felix Frankenhooker. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's enough, that's enough. Well, the process that the good doctor here referred to is a little thing that we like to call Hypnoheliostatic stasis. So uh, tell me, doctor, how does hypnoheliostatic stasis work? Well, hypnoheliostatic stasis contains X4, uh -huh. an extremely rare, extremely scientific form of <laughs> subliminal poopy. It can take a film like, oh, how you say, uh, Fire Maidens of Outer Space, slow it down, remove all of the action. Uh, well, how does hypnoheliostatic stasis differ from, say, deep hurting? Aha! Aha! See for yourself! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Maybe you should tell Mike in the box about... I mean, maybe you should tell Mike in the box about how you say uh, this week's experiment. I'd be glad to. Uh, your movie this week is called Radar Secret Service. In the line of fire, it ain't. But first, a little train wreck of a short called Last Clear Chance. And they're both packed chock full of hypno-heliostatic stasis. <laughs> Containing X4. <laughs> ah, ah, that's it. Keep them coming. This is one. <laughs> 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 Hi, I'm Trooper Tom Servo. Well, I've seen it all, stared into the gaping maw of death, and I'm here to remind you of the horror that lurks everywhere. No, don't get up. You young people can take things for granted, such as your sandwiches. Oh, I know, you're just gonna eat that sandwich a little bit, with a little bit of mayo and a little bit of hard salami. Ah! Why don't they look? Listen, brother, nearly 40% 40, uh, 40 of all accidents represent uh, nearly half of all accidents. But who cares? Have fun with your lint trap. Nothing will happen to you. It'll happen to the other guy. Ah! Why don't they? Ah! Why don't they look? Well, say, hot plates are sure fun. Well, they're boss. They're cool. Until... Ah! Why don't they? Why do we even bother with the brainless gibbons who live in this stinking hole of a town? Well, I wash my hands of it, brother. Pa! <laughs> wow. Little guy really gets into his roles, yeah. doesn't he? <laughs> oh, hey! Ah, wonder what the mads want. Oh, mad scientists. Sure, you can have a lot of fun with mad scientists until no. someone loses oh. an eye. Well, now that the uh, local has taken effect, it's time for Radar Secret Service with full-blown hypnoheliostatic stasis. <laughs> oh, Dr. Frankenkeister, oh. <laughs> in your opinion, would you say we're in for a lot of standing around? <laughs> Great slabs of driving? <laughs> Hot jobs of talking? <laughs> oh, yes. In short, hypnoheliostatic stasis. Isn't that right, Dr. Frankenkeister? Ja, ja, <laughs> strum and drang, ja. <laughs> oh. So what's the matter with what? Mr. Obama? Nothing's the matter with it. Just Mr. Obama. Here he comes. Oh, oh, oh. You don't love me. <laughs> hey, what's going on? What, what is all this? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, uh, we know the hypnoheliostatic stasis might be getting to you. So we, we know that you had to miss your 10-year high school reunion. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we decided to have one for you. Yeah, <laughs> we found your yearbook, so we're all set to simulate the actual reunion <laughs> experience. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's, that's great. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I'm that's really excited. Uh, that's uh, great. Put your name tag on there, Mike. Oh. And well, Welcome to the Baraboo High School Class of 83 reunion here at the Budgetel Regency Room off County Trunk D. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 
Oh, oh, jeez. Oh, Nelson? Mike Nelson? Buddy, Bob Nelson, <laughs> man, what's going Ooh. on, man? <laughs> Man, I envy you, Nelson. You made it. You got out of this town, man. Wow. I married Pam, just like everybody said I would. It's okay, I guess. Hey, I never see you down at the rendezvous anymore, man. <laughs> it's because I don't live around here anymore. Oh, yeah, that's probably it. Oh, man, I envy you, Nelson. You made it. You got out of this town, man. Mike! Oh, boy. Mike Nelson! Remember me? Janine! Janine LaFont! Right, how you doing, Janine LaFont? Oh, yeah, except for now, it's Janine LaFont Spike. Well, how are you? I'm good, it's good to see you again. Hey, how come you never asked me out, huh? Oh. I just always thought you were totally stuck up. Oh, hey, I better go call the sitter. She's got her hands full with those nine rug rats and everything. See yeah, ya? yeah, right. <laughs> nine kids in ten years. Hi, Mike. Hi, um, uh, uh, uh. Yes. Uh, um. Uh, Rick, how you doing, Rick? Good no. Good I sat three seats behind you and four back in health and family living. <laughs> <laughs> That's John. How are you, John? No. Hey, everybody. Brenda again. Okay, okay, here's the answer to the trivia question. Sydney can get tall for a car. Love you. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to get going with the music. Here's Impaler. <laughs> I don't know. It's Jim. No, I can't. Cause we, I, I got to get some fun to the movie side. This is a thing you've never known before. Sure. It's called Ah! Hey, say, hey, uh, Crow and I did a little project we want to do when we get back yeah, down to project. Earth, and we were wondering if... What, you got a little maybe... project here? <laughs> well, bring it on in here, you little scamps. Let me have a look at <laughs> yeah. it. Well, say... Yeah. It's the Quinn Martin Nature Preserve. It's a place where old Quinn Martin character actors will go to roam free in their natural habitat. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, enter QMNP here, and pay a nominal fee to ticket taker Anthony Zerby. Oh. As you drive on, the rolling hills are dotted with the fauna of early Quinn Martin success, the untouchables. Here, Robert Stack playfully pulls a muskrat from the mouth of fellow G-man, Jerry Paris, who wrestles with alpha male Lloyd Nolan. As you drive on, you might surprise old Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. munching contentedly at the eucalyptus leaves that were planted especially for him. Idle your car down now because you're likely to rile Michael Douglas or get between Carl Malden and his cubs here on the plains of San Francisco, or... Uh, can I interrupt you right here? Sure. Uh, is there going to be a Harry O exhibit? Well, that's a good question, but Harry O has not been classified as a Quinn Martin production. Hmm, all right, go on. Right. <clears throat> In the heat of the midday sun, many QMers take refuge at the David Jansen watering hole. This becomes a place of great activity, and inter-series mingling is not uncommon. You could see woo, Roy Finnis picking nits off Buddy Ebsen, or Lee Merriweather perched on the gargantuan back of William Conrad. Oh, boy. <gasps> Wait a minute. <gasps> There's a commotion in the deep grass. It's the Quinn Martin guest stars. Oh, Bradford Dillman is feasting on the fresh carcass of Pat Hingle. Guys. When it's wrested from his jaws and guys. torn to shreds by James guys. Franciscus, guys. the fur flies guys. until Ken Howard guys. of White Shadow Guys, 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 Crow, Mike, what? guys! What? 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 What's happened to you? What, what do you mean? Do you mean? <laughs> I mean, Ken Howard, Pat Hingle, Nitz? Good Lord, it's the helio hypnosis. Static stasis, it's working on you! Hmm? Good Lord, Servo, you may be right. I am right. Oh, you may have something there, Servo. Uh -huh. Buddy Epson would never allow Roy Thinnis to pick nits off. Don't oh, crow! We'll be oh. right back while I deprogram these two. What? Oh, crow! <laughs> Helicopters, dirt roads, people standing around ramrod straight. <laughs> oh, those mads really thought they had us. Mm -hmm. Thank God we had protection. You said it, <laughs> but just when the going got tough, the tough got goofy. <laughs> That's right, the mads may have had hypnoheliostatic stasis with all its doomsday ramifications, but we... We gentlemen remember to bring along plenty of Extato Euphoro Fun! <laughs> That's right, Extato Euphoro Fun with patented Hinder 90. It takes a B movie and turns it into a Yippee movie! Yippee! Mm. Hey, you know, I think it's the Hinder 90 that made the helicopter sequence so over the top funny! True, true, <laughs> but it really proved itself on those hard to get at scenes like yes. At the Barn mm. or How About the Ground in Pain of The Office sequence. Oh, yes. Let's just face it, Extato Euphoro Fun with patented Hinder 90 makes everything fun! Hooray! <laughs> oh, oh, what do you think, Pants? Hey, Steve Arino? 
Just ran into Dr. Vatz's name out there. Seems like you're really kicking some... Frank, the gig is up. They've got Hinder 90. Hinder 90, hey! There's no such thing as Hinder 90. Is two. Is not. Is two. Is not. Is not. Is two. Hey! Frank, as far as I'm concerned, Nelson and I are in an all-out arms race. He's got Hinder 90, and I'm behind. Behind, behind her again. Frank, one more crack like that. They <laughs> <laughs> don't come any better than TV's Frank. Seasons greetings, everyone. Welcome Hi. to the Satellite of Love. Hey. You know, you're just in time for our caroling session. We got a nice hot mug of cocoa. As you can see, we're all bundled up and we're ready to go. So just sit back, relax. Hey, and listen and... to Tom drown out the rest of us. Hey. Come on, you guys. It's <laughs> Christmas. That's yeah. okay. Come on. Okay, everyone ready? Get your places. Here's your note. Okay. <laughs> We'll be right back, I think. Noel. Gee, Mike, why don't we make it a holiday tradition that just smash my head and give Crow extensive third-degree burns, oh, What huh? can I say? I'm sorry. <sighs> oh, don't sweat it, Mike. Uh, with any luck, the burns will have healed by Labor Day. Oh, look, Yukon oh. Cornelius and Herbie are calling. So cool. Oh, this is gonna be so great. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brass monkeys, Frank. Oh, brass monkeys. Merry Christmas, Dr. F. Oh, Merry what? Oh, what's that? Oh. Open it. Oh, Frank. I it's shaved you. my head and got you a watch fob. Oh, yeah. You're, oh, you sold your hair and got me this beautiful watch fob. Well, thank sold you. my hair? No. Oh, well, it's very beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. It's very nice. Watch fob. I'll be right back. What are you doing, Clay? I'm just getting your gift, Frank. Oh, you didn't have to do that. Oh, no, I, I wanted to. It's a, uh, a $25 savings bond. It's made out to you. Oh, uh, here. I'll just uh, sign it over to you. There you go. Oh, there. Well, it matures in 2023. You want to keep that in a safe place. So I guess it'll be worth a lot of money in about 30 years or so, huh? Well, $25. What's your deal, Nelson? Well, Crow, I, I drew your name, <laughs> so uh -huh. here it is. Oh, ooh, wow, oh, wow. A oh, Steve Alamo album. Wow. Ooh, wow. Oh, how this did you know what I needed? Too. This has the extended mix of Don't Let the Sun Catch You Crying. Oh, really cool. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. Oh, uh, Servo, open mine. Oh, okay, uh, would you, Mike, would you right. mind? Oh, right. <laughs> oh, no, no, well, no yeah. way. The 1991 <laughs> yeah. Drug IV Handbook, this is too good. Oh, like oh look, it. electrolyte component chart, and full pharmacokinetics, I love it. Thank you, Crow. Oh, open you're mine, Mike, open mine. Oh, oh yeah. the big one, okay. Okay, here it is. Yeah. Oh, wow, great Sweet. sweater, Jeff. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, thanks. Look at that, it says, uh, Joiky on it. Yeah, well, I, I started getting it for the other guy a long time ago, and, and then, well, well, you know. Hey, don't you have something for Gypsy? Oh, yeah, it's right down there. Would you get it for Ooh. me? Yeah, oh, yeah it's some it? of them uh, underwear and a candy cane, oh. kind of cute. Thought you might like it, Gypsy. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, stars! Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. These guys. Oh. 30 years, 25 bucks. Can I shave my head for you? Well, you didn't have to, Baldy. My hair! My beautiful head of TV's Frank hair! <laughs> Your movie today, Mark, is called Santa Claus. It's a thoughtful, well-shot documentary about the Crimean War. It's a stupid Mexican kids movie! <laughs>
Oh, and Servo, I got you a dreidel. Cool. <laughs> oh, <laughs> movie oh, 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 my dreidel. Good evening, Buffalo. We are Santa Claus, and we have just one question for you. Are you ready to be merry? Yes! I said, are you ready to be merry? Yes! Let's stuff this in your stocking. One, two, three, four. I've slain the Grinch. I have broken his spell. I am the warrior of Christmas, the world we will tell. Christmas time, free your mind. Let love unwind. The warrior of Christmas has cast out the neon friends. Hail the new claws, your hair he will ring. Silver bells fall from your nose. Santa Claus lifts your toes. Rudolph's found the emperor's clothes. Vixen, let's explode, joy to the world. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Buffalo. We love you. Thank you. We love you. Thank you. Sorry about the blindfold, Mike. Yeah, we just didn't have enough wrapping paper for your Christmas present. So, with the help of a French communication satellite that just happened to be in range yeah. for a few minutes, we give you... Take off your blindfold, Mike! The Family Nelson! <laughs> Guys, yeah. this, this isn't my family. Oh, look how happy they are to see you, Mike. Well, this, this isn't my family. Oh, Mike, I can just imagine all the warm memories you must have of these, your loved ones. Yeah, Tom, this isn't my family. Well, but, but they're the Nelsons, Mike. Well, they're a Nelson, but there's more than one Nelson in the oh, world. Oh, that explains the 700 other Nelsons in the Green Bay phone book. Yeah, I'm not from Green Bay, hey, uh, sir, ma'am. Uh, we're really sorry about all this. Uh, you see, there was some sort of mix-up with my buddies here. Oh, that'll happen. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, well, you know, we got to get going because, you know, we're up in space and, you know, we got, you know. Oh, that's different. Yeah, well, uh, again, we're, we're real sorry. Well, Dad? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, okay, well, happy holidays and bye-bye. You too there. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, it's a thought that counts, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, your family anything like those Nelsons, Mike? Oh, yeah, a little. Uh, only they're not so emotional. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we got movie side. Let's go! Hi, folks. Welcome back to the satellite. As a special treat, Crow, Tom, and I have written and are going to perform an original Christmas carol. Uh, uh, Mike, it's not just for Christmas. It's for holidays of all faiths. Yeah, right. don't uh, call it a carol, because no. carol is a woman's name, and we want this song to be all-inclusive. Right. Why don't you hit a camera? There we go. Let us all now sing our praises to the Lord today. Although you may not share our belief system, which is perfectly okay. Maybe you worship an abstract being that is kind of vague. Or maybe you just worship a guy whose name is Greg. Perhaps your religion doesn't include a time called Lent. But whatever your religion is, we support you 100%. So sit around the fire and have a chestnut roast. Chestnut roast. Or raise a glass in a toast, glass in toast. To happy days, Donnie Moss. But if you prefer to eat Indian food on Christmas Day, I can only shrug my shoulders and say, Namaste, namaste. Personally, I prefer, Personally, I prefer turkey, turkey, gravy, and salad. Turkey, but salad. let's never forget, never forget all cultures all are valid. So let's have peace on earth and cut out all the bull. Let's have a holiday season that's multicultural. If there's one point we'd like to make with this festive holiday song, it's that Christmas comes just once a year, so for a few days for crying out loud, can, can we, we all just get, get along? Hey. Wow. That was 
actually pretty good. It was great. It was hey, lovely. Good job. Very nice. Okay, Thank you. I'll be home for Christmas. You. Hi. What's the matter, honey? You look a little gishmudlikite or something. I don't know. Oh, no. I guess here I am on the satellite. And, you ah, know, you'll snap out of it, Mike. So, what's the deal? Any more presents in here? Huh? No, mm -hmm. no. Come on, Mike. Open up. I'll bet you miss Earth. Something about the time of year, maybe? Well, I'll tell you what I miss. You know, I miss the change of seasons. You know, up here on the satellite, it's just 365 days of nice weather. And that's okay, but I miss the crisp air. And, you know, I miss putting on a sweater and going outside. Mm -hmm. And you know what I miss most of all? Mm -hmm. I, I miss the pure beauty of a snowfall as it piles up as Christmas draws nigh. Give me rocket number nine. Whoa. Whoa. It's a Christmas miracle. Yeah, it looks like a wet miracle. And I'm not shoveling it. Good gravy, people. Don't you realize what this means? We have a snow day. A snow day, a snow day, a snow day. A snow day. Uh, is that good? Good, that's the best. Yeah. Hey, hey, mad fools, we're not going to be around a while. Uh, I'm going to put on my spacesuit. We're all going outside, and we're going to build a snow fort. We're going to build a snow fort. Yeah. Snow fort. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Pitch. Pitch? Uh, pitch. Uh, I assume you know I truly, truly admire your work. Great, thanks. Hmm. More pie, man goat? Oh, no, I shouldn't. It's good, though. Frankie likes your pie. Go oh, pitch. Pitch. The things you've done, the things you've seen. You are eternal, aren't you? I tell you, I can feel it some days, too. <laughs> <laughs> he can feel it, he says. <laughs> so, what's on the agenda for old pitch? Well, I'm laying low till after the holidays. Mm. Starting next week, though, I'm going to engulf the world in darkness. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you think, Buster. <laughs> I'm here to eat candy canes and kick ass. And I'm all out of candy canes. Ha <laughs> ha, come on. <laughs> oh, Frank, think of it. A full tilt battle between pure evil and Santa Claus in our own home. This is the best Christmas ever. Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> Something more. I need this thing right here. Mike, Mike, Mike. Oh, hi everyone. Welcome to the satellite a lot. Oh, How are you doing this, Mike? That's Mike, and I'm Tom Servo. That's about all we can say for right now because we are escaping. Hey, I found the sector fuel tank to help with the escape. All right, thank you. Thank you, Crow. This is great. Yum, dum. Gypsy, we don't have contacts at the Swiss border. Ooh. Ah, bad news, Mike. I've gone blind from 40 a thousand Nazi documents. No, you haven't. Oh, yes, I have. Just leave me in the Alps. You know, all the best of skids have uh, contacts at the Swiss border. We'll be right back. <laughs> what? at Jellystone Park, aren't we, Mike? I want to go to the Gap and the Great American Hot Dog Experience. Ooh. I would really like to go to Japan and see the turtle called Gabara. Whoa, bro, <laughs> don't forget to pack the Kit Kat bars. Oh, uh, you know, you can probably just get them at Earth's gift shop. Hey, 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 hey. Ixnay, Audie's Bay. <laughs> Major Nelson, what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing. Okie dokie, Smokey. Well, here's the thing I thought of, Mark. Many is the time that I've been purposely striding through a major department store when suddenly, right in the middle of ladies' lingerie, I'm accosted by the perfume lady. Good afternoon, sir. Can I entice you with a sample of libidinous? <laughs> Two. The next time you're sampled, sample back with my designer line of mace mousse. Mark, just oh a spritz of Satan's jock strap did the trick. And my designer moves also comes in Velvet Cudgel, Delirium, and Essence of Detroit. <laughs> oh, uh, Frank, you also get a free sample of our bath gel. Here you go. Thank you. Your bid, Mark. Oh, my God! 
Listen up, Mad Mads. Yeah. Dig this, Babylon sisters. Yeah. Mike Nelson, Tom Servo, Crow T, Robot, and Gypsy are out of here. <laughs> That's right, we masterminded our own escape. Listen up, nobody owns Mike Nelson. You got that? Nobody. nobody. All right, fire up the liquid rocket fire boosters. Up. I believe it's time for us to fly. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Oh, yes. Uh, no. Yeah. Oh, boy. Huh. Huh. Well. <laughs> oh, so, you see, you guys, uh, our invention then is a little skit based on what would happen if if our escape plan failed. <laughs> oh, Nelson, so close and yet so not. Your movie this week is Teenage Crime Wave. It's a documentary of some sort about the likes of uh, Todd Bridges and Dana Plato. Uh, Frank, you really should layer your mace so it lasts and lasts all day. <laughs> this isn't Lox the liquid oxygen, this is Lox the fish product. Mm. 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 Well, no reason why it shouldn't have worked. Are you sure you're operating that thing right? Yes, I'm operating. <laughs> 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 In this movie, the first person to suffer actual physical harm was the big doughy guy. And let's never forget, he lived in an era that would forever be known as the golden age of the doughy guy. Yes, from 1931 until 1959, doughiness was a symbol of success. Proof positive that a man could order 16-ounce porterhouse steaks for lunch and three martinis, tipsy and pink. Doughy guys roamed the land freely. The major politicians of that era were all doughy guys. Their weight and moistness were felt everywhere they went. The most powerful man of that era was the ultimate doughy guy, J. Edgar Hoover, who was not afraid to be a doughy gal. During that era, doughy men covered the continent. Statistics proved there was more humidity at the time. Thousand Island dressing was sold by the barrel full pork sausage by the metric ton. Why, we owe our very existence to the fact that our mothers were actually willing to make love to doughy guys. In tribute to our nation's doughy guys, we now present an honor roll of the great doughy guys, past and present. Can bot, if you please. Yeah, the doughy guys, doobity doughy guys, the doughy guys. Guys, buttery doughy guys. Doughy guys of the world, we take our belts off to you. Ta-da! The first deli in space. <laughs> Order up! That's right. We've got sandwiches for every occasion. Say, if you're hankering for a chunk of red meat low in fat, try the Miles O'Beef. Mm. Or for the vegetarian, how about the Mr. B Natural diet plate? Or perhaps a cup of split pea Zadora soup? Ooh. Oh, you'll flip for the Vince Van Patty melt. Mm. Or the Sid Tuna Melton with Monkey Boy fries. Or try the Manos Ham of Fate Reuben with extra zesty secret sauce. <laughs> Oh, my God, our first Ooh. customer. We're not ready. Wait, calm oh. down, calm down. Sully's, what do you need? Oh, boy, do you guys deliver? Yep. Hey, it's TV's Frank. Oh. I knew he'd call. <laughs> oh, great, great. Let's see. Uh, I'd like the uh, Joe Don Baker baked potato with uh, extra sour cream mm -hmm. and uh, <sighs> the Merritt Stone wheat crackers mm -hmm. and a large glass of milk. Right, okay. Anything else? Yeah, I need something for my boss. What's your worst sandwich? Oh, uh, well, that'd be the Monte Cristo Markham, deep fried and then forgotten. Great. Can you dip it in the bus tub juice, drop it on the floor, and put some hair inside? Sure thing. Thanks a lot for calling, Sully's. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, I need a deflator mouse. Burn the village. Hold the flak jacket and fry the gravy boat. Come Yo, on. Deflator mouse. Fry the gravy boat. Go. Pick it up. Pick it Come up. Come on. Next. In the weeds here. Next. Pick it up. Pick it Number up. 17. Number, Number 17. 17. Movie oh, side. Oh, oh, movie side. Up. Cause it's really so fun, cause it's really so bonds When you have super fun eating tasty mints You can challenge mores, you can bend silly rules You're rebelling in an unthreatening way You're really blonde and it's true, people look up to you When you eat mints whenever the hell you want to Youth is better in every situation Youth is better, oh 
world is stupid, youth is better, so eat mistos and live a super long fun life. Mistos. Wow, Crow. That movie posed so many difficult questions, yet at the same time left so many things unanswered. Yeah, yep, yep. So, letters? Yeah, right. Yeah. Hey, isn't it Tom's turn to get them? Mm. Mail call, mail call. <laughs> oh, brother. Robot, crow thee. Yeah? You didn't get squat, crow. My guess is you skew lousy with women and young men. But we'll put together some focus groups and ferret that out for Servo, you. Servo, can we just have the mail, please? Keep your flight suit on, Nelson. And just what kind of a name is Nelson, anyway? You're not Russian by any chance, are you, comrade? <laughs> Give me those things. <laughs> All right, this first one is from, uh, oh, from Jim Pratt. Mm, could eat no and uh, why don't you put that, up, mm. put that up on Still the Store there? They the Thank, you. Clean. Thank you, <laughs> Jim Pratt. Okay, and Jim writes, Dear Mike, Crow, Servo, and the rest of the MST3K crew, those of us who just finished watching the Brain That Wouldn't Die experiment here at the New Hampshire State Prison all feel that Mike Nelson has potential. Thank you, thank you, Jim. That's very nice. Nelson, you got the prison book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it doesn't surprise me. You know, your situations are similar. Yeah. Although I imagine it's a little worse up here. Oh, you know, yeah. no visitations, mm -hmm. food's lousy, <laughs> everything you know and love is thousands of miles away. Yep. Oh, but, but, but you got us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thanks Isn't there another letter? I hope yes, so. there is another letter. <laughs> this one is from uh, Valerie Kiriakopoulos. And uh, I have uh, an idea that maybe you could read this one, Tom. Read well, this little okay, part right then, here. I just will then. Welcome, Mike. I'm glad you're on the SOL. You'll definitely have your hands full up there. <laughs> but just remember, even though those bots have been up there longer, you're bigger than them. Mm. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> just keep uh. that in mind when it... Ah! Well, you're bigger than some of us, Mike. <laughs> yeah, just remember, Mike, if push came to shove, I could take you. Wow. Woo! Oh, I never would. Oh, oh, my <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's all from our end. Back down to you, subterranean doughy guys. <sighs> that's right, I'm Doughy Man. I control the world's supply of dairy products. Steak is my ally. Butter does my bidding. Sour cream bows down before me in total abject terror. Onion rings... Quake at my very breath! You don't, not this time. TV's Frank, you see me, Dr. Forrester. Hmm, I wonder what's going on. I'll have to go.
chicken fat back, the chicken and don't be chicken again. Da -da 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 -dum -da 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 Hi everyone, welcome to the Satellite of Love. Mike Nelson here with my friends Crow T. Robot and Tom Servo. You caught us in the middle of our quarterly workout. Crow, I think you need to add more weights. Uh, well, I don't here we go. think I do. Ah! Oh! Tom, that can't be doing much. What say we throw the medicine ball around? No, 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 no! no! Ah, thank you. If you can't take 30 minutes out of each year, you don't deserve a hot date. We'll be right back. Pretty good workout, eh, man? Got a juicer here. Want some juice? Oh, yeah. All right, there we go. Mike, that's an egg. Yep. What's the matter? You don't like the juice of a hard-boiled egg, huh? Well, you can put anything in here. Sausage, little bacon. But you know, boys, sometimes I just can't wait. Oh, buddy, it's falling. Ah, losers in the sky. Big doings down here, Deep 13. <laughs> Skyrocketing costs have begun to imperil even my weekly bonus program. So I've been thinking outside of the box, and at the end of the day, you're going to see some real changes around here. Yes, we're re-engineering, and uh, Frank here will be spearheading our outplacement program. <laughs> Me? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's right, Frank, we've got Deadwood. We've got to cut costs. Exactly, I think you're right. Well, of course I'm right, Frank. Now here, uh, round this person up and can his ass. Okay, let's see. Uh, Frank, TV. So, oh, poor guy, he's probably got a family. Hey! Well, that's that. Painful, yes, but I've got to think of the greater me. What color is your parachute, Frank? <laughs> I don't have a parachute. Bummer. Well, here's your parting gift. Oh, neat. And here's your farewell dinner. But Frank's your most valued employee. How will he live? How will he live? Oh, he'll be okay. Look how hireable he is. Uh, well, Frank, uh, I'm going to miss seeing you around here. Um, well, it's been nice. <laughs> Good luck. Off with you now. But I still live here. Goodbye, Frank. Well, Marcel, your movie this week is called Village of the Giants, made by Bert I. Gordon, who's also not working much anymore. <laughs> Should I push the button, Dr. Forrester? Frank, you're fired. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> Frank, oh, honey, you will live on, Frank! We'll we'll live on. We gotta go, Frank! Boy, I think we better see how Frank is. Oh, yeah, good idea. Frank, honey, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Hey, Clay, good check evening. it out. John Vernon's on Acapulco Heat. Frank, do you even plan on looking for a job today? Hey, I put in some applications. Uh, I made some calls. Frank, you haven't moved since Vicky. Now, help me clean up. I've got an applicant coming. Well, I can see... What? Oh, Frank, don't worry. It might not even work out. I don't plan on paying him. Uh, it's open. <laughs> You and Mr. Knock, knock. Ah, oh, Mr. Torgo, come in. Don't you have a loose bottle? No. Rarely, if ever. No. I, uh, my reference is. Ah. Uh, ill. Uh, Oh, I see you work for the master. From 73 to present. And you owned your own food delivery service for a time. There were sanitation problems. I see. Um, any physical problems that would prevent you from... Frank, do you mind? Any physical problems that would prevent you from performing your responsibilities here? Um, uh, no. And finally... What would you say are your greatest strengths and your greatest weaknesses? Well, I, uh, I work too hard. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, seriously, though, I, I always finish what I start, and I make animal sacrifices by the dark of night. Terrific. Mr. Torgo, I'm willing to offer you a position. Oh, whoopee. You'll start immediately. You'll work 24 hours a day. You'll live on the premises in a three-by-three three closet, and you'll be paid in skunk pelts. Dr. Forrester, 
I'm your man. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, oh, wonderful. Uh, let me show you to your accommodations. Right. Uh, first rule, no theme music. What theme music? Affectionately funny. Okay, Mike, it's your turn to sign the card for Frank. Yeah, thanks. You know, this is pretty and all, but uh, isn't it really more appropriate for the death of a loved one? Well, it was either this one or for a special girl on her first communion. Whoa, heads up, guys. We got something coming in on the hex wheel. Oh. Frank? Frank? Frank! Hey, hi, guys. Hey, you gotta help me out, man. Frank, where are you? I'm in the janitor's closet. I was supposed to be out of Jeep 13 a while ago, and Dr. Forrester's hassling me for phone money. Oh, man, that's rough, man. Say, would you guys uh, sign my unemployment thing for unemployment that says I've been seeking employment and stuff? Could you make like I applied for a job here? Well, hmm. Frank, that's fraud. I mean, I guess we'd at least have to uh, interview you for a position. Even though we're not really hiring at this time. Okay, go ahead, shoot. Okay, Mr. Frank, uh, describe some of the challenges you met in your last job. Well, Dr. Forrester would kill me a lot, mm. so time management was really crucial. Mm, mm. You're not gonna have babies, are ya? Oh, you? Well, now, tell me about your interpersonal style. Well, I, uh, I have a hard time, um, communicating ah, with people, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, I tend to settle disagreements through violence. Oh, mm, I see, yeah. Oh, and I pilfered from all my employers. Oh, yeah. Frank! Frank! Dr. Forrester! right now, Frank! Dr. Forrester, I'm in here. Mm. Wow. Ah, man, I'm at a total crossroads in my life. Say, this burrito's really good. Well, well Frank, bye, Frank. Uh, wow. Frank's looking really rough. Mm -hmm. well, we could always create a position for him. Huh. I got a position. Whoa! Hey, oh, 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 oh. In a pool? Yeah. All tend to talk to your Hey, 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 guys, look. I bet that's Frank. <gasps> Hi, Mike. Hi, Bots. Just called to say goodbye. You guys have been the best victims a fella could ever want. Thanks. Oh, Frank, we'll miss you too, but yeah. we'll always remember the good times. Uh, in fact, we have remembered the good times. Cambot helped us hit it. TV's Frank, this one's for you. It's going out to our very special friend. Frank, the sun never shone upon our love before until there was rain. Up to you. From me to you, sweet floppy Frank, we've had a lifetime of friends. An endless Frank will always flow for all we know. For all we know. Frank, from the first day I knew your name, I never knew love was the same. I never knew love was the same. Open the vine, sweet Frank on the line, nothing but sweet love and friends. It's no way that love could be frank If only the sun and the moon would collide to be frank Let me be frank about Frank Let me be frank about Frank Let me be frank about Frank Cause Frank is the best Frank That's ever happened to me Please, please don't go <laughs> oh, Bye, Frank you were enjoyed. <laughs> oh, I can't go. I've given Dr. Forrester my heart and soul and liver. <laughs> Darn it, I love this job. I'm not going to let some smooth-talking shark like Torgo take it away. <laughs> That's right, Frank. You've never given up on anything in your life. Well, you have, but don't give up on this one. You're right, Mike. I've got to figure out some sneaky, dishonest way of reclaiming what I lost fair and square. But how? Hmm. 
Boy, you know, you guys, as, as hard as I tried to concentrate on that wonderful movie, mm. I just kept thinking about that little imp, Frank. Yeah, me too. I don't know, guys. Torgo's curating is off the charts. Hey. <laughs> just kidding. Come on. Anyway, we're not the only ones rallying behind Frank. Take a look at all this mail. Ooh, Each man. and every letter addressed lovingly to TV's Frank. Frank, I haven't seen such an embarrassing display of affection since Dan Aykroyd was on the Chevy Chase show. Sorry. <laughs> wow. And here's one right here. Uh, put this up on this still store there. This is from Annie Current, who Annie. says, Frank, your evil innocence and gentle love for pain keep me on the edge of my seat but don't let the doctor hold you down you are yeah. definitely going yeah. places yeah. buddy you see yeah. frank yeah. there's a lot of people behind you yes, it. Uh -huh. thanks you guys Say, so make sure you got just all your watch ducks this. in a row and then shoot it over to the madrid lawyers and see if hold on a second stan i've got some fun you still here torgo tv's torgo tv's torgo look i just want to say you won, congratulations, I'm leaving, and just to show that there's no hard feelings, here's something you can do that'll make Dr. Forrester really happy. Look, all you do is go up to him, and then you... Dr. Forrester! Ah, hello, Tor, I'm almost ready. I just have to... What are you doing? No, 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 don't! No! Frank, get the door. I've got garbage to take out. Oh, who are you to judge me anyway? Oh! 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 Frank! You disgusting little man. That was your doing, wasn't it? Well, uh, Frank, that was one of the most fiendish and disgusting things you've ever done. And I've just got one thing to say. Uh. Frank! Welcome back. I got my job back. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Forrester. Oh, there's just one little thing. Uh -huh. Because of that little stunt you pulled, uh -huh. I'm going to have to kill you. Mine? Mine? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 oh, thank you, Dr. Forrester. Oh. No, thank you, TV's Frank. Sun never shone upon our love before until there was a uh, you from me to you, sweet floppy Frank. We've had a lifetime of Frank. Endless Frank will always flow for all we know. All we know. Frank, from the first day I knew your name, I never knew love was the same. Never knew love was the same. Open the vine, sweet Frank on the line. Nothing but sweet love and praise. It's Knowing that love could be frank if only the sun and the moon would collide to be frank. Let me be frank about Frank. Let me be frank about Frank. Let me be frank about Frank. Cause Frank is the best Frank. That's ever happened to me. Please, please don't go. La, la, la. Hey, hi everyone. Welcome hi. to the Satellite of Love. Howdy. That big blonde human back there? Well, that's Mike well, Nelson. That's Mike, that, well, <clears throat> anyway, he just got invited to one of Gypsy's tea parties. <laughs> I love and it. we're off for a spirited game of tennis. Yeah. His favorite game. Yeah, let's watch. <laughs> Did you? Dear um, what? Uh, I thought there was a... a good designing a... woman last night, wasn't it? What's that? that yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was really funny. I think... I think the Delta Burke really is the, the, the glue that, that holds that show together. Because mm -hmm. there was a thing last night where she came out and the, the stuff started happening. Yeah. <laughs> she's not on the show anymore. Oh. No, well, no, she's not. But I, I think she's on the show in spirit. And yeah. I mean, because that other woman's on now. Oh. She's, <laughs> Should we create a disturbance and save us behind? Not for all the candy in the world. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to think that you didn't even watch Designing Woman last night. <laughs> Maybe I didn't. I, I, I was, uh -huh. I was definitely watching a show though, yeah. and there were the, the there was women on it, and oh. it it seemed like they were designing. But oh. you know who I who knows. I, I'll be right never back. Did it, <laughs> judging, uh, whether, oh, oh, easy, easy. easy. <laughs> yeah. Well, Gypsy, this tea has uh, really been great. Great. Then we see you next Saturday. Uh, well. 
I have a thing that I have to... Uh, say, Mike, if you and Helena Bonham Carter there are finished, could we please start our tennis game? <laughs> well, we could, but Merchant and Ivory are calling. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Tonight, it is my pleasure to host Deep 13's annual Celebrity Roast. This year, our guest of honor is none other than Dr. Clayton Forrester. Dr. Clayton Forrester, ladies and gentlemen. You know... I'd like to say that tonight we're honoring one of the world's most brilliant scientists. I'd like to say that, but unfortunately we're stuck with Dr. Forrester. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, I'm treated well down here. My paycheck has lots of zeros. Nothing but zeros, as a matter of fact, but still. <laughs> no, really, I kid the good doctor. But I think deep down underneath it all, He's a real jerk. <laughs> there are a lot of reasons you could give for why Dr. Forrester is the way he is. Uh, personally, I think it's because he's ugly and stupid. <laughs> no, no, seriously, Doctor, in all sincerity, what I really came here tonight to say was, I hate your guts, and I hope you die a slow, painful death. Secure the knowledge that nobody loves you. <laughs> Well, let's bring up our guest of honor for tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Clayton Forrester himself. Dr. Forrester. Yeah. Uh, thank you, TV's Frank. <laughs> you know, there's, uh, after a, a beautiful tribute like that, there's only one thing I can say, and that's... <coughs> and in conclusion... <coughs> I know I should have hired red buttons. Back up to you, Merv. Hey, everyone, just playing a little Canadian doubles here. It's the first ever Satellite of Love Celebrity Open. See love, see love, play. Christy Love. Carl, it's 30 Love. Oh, whatever. All right, you ready? Here we go. Got it. Oh. Out! 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 What is their problem? What are you, blind? Why don't you grow some hair? Servo, come on, you're out of order here. <laughs> I'm out of order? You're out of order! She's out of order! The whole damn court's out of order! Jeez! <laughs> oh, uh, do me a favor, Frank. Uh, take these oranges and uh, wrap them in this towel, all right? Oh, sure Thank thing, Doc. Work. Ah, Mayor Dinkins, as a special treat, your movie this week is a little bit of a change of pace. It's about a bunch of astronauts who go on a space mission back in the 50s. It's called 12 to the Moon. But first, a little musical acid trip from our friends at General Motors called Design for Dreaming. <laughs> what are you going to do with these, Clay? Oh, just call me Bobo, Frank. <laughs> oh, easy. No, easy. I am having had enough time. Sorry, Why yeah. are you stopping <laughs> now? Oh, Why are you this. stopping <laughs> now? Hey, hey, hey it's OK. Time. It's late. We got movie time. <laughs> Gunter, is everything ready for our historic trip to the moon? Yeah, I am German, and I can assure you that everything is ready. Milt, ready on your end? Yeah, I'm Swedish, so you know everything is... Yeah. I beamed myself on your satellite. I hope that's okay with you. Uh, yeah, sure. I am Nuvina, woman of the future. Will you dance with with me. No. Come on, Mike, go talk to her at least. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you gotta admit, you haven't touched a woman since the Carter administration. <laughs> oh, great. I'll, I'll go talk to the potentially evil specter while you two cower behind the desk. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh. What do you want from us? Try singing like that idiot from the short. Yeah. Right. Um, what do you want from us? I want to take you and your robot Ooh. friend to my futuristic world. But first, I want to dance with you. Oh, well. Uh, what would we do in your futuristic world? Does it really matter? Mm. Wow. Stay right there. Uh, uh, huh. Uh, Huh. <laughs> Nuvina. Yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. sure. Nuvina. <laughs> Woman of the future. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so we go on or what? Oh, I don't know. I thought I'd let her hang out, <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> so uh, Nuvina, but uh, Nuvina, we've got something to do. But feel free to make yourself a sandwich. <laughs> Uh, you're gonna kiss her, aren't you? Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Be right back. 
Totes. Chuck. Beaks. Chuck. Talon. Chuck. So, looks like we're it? moving to that there singing lady's planet, eh, Mike? Yep. Yeah, Neutrina, Nutello, Noxima. <laughs> no, but... Nuvina. Oh, right, right, right. Woman of the future. <laughs> Just hope you know what you're doing. Hey, come on, Gypsy. Look, she's Nuvina, woman of the future. <laughs> yeah, she sings, she dances. Huh, she's Nuvina. <laughs> woman of the future, damn straight. Do you really need... All those socks, dear? Well, perhaps Jeez. not. Perhaps you are right, my munchkin. <laughs> Believe me, you won't need this turtleneck. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she dances a lot, Mike. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sings a lot, too, Mike. <laughs> well, which, and that's your life from here on out. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I'd like to be on the road by six. If the experiment's done, I don't see a problem. That's a can-do. Just remember what happened to Nelson, Eddie, and Jeanette McDonald, Mike. What? Eventually, they die. Hmm. Here's the move. Jockey short dear. I, I think that's enough. Thank you, darling. Well, okay, you know what you're doing. Let's pack up everything and move to Noxima's planet. Boy, I'm really gonna miss this old satellite. Hey, can we blow it up when we leave? Wow, Whoa. cool. Oh, we'll see, honey. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Blah, 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 blah. Help, Mike, Mike, Mike. Blah, 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 blah. The kitchen of tomorrow is calling me. Oh, my cake is ready. Oh, my God, my head. I mean, hey, I didn't know I could do that. I'll make it stop. Oh. Mike, Mike, come see what your new girlfriend is doing. Mike! Gypsy, guys, what's going on? Oh, hello, honey, please wash your hands. I'm on a used servo to make shank of lamb. Chutney? Nuvina, weird singing lady from the future. My robot friends are not meant to be enslaved. Yeah. Robots are machines like anything else. They're meant to be used and put on the shelf. Hey, that's anti-robot. Oh, my hand is he. Blah, 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 okay, I'll be with you in a moment. Nuvina, even though it breaks my heart, I'm going to have to ask you to depart. Oh, yeah. Well, get back, you robot-loving turd. Oh, 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 wow, look at the rocks! Yeah, don't worry, guys. I'm sure there'll be another magical, mystical singing lady coming along any time. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. <laughs> Come here, you. We'll <laughs> 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 be right back. <laughs> 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 Gypsy, you know you're going to have to leave. There, there. Now, now. Here, here. Well, guys, that was my one shot at happiness, my one grab for that brass ring of love. My one shot at true love in this lonely world. God, this is good chocolate chip cookie dough. Mike, magical singing future ladies are a dime a dozen. Yeah, you'll probably run into her again. In the meantime, letters. Ooh. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Oh, boy, yeah. Okay. yeah. <clears throat> this first letter is from Melody Munoz. And she I wrote... must ask you not ever do that again. No. Oh, yeah, it's probably a good idea. Yeah. Okay, put that on still store there, Cambot. This one says, Dear Mike, Tom Crow, Gypsy Cambot, and the rest of the crew on the Satellite of Love, <laughs> Hi, my name is Melody Munoz, and I just wanted to tell you how much I enjoy your show. I go over to Kim Metner's house every weeknight at midnight just to watch your show. Oh. Kim and I got our whole biology class to watch it. That's Isn't from... Kim dating Raj now? I think so. <laughs> I believe it. It's so cute. All right, I got one more. Here's, uh, oh, I got a couple more. This is from Eric Abel. Put this on Still Store. Mm -hmm. Eric writes, let me begin by saying that if I could, I would have the show hooked up intravenously to my right arm. Wow. Oh. Permanently. Oh. When I look for a girlfriend, one of my deciding factors is if she likes your show or not. Is that wrong? No. It's not wrong. It's strange. The whole intravenous thing. Oh, that's wrong. Yeah. I'd back off of that, Eric. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. this next one is signed 13 and 12. Nominant. Put that on Still Store, and there's a lovely picture So of, do you think that's 13 or 12 there? I'm guessing it's 13. Yeah. But it could be 12, uh, 13 a year ago. Uh, anyway, we are 13 and 12. We are fans of your show. It's great and everything, but there could be a few changes. Uh-oh. Here it comes. There we go. You should rewire Crow what? so that he talks with an Austrian accent. Yeah, I thought about that. Why? Fill Tom Servo's head with gumballs so that he's not such an airhead. Well, I think... Hey! <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, evil nincompoops, put that in your pipe and do the hokey pokey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you see there, Frank, that's the trouble with relationships. They're trouble. Yeah, but... Ah! Ah! Frank, I have said no friends in the house. But it's her. It's the lady. <laughs> I can fulfill your wildest dreams. Frank, my man. I want a croissant. Dare to dream, Frank. <laughs> New Venus gonna crash here tonight. <laughs> so where's my croissant? Hey! Well, I'm sure she really liked you, Frank. <laughs>
Tom Servo here with great holiday gift shopping ideas for the Misty in your life. Let's shop. May I suggest the classic all-cotton power tee in luscious black with the nifty white planet logo. And now here's a real holiday favorite, the nice big MST sweatshirt with Mike and the Bots embroidered in full color. Everyone loves the MST mouse pad, cleverly designed with the silhouette and planet logo. Wow. Friendly operators are standing by right now. Call 1-800-559-8916. This is Tom Servo announcing, happy holidays, everyone.